Well, sadly, it is one last welcome to the desk here at the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel and Casino. Ali Najad, Henry Kilbane, a final day of coverage from this 2023 Cyprus edition of the Triton Super High Roller Series, Henry. And as much as we want to say there's not much left in the tank, there is, in fact, so much left in the tank and so much undecided. So much undecided, but honestly, coming into today, uh, yeah, man, it's been a grind. And we've had such an amazing series, so many storylines that we're going to be talking about for, you know, years to come. And But like you said, you know, two more events but definitely kind of like a sad day almost, if you will. I mean, yeah. We're leaving tomorrow. We're going to get through it with a bunch of joy, though, shall we? As the 50K Short Deck main event coverage, we're going to play that one down to a winner. That happens today. And then, of course, one still hanging in the balance. That's going to be that 20K Short Deck, a single-day event. Perhaps we'll pick up some coverage of that. But the first thing we're going to do, as a matter of typical business, is look back upon the conclusion of the 25K Short Deck, where Canada's Mike Watson, coming fresh off of a title, was looking to string back-to-back -back titles together as he came in as the chip leader. Let's take a look back. All in. Now, unfortunately, despite wearing the run good Triton title ball cap, the PLO champ Mike Watson would be the first casualty as his two queens ran into an ace king for Richard Yong, which turned into kings and then a flush, leaving Watson drawing dead and collecting $66,000 courtesy of a sixth place finish. Then, Makita Badziakuski, who had one massive cash for 1.2 million. The lone bright spot on not his sure resume. It or not. Found himself Whoa. committing most of his chips and then all of his <laughs> chips <laughs> against Anson Yu, but then picking up massive equity on the 10862 heart board. In and the end, he burn. could not hit the <laughs> flush as he hit <laughs> the inferior straight 10 high versus Queen High. 85,000 going home with the Belarusian for a fifth place finish. And then Steven Chidwick in the Ivan Liao Player of the Year Award race with Jason Kuhn could collect no more than fourth place points as his two queens, you would think, would win this pot on the Queens Full of Kings board where Brewer was hunting running spades for the flush over full house, running aces or running kings. And then it was the running ace king, option D as a very filthy short deck beat was delivered to the mighty Chidwick. 110K, fourth place, as mentioned. Three players left, Anson Yu in the on-deck circle. Two aces, you can't hope for better when you get your money in. Jack 10 suited, performing well and turning in to an open ender for Chris Brewer as they played a massive six million chip pot. Board paired on the turn. Anson was saved and then suddenly showered as an eight. Gave Brewer the straight and gave Anson third and 143,000. Heads up play. Chris Brewer against the yet to be mentioned Triton co founder Richard Young. One title under Brewer's belt in this series, already looking to pick up his second with a couple of jacks. But unfortunately, on the ace queen queen board for Brewer's purposes, it was not to be. Thank you. Handshakes and then a massive smile on the face of Richard Young, your champion in the 25K short deck. Brewer taking home 222,000. Richard, one of our founding fathers, of course, taking home that 323K in short deck, the game he loves so much. Honestly, you're just listening to you obviously do the VT there. Uh, that Chidwick bust out hand. I know we always talk about short deck and the fairness. But that is disgusting. disgusting. That's one of the worst speeds yeah. I've seen. Um, but no, you know, such an epic ending to that final table in the form of the head so much. We were almost two hours. The chip lead was exchanged on multiple mm -hmm. occasions. And a lot of people were kind of, you know, even Randy and myself in the booth really loved and were somewhat surprised by the low ball style of Richard that was just willing to just keep the pot small, put the chips in when he had the goods, and ultimately, yeah, coming out on top against Brewer, who also, by the way, shout out Brewer, coming into heads up, was just like, I know everyone in the room's rooting yeah. for Richard, yeah. one of the nicest guys, one of the founding fathers. Uh, so if I'm ever going to get a second place, you know, this is this is kind of the one. So, and yeah, GG's. for Brewer, he was 0 for 8 at yes. the front end of the festival yeah. and then finishing 3 for 4. Now, one of the things that you guys didn't get a chance to see 
during our coverage yesterday. As I wrapped up that interview with Richard, he got a bit emotional, and then suddenly he mentioned how much he missed Ivan Liao. Of course, we lost Ivan late last year right here in North Cyprus, and I felt compelled to carry on the interview after we'd already thrown it back into the studio, and he shared some thoughts about his relationship, and you realize just how much of a close-knit community we have on our hands here on the Triton Super High Roller Series, a real family affair, and obviously having lost one of our members, emotions kind of ran high there in a good way. Yeah, I mean, you look at the community that the Triton family has built. It's not just battling it out at the feature table during the tournaments and whatnot. You know, a lot of them, they go on vacation together, they spend time. I know you were out in uh, the Philippines, you know, they're yeah. all, all over the place. And and yeah, I mean, community, family, whatever you want to call it, is something that they've built. They all share the same passion. They love poker. And I think it is honestly one of the reasons why so many professional players have started coming to Triton is because of that tightly knit community where everyone just loves the game and yeah i mean yeah. richard one of the founding fathers of course and ivan as well yeah lack of anonymity helps keep everybody in line and keep everyone <laughs> feeling good about what's going on out here now feeling good of course is going to be stephen chidwick as he has nosed in front of jason coon in that ivan leal player of the year award race by a paltry four points meaning we turn our attention now to today's coverage which of course in this 50k short deck main event which contains a multiplier points are available as they jockey now jason coon henry already locking up player of the series good for an extra hundred yep. but chidwick fighting to hang on to that lead i think the craziest thing about this race is you know coming in jason called his shot said he needs two ties was in a deep run but forget this series it's the fact that over the entire year coming into the final two events there's four points difference that's like what a one percent of the no sorry less than one that's like point one regi percent register on time as jason did not on a couple right. of occasions here already and he would have the lead yeah it, it i mean it's fantastic talk about storyline talk about playing down to the wire you know at the flip of a coin there's going to be a time today where jason's flipping stevie's flipping and there's a lot more than just the raw equity of mm -hmm. the hand at stake because that flip could potentially ladder you into the money. Some bonus points were obviously cashing. And I don't know, man. I mean, th this is pretty crazy. Yeah, no question about it. Now, prize pool not settled just yet because registration is still actually open for the first level of today. 45-minute levels, what we're going to be playing. And, of course, there is that 20K single day in the event. Anyone busts out as they can seek added points. Don't forget the $200,000 overlay in that Player of the Year award race. Something to be keeping our eye on. Never mind. You talked about storylines. Jason, third title available, two under his belt, second as well. Even the fact that he's got a main event title under his belt mm. as one of the two that he's won here could mean we could see a main event double, which we've yet to. Yeah, I mean, Chidwick and Jason still in the hunt for that, uh, yeah, a second title here and uh, definitely i mean it would be it would be sick um jason's got two short deck main event titles under his belt yeah yeah over his triton career but the main so. event and the, sh uh, the, no, the no limit hold him yeah and then the short deck as well yeah. yeah felt like we were at center court at wimbledon didn't it yesterday <laughs> during the coverage as i was just ping-ponging back and forth between the two featured tables the final two levels randy and i didn't have to do any analysis uh the guy that is responsible for pressing the red lights when there's an all-in uh, in hospital today, yeah. getting his hands checked because every hand was an all-in. And, uh, you know, that invoice that he's going to be sending. <laughs> I hope he's not on a day rate. He just gets paid per click. I think we're going to have to swap the bulb out on that red light <laughs> situation before uh, things uh, are done here. Now, the blinds, rather the Annie, 6K, double Annie, 12K on the button as we're going to come back. 20 uniques got things underway. 17 players currently in the field across 37 entries. And wouldn't you know it, Jason Kuhn is your chip leader. As you get a look at the full field there, brought to you by Poker Stake. Devoris, Kuhn, Badziakuski, all respective mayors of their neighborhoods. Shortest stack in the field right now belonging to Ike Haxton at just 17 Annies and not far away from him is Paul Fua and then Chris Brewer coming off of that second place finish as we settle in for one final day of coverage from here in North Cyprus. Yeah, some really interesting things emerging from last night. So 
the final three hands were announced. Kiat Lee was then eliminated with two hands left, not allowed to re-enter as the final three hands do count as the end of the day. So a couple of people, Elton Sang, Kiat Lee, potentially gonna be jumping in straight from the start. But note the short stacks out there. Even Dennis with 58 antes, Paul with 22. They've got 45 minutes to either spin the wheel or bust and re-enter. And I've got a funny feeling this first frame is going to be similar to the late hours of last night where stacks just kind of go flying in with the shorter stacks left in the field. Seth Davies, one of them. A six suited, not enough for him. Important to point out that if you do think that taking a spin, trying to run your stack up is the right way to approach one that's on the leaner side, that rebuy is only going to earn you 300. All of right. the lammers must be redeemed yep. at once. And in relation to where the ante is right now, that's just 50 antes, not a whole lot. So first pot of the afternoon. Be played between Anson and Devoris. Advantage you. And some fresh Hello. off that nice first time. final table is a, a monkey to get off the back. You come to a few events, final table bubble in a few spots, but getting that FT third place, he's going to be feeling good about his short deck game. How are you feeling about whatever game it was you were playing with the team last night? There oh. was all sorts of noises coming from. Most of them were kind of we associated with financial pain uh, from everybody that decided that they were going to beat me. You getting hustled? That game. They no. were tag team in you? Big winner. Yours truly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check through on the Ace of Spades turn. Neither gut shot comes in as post flop uneventfulness continues. This is cut off the button. Daniel just king high. Did go check check on the turn. Gonna wave the white flag. And some with the check mark up to 726k. So 37 runners in this one. I should say 20 runners with 17 re-entries so far. Now, you did mention what I was up to last night. It was a, a game of Chinese poker against an all-Asian delegation looking to dethrone yours truly in the exercise. Yet again, Western side representing. I think I won 30-some-odd points. High watermark, by the way. You won some points. Won some points. GG's, mate. Proud of you. <laughs> holding down the fort. Davies holding it down with a couple of kings here. Under the gun, limp. And Devoris with ace king. Might be looking for some northbound trajectories. Yeah, I mean, this is some of the collisions we were expecting. Early doors. Obviously, two massive hands here. Stacks would always be going in regardless of late reg not to say it like it's preordained but one would assume 60 antes obviously pre-flop navigations tend to be a little bit more freewheeling not that in its long deck counterpart this is a hand that would perhaps play out altogether differently Nevertheless, Davies rips it. Devoris ready for the spin. 788K as we've got our first red light moment of the day. And the ace. A red light indeed. One that's putting a big stop to Seth Davies' plan as the turn ace. 
leaves him drawing dead. So the re-registration desk will have its first visitor, perhaps. Got Sorry, Ali, I was just going to say to Oris with that pot now. chip leader. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. taking the chip lead by product of Kuhn losing a massive pot against Sir Watts on the outer table. Jason Kuhn's ace-king coming up short against Sir Watts' ace-queen. So it's going to be on dead button. You're all going to be on the pick line. <laughs> no, no, it, it can't be dead button. Can't be dead button. Someone needs to play. No, no, he can't be the button oh, twice. Yeah, it, it's gonna be on me, right? Yeah, yeah so it's just yeah. there now. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Learned something new, I didn't know that. Because it's like blind entry, you can't play without it. Good point. Yeah, I feel like playing without the big blind. There's boss, Paul. I prefer Ooh. to play without. <laughs> Yet again. Was playing the cash games until <laughs> early in the morning. Few love it more than him. That much we know. I'll tell you someone else that really loves it. It's Dao Min Fu. Oh, well, he night, was there. There was some loud noises coming from the outer table. At the start of the day, he was sat between Daniel Doris and Tom Duan getting some coaching. And then what went over to Boss Paul, sat next to him. Started playing online, never played short deck before, lost a hand, and he's come over to Jason and Paul. It's like, I had a full house. How did I lose? What happened? They had to explain to Dalman. Flushes, beat full houses. The guy had a flush. But I got a funny feeling we might see Dalman in the 20K. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, those pockets are deep. Those are deep pockets, so... Well, he ended up fairly deeply in the red on the tournament side mm. of the activity slate Thanks here so in North Cyprus, but also net very deeply in the black at last check. Multiple seven figures for DMP, who shared the results with me very proudly at lunch yesterday. It's kind of nice to be around that level of enthusiasm from somebody who is fresh on our scene, not grizzled. Has a big following back home in Vietnam. He really does. I mean, the YouTube chat is ablaze yeah, with yeah. Vietnamese discourse anytime Dow's on the screen. He was showing us his Facebook. He gets like thousands and thousands of likes on any post he puts out. Hence why we had so many viewers in Vietnam whenever he was at the feature table. Maybe we can up our follower count. A little DMP love, cross-pollination. Give him some of the ad rev. I'm going to keep the ad rev, I think. <laughs> it's just kind of it. one of those you pro bono it. things. You, you know, I got bills to pay, Henry. I wonder what time that cash game wrapped up, because at first glance, boss does look a bit tired, Henry. Producer James oh, no. stepping in to advise they played <laughs> until 11 a.m. Currently, local time, we got started at 2 p.m. That's ridiculous. And we are on that hour delay, as pointed out, so actually... 1 p.m. was when the players started. 2 p.m. our broadcast picks yeah, up the feed. We might be looking at an around-the-horn situation as Dennis Shufadin, Jack-10 offsuit, ripping it in there. Boss with Queen Jack defends his button, and Devoris is going to show him some bad news. Let's just look at all of this interference. Boss with just 19% of the equity. Devoris loves this spot. 
Short deck. Side pot will be between Daniel and Dennis. Which overshadows the 339 in the middle as 436,000. Oh, yeah. oh no. <laughs> Jack is good. Jack is good. Yeah, Jack is good now. Trip sixes on the board. Ah. <gasps> Our uh, seven always comes. Mm. Now Devoris, who's already in the lead with the ace queen, does pick up a flush draw. Oh, okay. And then makes sixes full of aces to polish off not one but two buy ins. That's the gold tweezer more. And Devoris catapulting. Yeah, yeah. Double elimination. Then Devoris always in the conversation for one of the in best case, players in the world without a Triton title. 17 caches, 7.1 in Triton earnings. Overwhelming chip leader now, are they? 2.3 million plus in front of him as we swing it over to our other featured table. First glimpse. At this collection, there is Sir Watts, as well as Tom Dwan, who my understanding is was also a part of that cash game. Not sure if he played through till 11 a.m. I've got a funny feeling when it comes to all-nighters Especially without naming any names, some of the bigger wells in Vegas come into town that you've been known to leave the casino when the sun's coming up. I've actually stayed in the casino through sunup to the following <laughs> sundown on more than one occasion. Photographic evidence does exist of me perhaps catching a few REM cycles yeah. on the adjacent oh, table. Actually, I've climbed on move, and no slept on a like poker table. I True story. I mean, that I could definitely see it. Game was good. Nut straight here for Watson. As Duan was the only player to seek a peek at the turn for 15,000. 84 in the middle now as just 14 uniques of our original 17 are currently strapped in. 40. Once, of course, with that double up, second hand of the day, second in chips coming into this pot. Duan calls the 40,000 on the turn with just second pair. It's going to take a spade or a board pair on this river for him to have any prayer of being able to blow Mike off this hand, which of course the seven of hearts does not constitute. Okay. Yeah, so this is hijack v cutoff. Dwan maybe just giving Sir Watts a ton of gut shots. And it's like Jack nine, eight ten, King ten. Ace nine does of course now improve to a straight. But not giving Watson much credit for a legit hand. And the polarization play from Watson, who asks Dwan for it all. I love your style, man. One, a non-believer, Ali. Gold flop continued on the six of hearts turn. Now thinking of heroing off with King Jack, just second pair. I'm blocking those gut shots. Does block King 10, King 9. Well, ultimately, the only chip thrown in front of Duan was the time extension. Marker down. 
because it could be that too. Yeah. You know, King Jack run, finds like, the monk. Playing a hand like a dipshit on a piece of table and it's somehow not popping up. Like I feel like I'm the luckiest person That's in poker. Really funny. I've played so many terrible hands that I'm like, oh my god. At the Look at that one where my brain broke and I just bet under half pot on the turn won't make it, but. <laughs> At the uh, when we got in the money in the hundred k, I ran like a. A bluff was Dan in the three bear part, and a bluff where the rebel was Stevie. And uh, both the time they were just showing like five blind islands at the other table. Very handy. Except yeah, now, except now they know. Against Mike's open on the bubble that tournament, and it, they didn't air it. And I was like, yes. God. I think I looked up the Stevie one and I actually, I actually nailed it with chips. So I was like, hey, good job. I don't know what you guys are thinking. I want them to show every hand I play badly. Yes. Yeah. I want them to show only the hands I play badly. Of course, Ike, with the GTO, put the ego aside, <laughs> recognize the EV. That's why he's one of the best. I mean, yesterday they had me uh, play some hands badly in short deck. Kiev bullied me into a void. I want them to get my whole cards wrong. <laughs> Tom Dwan as well, like, yeah, just man. like, yeah, me too. <laughs> Well, in the app, yeah, the app's great. They had Seth over calling a three-way all-in yesterday with sixes. <laughs> Greenwood's Queens making it 60 from the button. Sounds like we need Seth to mentor Mr. Dow. Yeah. <laughs> he should just show him the hand history. See? You know, Ali. My favorite hand, too. The share hands crew. <laughs> Triton Poker Plus crew. Set. Track every hand of every player A7 from every tournament. Is it 100%? There are some mistakes in there. Appreciate the players maybe giving us a bit of a benefit of a doubt. Shout out to Seth Davies. He did not get in 70 antis with sixes. Or did he? <laughs> Is this just a cover Is he trying to pin now? it on share hand? Yeah, yeah. Maybe he did. Doubtful. You off home tomorrow, Ali? Yes, sir. Long Yourself? flight ahead. Certainly am. Little 12 hour flight. Larnaca, Dubai, Phuket. You direct? Larnaca, Vegas, Henry? Doesn't exist. Sorry, I thought I that maybe. Like we that didn't gas up the Global Express. I was about to say, oh, like. Plus, this is 200. Where's the PJ? Okay. I, I have Yesterday, there was some conversation about perhaps Air Triton. Ooh. being orchestrated as so many of our regs do reside in Vegas. Maybe we get some private aviation international setups. I remember you speaking about this briefly. Yeah. It makes sense, mate. Might make dollars. Get all those guys in a fuselage for 11, yeah. 12 hours. <laughs> Feel like there might be some, some buy-ins acquired on the flight over. It's like a legit business. Send me over the business plan if you need financing. That certainly <laughs> won't be <laughs> the reason I send you the business plan, Henry. I'll help you out with 1% <laughs> funding. Here's my $20. <laughs> <laughs> Double gutter for the Queen Jack. Open ender for Jason Coons. Jack 9. Just a gut shot for Greenwood. Yeah, a little something for everyone. Apart from on a six or a board pair, someone's going to turn a straight. Three, I think, is going to start a pair? Three or four. Uh. Right, quit yeah, the double gut shot. 48,000 in the middle. Round of checks. Round of knuckles, yields a board pairing ace, which obviously is not what the straight draws wanted to see. Jason just saying that he has more ace X here. First one to limp in. Setting the trap with Ike short on the button. Mm. 
Is there a decent amount of Ace-X that would be open limping hijack or flatting behind from Greenwood? I think there's definitely more from the hijack. I don't think Ike has, I mean, unless Ike just has, you know, the trashiest, you know, A6, A7. <laughs> We're still going three ways to a river. There's nobody giving anyone credit for an ace. And perhaps not for an eight either, as bets and calls brought this trio to this river where the board double pairs. Give up from Jason. Yeah, obviously never getting an ace to fold now. Just waving the white flag. With Jack High. Maybe Ike finds a way to win this. Yes, Greenwood steals it on the turn. On the river, rather. tries to bluff and Greenwood able to show down King High for a winner. As Jason shows off that Jacob and Co. Triton collab timepiece there. On a scale of 1 to 10 <laughs> I just took Ali's pen in the booth and he immediately picked up another one. Bravo. Seven, maybe uh, how much are you going to miss me? Maybe. Uncomfortable question, Henry, given that the number zero was not available as one of my choices. Mm. <laughs> I see, yeah. I'm teasing. Between zero and But seven. I'm going to see you soon. You're coming to Vegas for the World Series, <laughs> right? You're not? No, no, no. Why not? Uh, surgery, got some business to take care of. I might come for the main. Main's like maybe 15%, but unlikely. Very I'm shocked. I thought yeah. we had already had conversations to the effect that you were going to be in Vegas. Now, I know producer James will be there. James is grinding the full shebang, my mate. James is winning a bracelet, by the way. Producer James Dempsey, you heard it here first. Maybe it's Circus Circus. You mean at the World Series? Yeah. Playing poker? James Dempsey. The one that here. Listen, he's old school. How much is that? Precisely the issue. No, <laughs> he fits in perfectly. Ace Queen, no issues for Tom Dwan as he goes sailing under the gun. I mean, you can see it. Producer James, Dave from Kansas, they're the same person. He can think like the countless number of recreational players that work their way into the smaller buy-in World Series events. Perhaps an advantage. As Duan. Dog, Brandon. I'm going to guess played till 11 a.m. Like just. You can ignore that email about your transfer yeah. limits yeah. Uh, on stars being like down. Like, I fixed it for you. And I was like, wow, I like, I didn't even see this email. But I, I really needed my transfer limits raised for Sunday. So. Is there something good on Sunday? Uh, Scoop Man. Oh, cool. But yeah, we have uh, finally got. Internet at our cottage in Quebec, so I'm heading up. That was awesome. Gonna play a little online poker, go for go for a paddle, go for a swim. How much is the scoop? Sounds like a very Canadian weekend. Yes. Ah, uh, ten k. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's also stuff on GG, and you know, can probably, well, hopefully I'm getting in like 80k in buy-ins or whatever, but. Realistically, it could be like a 150, 200K kind of day. <laughs> Just add watch some ice hockey, and that really is kind of the quintessential Canadian weekend as <laughs> Haxton with the dry humor. That was a fantastic one-liner. <laughs> oh, my word. Look at the hands behind. Ace Queen limping for Jason. The jam from Haxton with a hand that... Performs reasonably well against a pretty wide variety. But in this particular spot, 
Not so much. Watson declines the ace 10 suited. Now Dwan with two kings. Yeah, so Watts just recognizing that Jason can be trapping both 1.2 million effective in a disciplined fold with the ace 10 of clubs. That's also on Dwan's mind here with these kings. Would hate to have Jason snap call show him the aces. So Jason with the eye roll, understandably so. I get a count. What's this? 65 antes or so. Just shy of 70. Could be some card sharing. All right, gets away from it. So, fold. Kuhn. Obviously, drawing live, as just about any hand is in short deck. It's been so long ago that I forget what I folded. Haxton. Always. Rolling the dice, picking up the gut shot. Backdoor hearts for the time being, a 10. The required kit to spare this 220. Chop it up. Turn. Fails to yield it, but got her on board. Six would be a chop. Instead, it's the eight. <laughs> so, Haxton. Showered, but registration still open. Think he's got another 50k? I think so. I'm more, I'm more concerned about a very evil laugh from Jason. They're kind of <laughs> incredibly menacing. Villainous. Yeah. It's like, all right, I folded the best hand. Now you're all dead. Let's go, Richard Young. Still rocking the red cap, understandably so. The wrong good cap. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Ensign Yu, who was at that final table where Richard would eventually emerge victorious. Anson with the third place finish. Devoris, your overall chip leader. Better than two to one? Yeah, insane stuff for Devoris at the start. Limp Brigade gets a finger wag from the button of Elton Sang. Yeah, Elton obviously recognizing that there's dead money out there. He can still re-enter, but only has about 30 minutes or so to click that re-entry button. So just happy to spin the wheel. Apparently Richard is as well and might be sensing that there is some dusty range for Elton in particular on the button, maybe looking up at what he perceives to be a bunch of dead limpers. This is a sticky call from Richard. Just Henry. Recognizing the spot, yeah. Knows he has fold equity. Knows his customer too, as Elton flops the gutter. I kind of don't. Mm. I got Nine outs don't. at present in this 382. I <laughs> He's ten still in the lead, looking to fade, and it's done so. <laughs> How many hours do you think Elton and Richard have played together over the years? I mean, Why we'll count it in hours when yeah, we should right. count it in months. weeks or months? <laughs> yeah, talk about knowing your customer. Great little pickup there for Richard. 
Ike Haxton with the snap re-entry. I assume Elton's going to do the same up yep. to 39 runners in this one now. Feels almost, like a safe one. Almost 2 million in the prize pool. Never ceases to amaze me, Henry, how this far into a festival, this much already invested from both a, just a sheer stamina, will, and energy standpoint, let alone a financial one, we can still just slide a nice little $2 million prize pool together for you. Across 20 uniques, let's not forget. There was some concern. You know, I was speaking with Danny, and he was like, I'm going to be I was surprised if we get up to, you know, 15 runners and yeah, 20 uniques, multiple re-entries, penultimate event of the series. It's a main event as well. There's that little Jacob and company Triton collab timepiece up for grabs as well as a main event title. Welcome back. All <laughs> worthy pursuits. Certainly. Talking to Danny Tang. Forty-eight. 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 the new arrival here, announcing himself early with the King Jack off suit, which makes it 48,000 to go. Ace queen for Dvoris in the cutoff. Third in chips overall, bats. Yeah, but potentially tangle with Dvoris. One, one point two. Strange. It's the last day, Ali. We'll make it. You've made it this far. We will. I have no concerns about this. Armed with green juices to start the day. They're so One good. One last man. cleanse. Incredibly healthy, which you know I know all yeah. about. <laughs> so Dvoris, the lone customer, as Bads retreats behind the shades, and will play for 114. King Queen seven board, top pair against second pair. It's going to be a really tough spot for Dvoris to continue. Yeah, middle pair, nut kicker. Just clarity across turns and rivers. It's that sizing, though, Ali. Yeah, the milkman at work here. Any extras today, boys? Boris <laughs> has an interesting one, blocking queens, king queen. Dramatic pause, but in the end, a flat. Now trips for bads, which of course leaves Dvoris drawing dead. Yeah, it could be trouble for Dvoris. Top card pairing. Knows that Bads is certainly capable of double barreling with gut shots, open enders. Very impressive as played. Dvoris manages to find the fold right here on the turn. Well, the price of continuation has gone up. <laughs> so has the entry count, by the way. To 41 runners. Boss Paul, Ike Haxton, Elton Tsang. See Elton at our table clicking the re-entry button. Dvoris does come along for a river. That river double pairs the board. So 
It's only losing to King Queen. We can kind of safely eliminate sevens from the cutoff. Obviously, pairs in short deck, not as strong as they are in Hold'em. There is some strange world in where Dvoris maybe turns his hand into a bluff, blocking King Queen. I'm stretching a little bit. My imagination likes to run a bit wild when I see these guys. They're a lot more tamed and disciplined. Well, to be fair, flush draws and straight draws have bricked out here, and one could see some of that kit entering Baz's range. Not sure whether or not three barrels are the manner in which he approaches such kit. As he now fires 240,000. And if we take the 7x out of Baz's range safely, the exercise for Dvoris is kind of becoming, do you or don't you have a king? Precisely. Bluff catcher here with the ace-queen, all those draws breaking. It isn't under the gun open. Bad certainly. And, and with opens in, in short deck compared to limping, it's going to be weighted towards top of range. Ace, king, kings, pocket queens, although maybe pocket queens would slow down. It's also one of those board textures, Ali, where Bad's bet flop and turn, if he was bluffing with a gut shot or a straight draw or a flush draw, would he really fire on this river, the double-paired board? Would he not be somewhat concerned that Dvoris can have King X in his range from the cutoff? One would imagine, absolutely. I don't think any longer after Dvoris finds this tank. Really struggling with this one. Kind of see a bit of confusion. Not struggling, obviously, from a thought perspective, but more where that thought leaves him terms of a decision and he deems it call as course is reversed on the Devoris rocket ship that's big pickup there for him yeah Devoris keeping him honest That that's moving up to second in chips. 41 runners now, with two million in the prize pool. DeVore is still with the chip lead by a far narrower margin. Average stack currently 820,000, good for 137 antes. Yeah, welcome to the table, Nikita. We still have to stay some out here. Are you much of a, a spa guy, Ali? Do you like saunas, steam rooms, that uh -huh. kind of thing? I feel like this is borderline rhetorical. Absolutely. So funny. Is the answer <laughs> to apologize? Keep saying. Why do you ask? Flop check turn very weak. Makita <laughs> is an absolute beast. Always punished. He always won. Right. Right. I mean, he this guy. <laughs> like, don't said, get uh, into any sauna flop. last longer with bad. <laughs> no. Not at all. And <laughs> yesterday, <True. laughs> before uh, before the main event, oh. comes in. He's like, hey guys, do you mind me cranking up the heat a little bit? 
takes the bucket, I thought he, pours like, it on the rocks. He was on a flight out already yesterday. And, and then, then leaves. Back. Yeah. Three minutes leaves later. He was so happy. Yeah, then, yeah. I was like, is this guy I just... Crying, but I happy. Is he trolling us? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, not pictured was me right outside the sauna urging Makita oh. to go in and do this. Full well he, knowing he that you Shardek were in that sauna. Nah, you see, he went to play. watched a little bit. Huh? He watched Meanwhile, a little bit. No, I meant like maybe temperature he fairly balmy. You see, this King King jackboard. I love this from Ansem. Sorry, the double double barreling. He will play. Mm. Just running. from early position. Twenty five k gets yeah, the job done. Tickle. Before you came to join. Oh, I say you did That's a long time spa attendee. Yesterday, because you left, you just the statement. Mm. Uh, I feel me, compelled to step in <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and guide. Then, uh, cash game, you make three, three point over a minute, then send back two point over a minute. She, she said, I you won three million in the cash game? Yes. Uh, wow. <laughs> you love one section. <laughs> non stop win. Uh, non stop. Then you see, your wife say, huh, are you sure? Huh, you make so much. <laughs> you see, yeah. <laughs> Believe. Yeah, that's crazy. Just 11 crazy. winning sessions in a row. Richard, yeah. referring to Dao Min Fu. Maybe his, his, uh, his wife is financial control something. Sure. Otherwise, well, you be careful, don't do so much. Uh, budget about. Median like that, he spoke as if he really <laughs> he knows what he's doing though, you know. He's like, my coach teach me bet, flop, check, turn, very weak. <laughs> <All night. laughs> check, flop, bet, turn, very strong. <laughs> he keeps saying that. Uh, <laughs> Pin in the spa conversation as we defer to far more interesting topics. Tales from the Cash Games, four-way affair in the Ace-10-7 board, where Richard fires 20K with just the Broadway gutty. Ace is up, is going to await him. Makita folds the future lacking King-10 in a four-way affair. He'll get in two minutes of gamble. Elton will do the same. Anson flat called this one, and the turn smashes Richard. Yeah, unfortunate spot for Anson, and it just has mm -hmm. the cool flop. Can't really be doing much raising with top and bottom. This kind of board texture. Keep him honest for at least one more street, but certainly some alarm bells ringing. Too bad, good. Two pair, no good. Richard taking that one down. As we flip back over to our other feature. Not the check down, by the way, in that last one. Henry on the end, perhaps small concerns that Anson was out there with spades. Yeah, on the button, going to be checking all of the lower spade type holdings. Meanwhile, King 9-6 in a four-way limped one. Top pair for both Watson and Greenwood. The 43 runners now. Very different environment and atmosphere out there, Ali. Very chilled. Everyone's winding down. Been a long old grind last night. Had Jason and Paul laughing at the table because for about three, four hands in a row, they completely misread the board. Quite literally, all in situations where Paul thought he lost the hand, Jason thought Paul lost the hand, mm -hmm. and then they both, the dealer's like, what are you guys 
talking about pool wins. He's got aces and queens like that beats sixes and sevens. And yeah, all kind of just saying understandable. The brain is pretty cooked at this stage. King. King. Understandable check downs. Why you yes. bad beat me? Watson and Greenwood are going to chop. <laughs> Sam claiming a bad beat. Very fond of Sam. He's Jump. taken. <laughs> <laughs> Jumped in the booth, obviously, day two oh, yeah. of the Luxon Pay Invitation alongside you. I always recommend to the viewers, if you didn't see that coverage, you had Michael Watson mm. with Ali, Sam Greenwood with Ali, Bonomo with Ali. That is six hours of coverage with three of the uh -huh. best minds in the world. Uh, in terms of how much that coaching would cost, Oh God. It's quite literally thousands of dollars worth. You play Provided that insights. it can be bought, <laughs> you know? Uh, it might not be for sale. Definitely recommend re-watching that stream if you did miss it. Once we wrap things up here today, get the notepad out, get the pen out, just listen to these it's geniuses already? dissect some uh, intricate uh, parts of the game tree. David Yan also he hopped in. He did. Right. Not that same day, the following. Get, yeah, five more. New stack. Yes. Fresh. Fresh beat. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, yeah. Boss uh, appears to have cobbled together a little hand. north of the 300. <laughs> he rebought for. Uh -huh. and his ace king is prepared for a spin. And Jason. Contemplating giving him one with two jacks. Can't afford to do it. Yeah, potentially going to spin the wheel here. Does have two players behind. Some concern. <coughs> you want this one? I think it's suited. One of the kings busy for boss in Greenwood's hand. It looked like all the aces were live. <laughs> and a king in the window, vaulting boss in front. Jason, prepay prepped, but hold the phone. Turn card, gives him a gutter and a flush draw. Jack would, of course, work as well. And there is the 10. As Paul showered. That was kind of the last hand of the level. Maybe maybe they'd let you re-enter. Probably not. No, it was 8K that hand. It was 6K they were well, Last hand of the level, I believe, Harley. If Boss has time to click the re-entry button. Shook his head, no. Not sure we're going to see him back in this one. And, you know, Jason's been pretty humble in public about how well he has run during this meteoric rise over the course of the past few years and many spots that could have gone either way maybe some thin advantages or disadvantages even certainly takes nothing away from the amount of skill he puts on display with what has at this point become just everyday regularity for us as witnesses it is pretty ridiculous yeah, after some time, don't know about you, I want to speak on my part rather than assuming it's the same for you, but, you know, we show up and we cover these events, 50Ks, 100Ks, you name it, millions of dollars up top. That's just another day at a Triton. You're not wrong. You come to expect it, you're just like, oh, well, you know, but these flips worth six, seven figures at times little pinch me moment every now and then. Well, these tens worth considerably less here against Kiat Lee's trip queens. As 
Juan posed the question, and now it's Queens full for Kiat, which leaves Durr drawing dead. He will check. Couldn't agree with you more, Henry. I remember once upon a time when I would get in the booth, first time I covered the World Series of Poker main event, just that sense of, wow, mm. people are paying $10,000 to play poker, and look how many of them there are. Now, the 25Ks, the 20Ks, we kind of mm. are like, oh, warm-ups. 50Ks even to a certain extent, like this short deck main event don't necessarily move the needle as we be become <laughs> so desensitized. It's crazy. But the reality is that these are still staggering sums that are being played for in any of our events. 52,000, the amount Duan will need to play for a river. Does not want to improve to a straight. Little does he know it. As another 104 glides into the middle. And that one is a bit awkward, but four liner on board facing a barrel with that reality coupled with a pair on board should leave Queens and Jacks comfortably in the bin. There's the rest. You know, I don't want to cast any further shadows on the notion of a 50K buy-in somehow lacking significance. But if you've been playing cash at the stakes that these guys have, mm. undoubtedly till 11 a.m. because things have been kicked up and some people are buried. Unclear if Duan was on the right or yeah, the wrong yeah. side of it. Maybe this event here, looking up at what you imagine will be a first place prize that sort of amounts to a couple of pots going your way in that cash game. You're in need of a bit of a, a mindset shift to take it 100% seriously. Not alleging, by the way, that Durr's guilty of this at present, but I certainly know if I put myself in that spot, Henry, I feel like, you know, it would be a very natural thing to be grappling with. It's really tough, and it's something we've spoken about on several occasions, you know, the mindset work that these players put in. Because you're right, you know, if you're, if you're stuck a milli in the cash games and you're playing a 50k where you have to kind of win in order to recoup those losses. I mean, I'm sure you've been there before where you've played cash games or you've played like a small tournament. And you're just kind of like, whatever. But I think that is different here because it's Triton. The coveted Triton trophy, you know, being able to say that you're a Triton champion is not something many people can say. And uh, I think that's why these guys continue competing. For a lot of them, it's not about the money. Uh, we've heard a few champions say that they don't need to be here, you know, from a, from a financial point of view. Sure. Doing it for the competition, battling yeah, with the best. Don't play any other series anymore. Semi-retired, if you will. Yeah in that regard, as Kiat again with trips. <coughs> and again, Duan looks to be the man with enough to be a customer. Lee, not the better on this occasion. Durr firing 21 on the button. This is sort of the end of the deck that has a check back in a multi-way spot, tends to be repable. <laughs> These queen nines have been working out for Kia in the last couple of hands. There's a few straight draws out there that he needs to protect against, obviously. Does it just want to give a hand like jack 10, 10-8, jack 8? 
a cheap turn. Tom does make the fold and Ali, it looks like Boss was the first elimination, busting quite literally the first hand after late reg closed. There were a few people that re-entered that were waiting on the sidelines, Seth Davies, Chris Brewer, Catley, one of them, all jumping in. Ike Haxton as well, getting very lucky against Danny Tang. Jacks against Queens, flopped quads up to 600K. And now Davies getting lucky against Mazenkov on the outer table, ace-10 against ace-king. Mazenkov down to just two antis. So that's official. Prize pool's been confirmed. <laughs> 44 runners. 17 left. Daniel Dvoris leading the field. I'm caught too. Oh, you're not having me? Yeah. Akita, Jason, Sawat, Sam Greenwood rounding out the top five. Six players paid. 154,000. The min cash. 700. Yeah, you got to do that at the You like make him feel in the call the and then he like turns over and flops. Good bit of runway, of course, between us and that money bubble. As two pocket queens find themselves in this one. Greenwood under the gun limping. Lee and Duan caught in this crossfire that comes courtesy of Kuhn's button 80. Okay, now the Poku is serious enough. I can't have any assistance. Greenwood has made the call. So Jason is technically leading the POI. Right there. Technically. Yeah, the big push is it. Let's see what we got here. I'm thinking maybe a bit of overlay. Dead money in the middle. Let's make the call. Well, Jack 10s do tend to perform rather well against a really wide variety of holdings. Especially multi way. Mm -hmm. sure. Here he is with the open ender. Note that the only future improvements available to Kuhn and Greenwood are going to be Queen High Straight or. Queen high flush for Greenwood in particular. Yeah, of course, four of Tom Dwan's eight outs. Busy pocket queens for both Greenwood and Kuhn. <coughs> Dwan jams. Jason asking for a count. Now, how uncomfortable is this? for Jason, given Greenwood mm. is behind him. Yeah, a bit of a pickle sandwich. Although Greenwood's limp calling range shouldn't really be weighted too heavy towards this part of the range of hands, this board texture. And can we safely remove kings and aces? Yeah. Given that I would say we so. would have heard from him pre, and now all of a sudden the queens look a little bit better, and we're just trying to determine whether or not Duan is on a draw. Nevertheless, Jason's fold, perhaps much more so associated with Duan. You see the high roll. As Kuhn instantly shedding some light. Duan picking up on the exchange. Four sevens, the only outs available is the Queen of Spades and Diamonds. Of course, we saw in the muck. Duan fails to connect. That will draw the curtain on Durr's participation here in this short deck main. And deliver a healthy boost. 
position. Took Greenwood stack. Yeah. <laughs> the I mean, I'll there. The hard, the hard out. For Jason. Yeah, off the table. How about this, Sally? He jumping into this one. Looks like Richard Young getting bluffy. And I don't think Richard has a reputation for bluffing, Henry. Majority of the times I find him in a pot betting big on a river, he's got it. I agree. I mean, based off that heads up match yesterday as well, you know. He did claim his second title, beating Brewer heads up in the 25k short deck. Now bringing us up to speed, Henry, pre-flop. This was a four-way limp. Devoris opened as the limper. Checked around on that Jack-10-8 board. Then on the turn, Devoris bet 27,000. Richard then raised it up to 110. Devoris called, and here on the end... The 240 gets through as Young's gutter and diamond draw, improving to no more than a seven, but yielding profit. Yielding profit indeed. A new world of poker is coming, and your chance to get in on the action is now. Triton Play is a social poker game that is looking to revolutionize the way the world plays poker, and they're open for pre-registrations. When that QR code pops up, be sure to scan it and start your journey into the new world. Triton plays with some really exciting stuff coming up, a stealth demo, a London giveaway, and so much more. You do not want to miss out. We've been working tirelessly behind the scenes since, I mean, I first joined in Madrid last year. I know you've been involved in some of the conversations, the likes of Nananoko, <laughs> Jeff Gross and the team. I remember a plastic truck that club. And uh, that guy knew one thing that I'm really looking forward <laughs> to is hopefully the chance to <laughs> kind of play along with some of the viewers Check Check whilst we're Bet streaming River. at Future nice Starts. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Who is this? <laughs> yeah. You know down. I'm putting you in the bin. Very funny. <laughs> he knows a lot of things I don't know. Actually. What was that? Yeah. Putting you yeah. in the bin? We all tournament no money. Putting me in the bin. Yeah. Bluffing you on try and play? Not yeah. going to happen. Like yeah. right. Vietnam, okay. he Biggest reason is going to be that he was sick in Vietnam. I'm going to leave that to you. Yeah. Unless, of course, specifically asked mm. uh, I think you eight, Richard. to step in by the fans discount. and shower you. <laughs> At that point, I will rise to the call. He's the big shower me. He's the Are we going to be able to gamble on that thing? Eight. We can, well, you know, cross book. Okay. <laughs> One, I'm into like it. Not gonna put <laughs> yeah. Elton appears into it as well. That is a rigorous <laughs> massage. <laughs> Relaxation, not really a key ingredient of that one. As Azzy Akuski delivering some stress to the limpers. Not Peter and Yeah. This cut off 88. Sorry. All good. You bluff me, you don't put the ante in. <sighs> Set times. And Urban Boris takes it down. <laughs> Boris <laughs> just saying to Richard Young, you bluffed me that you don't put the ante in. <laughs> Richard tried getting away with it yesterday as well. We're just like, could I just not get a discount just one time? <laughs> Obviously, all in chest. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 44 runners, 16 left with six places. Paid a sizable min cash, by the way. Ali, 3x. 154,000 for six, 750 for the champion. Some sizable investments being made, perhaps, though, to get to that min cash by those that will ultimately be fortunate enough to burst the bubble and make the money here in this final day of coverage, penultimate event. Love that word. Uniquely British, I think. Oftentimes, you'll say something and I just make a little note and then Google the definition later. 
I thought you were going to say, Henry. Not let, me, to let me finish the compliment. Okay. I don't think I can fold this one. Fantastic vocabulary. Lexicon, if you will. Gamble, gamble, Do learn a lot in the booth with you as, uh, well, Anson. Oops. Gamble, gamble, <laughs> looking to learn a lot. <laughs> from the likes of Richard. Oh, Got himself in a picture. decent way. <laughs> against Bats as Ace Jack suited is the registration oh, period. Yeah. Yeah. Let's come to a close. Yeah. Still, still We're flip. playing a big oh, one. Yeah, still flip. Yeah, yeah still flip. 40. I have a 40 eight. something. No, as well. I think it's 40. 40? Yeah. Elton limped. Nikita yeah. jammed. Oh. Anson oh, woke okay. up with I'm one an and now eight. two. <laughs> oh Aces. Cover that. Nikita. King of spades on the top. Brewer. Oh. Not exactly yeah. making friends. Ace is full on the turn. Anson. Showered. Yeah. GG's, Anson. Henry, I was stepping in like to cut you off at the pass. Before the discomfort of a compliment <laughs> took root. You struggle with compliments, Ali. Well, I, I wanted to get out there that you would make a note more so to never ever say whatever it is that I just said in the interest of career preservation. Wait, what did you say? What haven't I said in this booth, Henry? It would leave one wondering how it is that I remain gainfully employed across the span that I have. Nothing. <laughs> Reach into the hat. Kick, Take your pick. Kick, 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 the this annoying this thing is... <laughs> They uh, give you a lot of pressure. Is that very funny. In KK, you your C level very pressure of commentary. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we're doing like the <laughs> school grading system, A, B, C, D, you want to see F. the uh, Queen Jack suit or yeah. something. It's still better than yeah. a lot of people's A plus commentary. Uh, which is probably part of the reason why. <laughs> Do you need to borrow money? You get Henry? away with murder. It's getting a little uncomfortable. I'm trying to figure out what the angle Listen, is. Listen, there's a car payment that I'm trying to put down. <laughs> It's a Bentley. <laughs> I told you, you know, the Bentley Continental. Yeah. Family car. Yeah. Still no family, but... The Flying Spur, more the family variant. Yes, Four-door. Meanwhile, yeah. a Spur, perhaps, in Elton Sang's yeah, future prospects uh, here. Yeah. As Ace Jack performed well a pot ago. And here it is. No, calling it off. And turning into the better kit on a King Jack no, six board. Table seven handed is yeah, it's gonna be nice. AX three out. Just gonna find the last in the front last by a pip. Just like stays that way on the turn. One pull at a two outer, just seven percent. A little grimace on Elton's oh. face, oh. and then a big beautiful ten of clubs. Even the massage therapist appears to recognize how filthy that one was. Probably good for business for her though, in terms of continued therapy. Okay, pause button hit. Temple corner pocket. Wow. Out of table eliminations include Alex Mazhenkov. The Ukrainians out, Dennis Shufrin. Stephen Chidwick is now the shortest stack, 14 of 14. What a swingy day it's been already, just a level and a half in. Been a bit violent. It has been incredibly violent. On the wrong end of the violence, just then, Devoris, who is currently yeah, sitting wild too, in well. third in chips behind Mike Watson Six to thoughts, not very much. and Badziakuski. That's like. <laughs> so 
Sounds crazy with some of those GG 25Ks. Ace, nine, those, ten, like, seven, monotone board here. K. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing to yeah, speak five of. Binds, bubble, and then like ten binds. And another kettle? Place. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> okay. Yeah, those ones create the, definitely create like the shoving into only all like jacks plus spots. <laughs> this tournament, by the way, Ali with the 750,000 top prize, a potential trip saver for a few people. Not to put anyone on blast, of course. But I'm seeing some uh, yeah. some records over on the Try and Poker Plus app. Yeah. Like yeah, Haxton mm -hmm. played yeah. everything, cashed the 20k for 35k, came fifth in the 30k app. mystery bounty, but then everything yeah, I mean, else, the last feel like 10 tournaments or so. Some real masonry. So it's tough, well. man, you know. You come to these trips and variants. We've spoken about it before. Seth Davies, Nick Petrangelo, Chris Vogelsang, 21. Tournaments played, zero caches until the 75k. Mm. Makita, of course, came second for 1.2 in that 75k, 1.2 million, but likely still down on the trip given re entries and whatnot. It's 360. Oh, 370. My bad. Same for Dvoris. Only one cache this trip. How much? 370. Fifth in the 40k for 369. When you take in the main event and the 200k oh. Luxon Invitational. Eight, sorry. Yeah, there's a bit of desert dwelling that goes down from time to time here. Oh, and King. Chris Why Brewer with Queen 10 suited in a rough way against Elton Sang. East Queen has him dominated. Now prospects Yo, for I'm Brewer. Despite being up against trip nice. aces, he's got the gutter and binks the king. But easy. a club in Elton's hand. Uh, this isn't <laughs> too easy. Not to yeah. mention yeah. full house like outs. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, it's like fucking 80% of the deck. 10 to 8. Any club or club. Oh. Top it up. Mm. The 10. <laughs> Feels <laughs> a bit fair. Two, That's absurd. Nine. Elton was a favorite eight, on the turn. It's like, yeah, three, and a significant eight, one at that. Yeah, Extra two eyes. 13 outs to and win club. and <laughs> 3 outs to chop. So he was actually 14.5 in total, which is like a little above 50%. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> yeah, that, did, that one did not That's feel. That's crunching the numbers. <laughs> <laughs> that one did not feel like I was uh, in easy uh, shape. <laughs> 14 and a half outs. So like, yeah, I was, he was I'm quite so happy favorite. with that chop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like the chop I had yesterday with Danny. I have ace 10 on queen, 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 ace against king, jack, and then rival queen. We know something. Oh, that we was crazy. Up. Randy and I absolutely ten lost it in the booth. Ten and three more oh, still got flush draw. Not going to be the last one. Mm. It's going to leave us speechless. Good. It, it. Onwards we march. Morris, limping, ace 10 off. Bloody Elton double. will do the same with this ace 6 suited. Bad says run it. With a pretty one. 64k in the middle, and what have we on the flop? Queen jack 10. So the Broadway Gutty and bottom pair for Dvoris. Backdoor Diamonds. Elton Sang. Backdoor Spades and the Broadway Gutty. And then top two for Bads, the best hand. But he will face pressure on this very coordinated board. Yeah, Dvoris again. Feels like something that we've been re reiterating quite a bit, but... He's going to have the most traps from early position. Ace-king, kings, queens, 
certainly has a range advantage, or at least a perceived range advantage here. There's no neither player behind can have ace king in theory, as it should be raising. I guess Elton can. Elton could have some traps like the over limp trap, but seems less likely at this stage of the tournament. So 21 ahead, as the field does not thin. Elton pairs the turn of little consequence in terms of his aspirations. She's got him in an arm bar. Doesn't appear particularly concerned. <laughs> She's just sipping with that. on some OJ, playing a 50k, 14 left, and he's just. In an armbar. Note, by the way, that's not a shade of orange that you'll find in a carton of Minute Maid. Fresh squeezed. Cypriot citrus. Read the room. North Cyprus. Fantastic OJ on tap. How much? 105 on tap. Out of Devoris here. And remember that the upfront kit sometimes waits in the weeds with the likes of Ace King which would very much be there here. Sets as well. Mm -hmm. It's a sizable double barrel lead flop into two players, double barrel for a sizable turn bet. River King as bads. Hung in there, drawing to the boat. DeForest gets there, but he's unlikely to get paid off. Four liner on board. Queen's up looking pretty dusty with 337 in the middle. Sneaky check from Dvoris. Very much so. And by the way, could activate Makita to try to turn this one into a bluff. Could see it. Most certainly. Dvoris basically saying now that he had a hand like a set, maybe a hand like pocket, pocket kings that had blockers to the nut straight and has rivered a decent amount of showdown. Maybe a hand like 9-8. 10-9, check through. I'll tell you what. That required discipline, Henry, because it's tough mm. to identify something that queens and jacks would beat as played. And when that's the case, mm. so especially king. if you remove you know, ace like from the, finals, the typical the range, range for like Dvoris there, I'm would, telling you what, like I think I'm like trying to win that like one. New York or like That's why I'm in like here and he's out yeah. there. Meanwhile, back Seven at the other feature, we find one at the river between Haxton and Watson. Yeah. yeah. Smaller city and they don't have the that history either. Pretty frustrating like that run out. Only been Had an elimination. Yeah. Yeah, out to table, Seth Davies. Ace 10 in a raised pot against Danny Tang. 10 8 6 board. Danny checked with the Queens. Davies overbet jammed like a cheap and did not ticket. improve across turn games and river. The NBA Finals got to seven. Oh, so game, game seven in Denver. How cheap much? Ticket? Yeah. Probably like 4,000, I would guess. 4,000? Yeah, I said, I was saying, Den I don't know how much of like a discount there'll be in like Denver compared to some other ones, but yeah, three, four seems reasonable. Yeah. yeah. Following on with the conversation at the table. What's the most you've paid for, like, a festival or a sporting event? You need to event? find somebody who's not... And would you, like, was it something you were willing to do? Is it something that you would you would do or just again? Find somebody oh, would be outrageous, or are you not much of a, like, courtside kind of like person? Cause I, I can't justify it. I struggle with that kind of stuff. I'm with you. When eye-watering amounts are on request by... Brokers no, who gobbled Mikita, up think, was face value, who had. He, he just admission, and then are trying to scalp you. Yeah, so it mm. been. 
I can't do it. Also, I don't like to come in as a normal, if you will. Prefer you like the boxes. Some sort of angle. Yeah, somebody else pick up his has a hookup. Power yeah. oh, Maybe the casino like, oh, has like two and a half metal some comp tickets, hey, things of that you've nature. Been grinding UTH. Get Not me. Side tickets. <laughs> it's the friends. That don't want to go alone. And I'm here for them. 986 is far from alone are these three interfering with one another. Hence a lack of connectivity with this board. 64,000. Unclaimed for the time being. Round of knuckles. Still divorced from these holdings is the board, courtesy of a six of diamonds on the turn. Now, nine high straights for both Watson and Kuhn. Concerned about possible 10x on the button for Greenwood. They both check. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Temptation Slime. resistance there Slimy from Sam. To go for it. Yeah. yeah. As per usual. Um, Talking of hookups, um, can you never get me center court tickets the app. Is it for the Wimbledon website? finals. I'll be forever. And they couldn't, you couldn't dead. get live. Uh, Update, so I had Still not willing like to drop 15k. Is that what they're fetching? Like Dude, man, for like a good seat. I was looking a few months in advance uh, just for like regular seats. I, uh, You're looking at you 16, 1700 pounds. We should just I try to play big stack fully fly a drone and get um, <laughs> over center court his name? Oh, and just watch it from he's the ground. guy he on back. I guess our coverage oh, would not be yeah. as good as oh, the no. broadcast. Oh, no. Oh, that was... Uh, was that who it was? Yeah, we're Maybe man. we can just oh, hang look. glide oh, around oh, the yeah. stadium. <laughs> like an ultralight. Oh, that's right. Two-man ultralight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I tried to get him to fold, uh, fold the kings on, on the bubble with my ace queen. No. You don't strike me as the type out, that out of the jumping tournament. out of planes or and off cliffs. I have done it. Yeah? Just Both. Like, is the app like glitching? Because you had all these chips and now it says you're out. And I'm just <laughs> like... <laughs> I tried to do that in a few main events myself back in the day and they just, I just sucked out. <laughs> Never paid for a music festival, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it's queen, all things considered. And it's been a long time yeah. since I went. EDC like just went down in Vegas. Hand trying to get him before the king. One of my neighbors who's got four kids actually went to it without the kids, of course. Shocked to see those IG stories. Ace Jack 7 here. Got shots for Watson and Kat Lee. And on the turn, Kyat makes his after a round of checks while Greenwood pairs. Watson improving to the open ender. Yeah, wonderful turn card. Kyat kind of middle of the pack at the moment. Just grinding it out. Knows this is going to be a long bubble given that it is a 3x ROI as a main cash. There's a limped part checked through. Watson now with the sizable three quarters stab on the turn. <sighs> TV, no matter what. This 45K effort from Watson gets understandably raised up by the nuts. Another 100K needed to proceed. So Watson's 
does make the call. Big river incoming, three, four, five in the middle. Does pair the board. Seven of hearts is somewhat of a concern for Kia. So what's waving the white flag unimproved? How concerned is Kiat going to be about a check raise? Has to be somewhat concerned, right? Does check back. Playing it safe. Aces and jacks definitely a part of Swartz's so range. He just busted 13? Yeah. Oh. But it's still, he's in front of me. He uh, had to revive a few times and I didn't, so he got Some chatter there between Jason Kuhn and Elton Sang as we give you a peek at the leaderboard. Apparently, we have lost. Stephen Chidwick confirmed. Henry? We have indeed, down to the final 12 players. And that really makes things interesting for Jason because the gap between the two, just four points, a min cash, just making it ITM would all but secure the title for Jason coming in to the last event. So now I'm very curious to see if other players pick up on that and kind of just try and run Jason over a little bit, knowing that, hey, listen, if you cash, you win. If you don't cash, Stevie wins. $200,000 in overlay, obviously, in consideration of that Player of the Year award. So interesting. Hopefully we're not going to be the ones responsible for anybody suddenly shifting their approach to Jason Kuhn. We live in the past on a delay, doubtful, right. but you never know. Whispers do sometimes make their way into the arena, albeit on a delayed basis. Mikita Badziakuski, your overall chip leader right now with almost two million in front of him. Dvoris in second, Watson in third, as we bring you back to the desk here. Just a pause on account of what I understand is a table break, Henry? Yeah, final two table redraw, completely random. They drew for the outer table, so good news for, for us at the main stage. Uh, the red and blue feature table, just getting ready. Um, Six off the money, sizable min cash, as we've mentioned, you know, 3x return of income. And yeah, average stack of 138 antis. I think this is the stage of the tournament now, full ring, or sorry, six-handed, I should say, um, where we're going to see probably a little bit of caginess, more passiveness, and yeah, playing down to a champion today. I'm looking forward to this one. I mean, Chidwick eliminated really changes things as we go down to the wire. On no that question. Hour. I mean, obviously, at present, Chidwick with the lead, but Jason locking up effectively player of the series has that 100 points. I mean, this is, yeah, this is going to be going down to the wire. Haxton, by the way, shortest stack in the remaining 12-man field with just 44 annies. You see him down there at the bottom of the leaderboard as we give you a glimpse at the Triton Poker Plus app, currently filling in the second of our featured tables where... We do find Devoris, along with Danny Tang, a name that we have yet to mention. He is fourth in chips right now, behind Watson. And, of course, Devoris Bads up at the top. Bads is going to be at that table, by the way, so the big stacks are clustering at that second feature table. Would you rather be in those streets where you've got all the other big stacks, or would you rather kind of be sitting around with the shorties in the middles? It's tough to say. I mean, short deck, you know, the... The equities run so close with the shorties. There are going to be so many spots where you just have to get in, you're flipping, or you know, there's like a 10% equity advantage. Um, so I feel like being in the cluster, a lot of these guys are incredibly well studied in multi way spots, playing deeper, probably feel more comfortable playing post flop and trying to navigate the waters that way. Yeah, we have seen kind of hands that are getting deeper into runouts. We're seeing rivers, we're seeing maybe some of the caginess that you described violence at the top of the day as that registration period was still open. And we have seen a few visit the desk already here today. But uh, yeah, 12 remaining. Half of these guys are going to be unhappy as only six will be paid. Touched on that $154,000 min cash. You see it on your screen. The jump up to 198 if you manage to work your way from sixth up to fifth. So 40... 
45, 44,000, was it? 198? <laughs> Math is hard. Uh, late for the series 16 here. 16 days. Don't you <laughs> 750,000 up top going to the eventual champion. Just quickly, Henry, how do you feel about the prospects of short deck in terms of a future? At the start, it was incredibly difficult for me uh, to kind of follow along, but as I've spent more time alongside you and Randy speaking with some of the players, it's really grown me because I, I kind of thought it's just like it feels like a bit of a gamble. You're removing the deuces through fives, but now after a year of just watching some of the sharpest minds in the game and how they approach it, how they navigate, it's very clear that there's an edge to be had. And yeah, these guys really showcase that. Yeah. All right. The showcase is about to get back underway as both tables are set courtesy of that random table break and the redraw and let's see what the wheel of fortune has bestowed upon us with the 8k ante 16k on the button it's bads and watson at the top of their respective tables ali producer james just pointed out to me that top 12 players receive points, so does not need to cash. So Jason guaranteed at least one additional point here over Stevie, guaranteed 12th. There's of course the multiplier, the main event multiplier of two. If he can make it into the money as well, it's an additional 10 points. So every bust out from here on out is crucial for Jason Kuhn. So what I was saying there about some of the adjustments. Worthy of note, by the way, that when we talk about that narrow margin that Chidwick was ahead in terms of the POI points as we get action back underway, we were already tallying the locked up hundred. That's right. Yes. For Jason Kuhn. Yeah. So really it's as it stands that we are taking things into consideration. And as it stands, Kuhn, courtesy of twelfth, as you mentioned, has a one point margin ahead of Stephen Chidwick. Just staggering to think across how many events, how many different means by which you can tack up tally up points, mm. re entries, on time registrations. Deep runs, Flips. multipliers. Flips. <laughs> I mean, here we are, neck and neck. And here we are in a five-way pot where Queen 8-7 has delivered top two to Martin Nielsen's doorstep. The Faroe Islands man staring at four checks in front of him. Yeah, unlikely to get any customers here given... It's just rags for everyone else. Slow play, not nearly as much of a concept in short deck as it is in its counterpart. Yeah, it does make the big bet. Brewer maybe, nah, nothing. Forest, King High. We'll pick up four Martin, we'll cross the million chip mark up to 1.1. Got Just Bags in the chat saying, good morning, everyone. Hope you're all having a great morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you're watching from. Afternoon here, 3.45 a local time for myself and Ali and these players. But yeah, massive shout out, of course. The 16th day, the final day of this Triton Super High Roller Series at the Merit Royal Diamond in North Cyprus. It's been, it's been a pleasure, Ali, really has. Let me keep an eye on this character. <laughs> Too polite. It's not like YouTube chat, right? There's an angle. Yeah, Shortly here after this message, I no. do anticipate, by the way, <laughs> you know, I'm also terminally ill. I, I need uh, oh. I need uh, some... S no, it's not a true statement. You know, it's that I whole, know. I'm a Nigerian prince, send me your info, that kind of thing. Oh, I've got, I think, 30 million waiting for me. You too. Yeah? Mi Wait, same are we family. Re are the we related? <laughs> We've lost the same heir. 9-7 suited here for Danny Tang. Just kidding, just bags. Love to see friendliness in the chat. Sure beats the alternative. Oh, honestly, I think uh, we have one of the best, if not the best, communities out there. 
always getting involved in the conversation, having fun with us as we're on the call. Really can help us grind along. Well, involvement from three of our players, Tang, Nielsen, and Yang. They look up at Ace Jack 8. Gutter for Danny, backdoor spades. Gutter as well for Nielsen, but bottom two for Richard Young, the best of what's around. Yeah, it's one of those ones, though, you know, just infinite straight draws out there, bottom two, really difficult to navigate. That's the board pairs, of course, and you boat up. But every turn card that isn't a board pair produces a straight. Against this sizable lead from Danny, would not fault Young. For getting out there, he's going to keep him honest for at least one street. It's actually in fantastic shape against this specific holding. Ace pairs. And that will be a dissuasive development for Danny, unless he tries to turn his hand into a bluff. Obviously, Richard hates to see that card. It does feel like a potential bluff card for Danny, maybe, maybe limping in from early position. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Situational awareness on display there as that 90 instantly sends Jack-8 into the bin. That nice work there from one of Hong Kong's finest. Yeah, and the 20K. Just shoving blind. Just Continuing. Army. Yeah, to get those rebuy points. Mm. I think there's an angle there. Or of course, Henry so. currently referring to the double down friendliness <laughs> by Just Backs. Just Backs, you're on watch. I want to believe in you. I believe in him. Insane production and commentary. Cheers, boys. Appreciate the kind words and. A yeah, massive shout out to the production crew. Oh, so you haven't scrolled down. He's like, by the way, Henry Ali, send a fiver over. <laughs> <laughs> See there? It, no, no, I'm just kidding. The production crew, by the way, share hands. Shout out to the team. Their grind, by the way, I was, I was really is beyond there. ours. Where are you? Them. Okay, Fill no, 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 in. no. Do it, Henry. Your your lane. It needs to be said. I mean, we just have it easy. We're in our secret lab chairs chilling in the booth, talking nonsense for most of the day, doing the heavy lifting. They're doing the heavy lifting, I should say. The camera equipment, all of the stuff behind the scenes. And then you know when the day ends, some of them doing the cash games till the early hours, but when they're not, you would think maybe they're gonna go to bed, get some of those REM cycles in, early night, come back fresh. Not, Not a necessarily chance. the case, is it? They take over roulette and baccarat. <laughs> Private tables. <laughs> no. In chest. The whole wide world for Dan DeVoris here. Oh, how about that flush draw, though, for Yong? Flushes do beat full houses in short deck. This could be a really fun one. No clubs busy, by the way, in anyone else's hand. Worthy of note. The slow play from Devoris. I would imagine will come to an end now that the board is two-toned. Some vulnerability. Charge the flush draws. Just 25K. And on the strength of the club draw primarily, but also the straight gutter, which of course is dead. Richard will come along. We continue after the break. Okay, continue after the break. So heads up to the end where Dvoris has actually made himself quads. The boss bricking was live going to the river. Dvoris just praying that Richard has an ace. And 
130 it goes and out the door the field goes as a scheduled break is upon us with registration closed here in our 50k main event as you get a peek at us doing our bidding at the desk you didn't even smile at the camera Ollie. what's going on that wasn't a live flyby I was spanked Henry could have smiled you know, in the past had I know that they were going to slide it in on us like that maybe <laughs> they got you they could have caught me flashing the pearlies or the slightly tarnished <laughs> as it were it's all that green juice mate celery Badzi Akuski green and clean is his living right now Almost 2 million in front of him ahead of Dvoris. 1.6. Those are the guys that are enjoying the bulk of the spoils thus far today. As we bring you back to the desk, Ali and Henry uh, having fun with the chat. Things pretty easy going. It was a violent begin, uh, beginning rather to the day. But uh, players are going to go to the break, come back in, obviously settling down for the road to the bubble. Yeah, completely different situation now that late reg is over and done with 44 entries sizable min cash and obviously some heavy icm implications coming into effect even though we're still six off the money uh really looking forward to this next frame i mean this is really the stage of the tournament that players are going to set themselves up for a deep run to go on and actually win the tournament so may the best man win i'm glad you talked about that setup briefly i remember hearing as i pointed out that somebody had a really bad beat at one point during the series and they were you know, on on a short stack and hearing pushback that, well, you wouldn't have been put in that situation to take that beat by like a really dusty hand that, that got somebody all in had you not allowed your stack to get whittled down there. So that setup phase yep. where you kind of prevent that sort of run bad of somebody just looking up and going, OK, I'll take this very dusty combo and give you a spin. Something that needs to be addressed here 100%. and now. We're going to step aside, and as we do, we'll leave you with a GTO Wizard quiz, but stay close. Continuing coverage of the 50K Short Deck Main comes your way after this. The following quiz is brought to you by GTO Wizard. You open pocket fives from early position and face a three bet from the big blind. You're 25 big blinds deep. Do you fold, call, or shove? Do you know the right answer? Take your chance to win a one-month premium GTO Wizard subscription. Scan the QR code or go to gtowizard.com slash triton. We give away five subscriptions every day. Master poker and learn how to crush the competition with GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players.
Check is good. Check is good. Yeah, check is good now. Trip sixes on the board. Ah. Our uh, seven always comes. Mm. Now Devoris, who's already in the lead with the ace queen, does pick up a flush draw. Oh, okay. And then makes sixes nice full of aces to polish off not one but two buy ins. That's the gold tweez of more. And Devoris catapulting. Yeah, yeah. One sure there still. in Triton earnings. Overwhelming chip leader now, Ali. 2.3 million plus in First front of him as we swing it over to our other featured table. First glimpse at this collection. There is Sir Watts. As well as Tom Dwan, who my understanding is was also a part well, of that cash we'll game. Not sure if he one. played through till 11 a.m. I've got a funny feeling when it comes to all-nighters, especially without naming any names, some of the bigger wells in Vegas come into town that you've been known to leave the casino when the sun's coming up. I've actually stayed in the casino through sunup to the following <laughs> sundown on more than one occasion. Photographic evidence does exist of me perhaps catching a few REM cycles yeah. on the adjacent <laughs> table, actually. I've climbed on move, and no slept game, on a poker like table. I True story. I mean, that I could definitely see it. Game was good. Nuts straight here for Watson, as Duan was the only player to seek a peek at the turn for 15,000. 84 in the middle now, as just 14 uniques of our original 17 are currently Strapped in. 40. What's of course with that double up, second hand of the day, second in chips coming into this pot. Dwan. Calls the 40,000 on the turn with just second pair. It's going to take a spade or a board pair on this river for him to have any prayer of being able to blow Mike off this hand, which, of course, the seven of hearts does not constitute. Okay. Yeah, so this is hijack v. cutoff. Dwan may be just giving Sir Watts a ton of gut shots. Sounds like jack nine, eight ten, king ten. 
Ace nine does, of course, now improve to a straight. But not giving Watson much credit for a legit hand. And the polarization play from Watson, who asks Dwan for it all. Continued on the six of hearts turn. Now thinking of heroing off with King Jack, just second pair. I'm blocking those gut shots. Does block King 10, King 9. Well, ultimately. The only chip thrown in front of Dwan was the time extension. Marker down. I thought that maybe we didn't gas up the Global Express. I was about to say, like, where's the PJ? Yesterday there was some conversation about perhaps Air Triton being orchestrated, as so many of our regs do reside in Vegas. Maybe we get some private aviation international setups. I remember you speaking about this briefly. Yeah. It makes sense. <laughs> And welcome back to continuing coverage of the 2023 Triton Super High Roller Series from here at the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel and Casino in North Cyprus. Final day of coverage is upon us, which means it's the final opportunity to swap out Henry for Randy. Ali Najad, yours truly here in the 50K Short Deck main event where Makita Badziakuski is at the top of the chip counts, followed by Daniel Dvoris and Mike Watson with the prize pool set, just six people going to be lucky enough to make the money. Yeah, we well, you know, again, once we're playing the 50K short deck main, we've got a, a family of players who just come to every single Triton stop. Really just uh, the cream of the crop out here. And, you know, looking at this leaderboard, I'm not no surprise to see those names at the top. A good chunk of those who made their way here to this particular festival already on flights back home. The ones who stay truly hardcore and, of course, two of the names that jump out, Randy, were the ones in the hunt for the Ivan Leal Player of the Year Award, one of whom has already made their way to the exit. That being Stephen Chidwick, who came in with the lead on the day, but as Henry mentioned before the break, Jason Kuhn, courtesy of 12th or better, which is locked up, is going to earn enough points along with the multiplier to leapfrog in front of him by a nose. Yeah, well, that's um, clearly great. It's good for Jason to tr still try to get as many points as he can as there's still that one uh, event at the back end. So as, as it stands now, currently in fifth place, in prime position to do so. Yeah, that one event you're referring to, of course, is going to be a single day 20K short deck. My guess is those that bust out from this point forward may be hunting the reg desk for one final swing from here in North Cyprus. So storylines still abound as that 200K and, of course, that Player of the Year award title still doesn't have a home. Doing some calculations right now, trying to determine whether or not Jason can actually lock it up based on his performance here in this one. I want to say a win would assuredly make it happen, but second or third, not quite as sure as producer James is working with Luca Bavaldi right now on that math. And you get a look at the two features, Brewer and Haxton, the shorties with 35 and 32 antis, respectively. Far from a shorty is Dan DeVoris with 1.6 million in front of him. Opens up front with the raise. Ace Queen. Seems that six of these 12 players will be walking, going home with zero. We yep. are playing a 
rather large average stack of 138 antis, so a lot of post slot play potential here. Very interesting spot here for Makita. Could be him, he just pushes it in, but we are playing over 160 antis deep to start things off. Holding. Decides to jam it, nevertheless. And that's enough heat to melt the ace queen. <laughs> Although Bats was <coughs> certainly ready to, to do battle against that hand in particular. And I'm being told that the top two finish for Jason Kuhn would indeed lock up POY for him. Third wouldn't ice it, but Chidwick would need to not only win mm -hmm. the 20K, but he would also need to buy in multiple times because each one of those re-entries would actually be worth some points. So it it's kind of awkward in terms of the, the parlay that would be needed in that situation. And, of course, that is provided that Jason doesn't pick up more points in that 20K himself. Right, yeah. There's a lot of um, funny different scenarios that could happen. You know, it's registration open when Jason Kuhn happens to boss, how far he goes. His game plan, though, is to definitely go for one of those top spots. A lot on the line, of course. Richard Young, already a champion here in our short deck events. Opening up the king-queen suited, starting things off with 559 antis. Note nines in the bin with yes. no hesitation. Sort of those sixes, sevens, eights, nines don't really perform particularly well. Pretty tough for Brewer to get involved here with 32 antis. No fold equity, jack so high. Didn't have 12, but two queens. And, uh, 25K, did we? Yeah, How's Danny going to respond? Okay. Obviously, yeah, we know he's going to proceed. Yeah. This is a game where you just pretty much jam these type of holdings. Deny equity. Obviously, he's got Richard well covered. But, I mean, look, King Queen suit is still 46% against two queens in this game. Well, actually, taking a flop here, a bit surprising for me. Bit of a mix up. And the 7-9-10 board is going to leave Young checking two overs and a gutter to Danny. It's very understandable that Richard is checking this type of texture. When he raises preflop, he's representing big pairs and big cards, so this is just not that type of texture. But not necessarily looking to check fold, as he does look for a spot to hit a jack, but against an all-in play, will be priced out. Comfortable jam there from Danny. Let's see, we'll haul that one in. Richard, of course, coming off of the victory in the 25K short deck. The first of three short deck events here to bring this North Cyprus Festival to a close. Looking to maybe put another title to work. Now, you couldn't buy any of Richard's action, but there certainly are some very successful Triton participants who post their action on our official staking partner. That being Poker Stake, the ultimate platform for staking and professional players around the globe. No fees on any purchases if you're looking to support your favorite player's journey and celebrate the reward of big victories. Check out PokerStake.com now and stake your champ. I would have thought Richard might have needed some staking. Unfortunately, I wouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> A couple queens here, 100 antis to start things off. A lot of trapping from under the gun. Oh, yeah. Ooh, and Richard's going to take a stance here, 50 antis. Mind you, not too far behind, we're playing short deck. 
Now, when the aces, the ace kings, and even the kings limp up front, a lot of times they're looking to trap. But with the two queens, there is considerably more vulnerability. Nevertheless, Martin Nielsen digs in as he does have Richard covered and in a bad way. A three to two dog in an over one million chip pot. And his bid for back-to-back -back titles looks to be intact on the ace-ace king board. And now it is guaranteed as ace is full of kings on the turn. Leaves Martin drawing dead. We'll do a little bit of accounting. Yeah, it's a brutal, brutal game. You know, he was a favorite, but just 60-40, you know, in short deck, and you got to kind of just defend your limping range, so can't really fold two queens in that spot. This is one of those games where it really pays to be the preflop aggressor. You know, just hopefully hold. taking it down preflop, but lots of equity regardless if you get called. It's also one of those games where when you're not the aggressor, each successive person that limps behind you creates better and better pot odds for others to do the same. Halfway invested already with the single ante. And then a lot of times we've seen the likes of Elton saying in the face of that stuff, just taking his chances that the first limp wasn't a trap and then jamming from the button with all kinds of hands. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, so definitely a lot of like reading your opponent, their ranges, um, based on their frequencies and whatnot. Regardless, a nice hand here. Ace-Queen suited for 30 antis. May get looked up by Ace-10. Chris Brewer has jammed it in, and you may have heard some celebratory rumblings through our mics in the room. It wasn't associated so much with his jam as it was just elation out of Tao Min Fu, who really is kind of on a victory lap of sorts after his performance. Not so much in the tournament portion of the program as in the cash game. Streets where. I, I thought Dow was going to get involved in the short deck at the next stop. Is he already in? I think Randy, he's already in. Is he registered <laughs> in this 20K? I think he's in the 20K. He couldn't wait. Two, he's like two months too long. How about tomorrow? legend. He's like an hour and a half into his short deck career, and he's playing a 20K. Yes, I know. we got to hang out with this guy. Like, he's happy he won his first short deck live pot. Is that what that was? I think it was. It could have been like a two-ante pot. It would have been weird if... The celebration had been the product of just registering. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. <coughs> really, as a kid in a candy store, his Dao Min Fu. Haxton needs some chips. King Queen most certainly qualifies All for the class of hands the worthy of jamming. He know He's in he agreement. Hmm? Somewhat predictably, I, perhaps. Uh-oh. Yeah, it's one of those games where you jam and you're just saying, please, everyone, just fold. Yeah. Just fold. Seems like this day two has been better for Elton. Jamming is 929,000. Oh, Into the middle. Just as I said that, Ali. Yeah, it was supposed to yeah. leave him at a table for two. But as we can see, that's not going to be the case. And Greenwood's aces do cover in more ways than one, of course. Is 
shorts on that. Yeah, probably. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He look at me like, oh, this guy is sick. I know, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. He like, look at my oh, stack and know right away. Oh, no. Aces? Yeah. Are you trying to do all those things to try to get me? Good, good so, Greenwood's jam delivers the bad news to Ike. Elton, and it would appear Elton's massage therapist as well. I think she's picked up on the idea her man's in trouble. 1.3 in the side, 877 in the main, and it comes King Queen 8. Haxton laying claim to this main as it stands right now. Turn card leaves Elton drawing dead. You asked for another king? Eight. Against oh, Haxton. Fails to improve against Greenwood. Mm -hmm. So Sam scoops the side. Ike well, scoops like, the main. Do we kill, fellow? Wow. Elton. Yeah, 10-7. 10-8. 9-8. 10-8. Oh, Out of there. And yeah, maybe in the... Oh, I was that works. 279? Yeah, 279. We part ways with the accounting post mortem to bring you a developing one at the other feature. I see one heart, Danny Tang. Eight of hearts in particular, which was an open ended straight flush draw. In this five-way affair, where Dvoris had top two. Yeah, and top two, of course, even if it hits a boat, would still lose to Danny Tang. Flushes beat full houses. Danny could improve. Going to be mindful out of position against the full field of the possibility that somebody has one of a multitude of bigger hearts. or Jack specifically, but after a second round of checks, how is he going to feel? No, by the way, that both Richard Young and Badzi Kuski have made straights here on the river. Yeah, straights obviously is a nice hand, but on a four flush, not so good. Understandable, Danny, just checking down eight of hearts, the weaker flushes. Flush. Knuckled all the way through, as Danny was not able to get any value, understandably, out of that eight of hearts. I don't think he was excited setup. to like call like a full pot size bet sure. or something. That would have been super uncomfortable. So we'll stay here. Where Danny picked up that modest 110. Something small to note. Just five from the money now. A quarter of the field remaining. Ace Queen. Elton's elimination. Leaving us with a short stacked Chris Brewer. 35 Annie's, assuming those duties. Uh, six, six of diamonds. Oh. oh, yeah, you should have the six of diamonds. Sorry, yeah? All good. Two limps, make that three, Brewer. Button queen, 10 off. 
you're always worried about making a play when you see the under gun limp and one right behind him. So check we go. 100k in the middle. Ace, eight, seven. Top two for Devoris. Best of what's around is Danny's ace queen. That jack nine could really give a lot of action with that double gutter. Checking. Trying to bait Brew, who's got the short stack. And there is the six. As a nine high straight comes to fruition for Badziakuski. Well, batsy has got the redraw to a bigger straight in case someone else is holding a nine. Might not expect Brewer to try to represent the nine with that short stack as his chips are very valuable at this stage of the tournament. And notice the small bet, just a quarter pot, realizing the first two positions, very non nine X heavy, trying to get some crying calls. Out of hands like this, Ace-8. No flush draws present. Reduces the bluffing range of your opponent. Twenty-five K barrel, Devoris the lone customer, drawing to the boat. And getting there as the eight of diamonds pairs the board and leaves Daniel out of position with an opportunity to dictate the sizing. Instead, he will check. And given the sort of face-up nature of that four-liner on the board, Badzikuski decides to check back, disappointingly enough for Devoris. Excellent check there with the jack nine. Some people just see the strength of their hand feel mandatory to bet, but what can you get called by when it pairs like that, given the run out? Probably only better. Check, we go. I wonder, given that we have Ace-8 in particular on that board, Randy, if we don't just remove the Ace-Ace from Makita's range mm -hmm. and decide that we want to put a little value bet in there, trying to make sure we earn something if the hand. Now that he's seen Makita check back a nine, he probably would make the adjustment and start leading out his boats, right? He probably expected Makita to bet a nine at some frequency, so thought maybe check raise was in play. And given a run out too, I wouldn't, wouldn't really put Makita on a smaller boat as he would be kind of terrified to bet into four people on a four liner with right. two pair or set. Great points. Cool. Any um, extra room in your suitcase to pick up one of those hats? They're lucky. <laughs> Next time you play your mixed games in Vegas, I think uh, that's the one you should rock. We're we talking about the red ones for yeah, uh, the Richard Young. Of course, the red one. Yeah. No, not the other ones. Six, seven, nine. The Triton title hats are a little harder to come by, although Richard earned himself one. But look, he opts to use the red one. That's yeah. the one that won him the hat. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> Dusty part of the deck here. As Richard checks bottom pair and the gutter, back door hearts, top pair does the same. Now Danny with the better gutter and second pair deliberates. He's expecting the early position to play on us as well as Brewer folding best hand queen nine just given it's a dicey situation with just a pair of nines on a board texture that could easily hit the button range, which is so wide. Nicely done. I feel like one of the big adjustments you need to make is understanding how players play their marginal hands post-flop, whether it's like weak top pairs, middle pairs, gut shots. Then you can kind of adjust your bet size accordingly to kind of get these hands in or out.
Black Kings. Four bads. Everyone just trying to trap that Brewer 30 anti stack, which is very jammable. No raising. It's Danny hyper incentivized to come along from the cutoff. Daniel says run it. Two flush draws out there, but of course that. Pesky ace for bad's purposes. So he does have the better of the two spades. Got 90 yeah. in the middle. Mikita's just wondering if it's better he attacks the sh jack x with a spade or maybe check. Looks like he wants to maintain control. Very small bet, kind of like I've got high equity regardless of what you got. Let's just force some chips in there. So Danny, flush draw, gutter, no improvement. Broadway draw for bats, courtesy of the Queen of Diamonds, the new development. And getting a little sc scary here. Could have been um, overtaken on the turn by like Queen Jack type holding his hands. Not strong enough to raise, so check we go. Danny and does pick up the double gutter, by the way. Yeah, and Stand I think corrected. the double gutter kind of makes him incentivized to activate and attack some weaker holdings, but does check. Does not get there. There's a seven pairs on the river. Now that's not a card that Makita is really going to be able to represent in terms of having trips. So if the bet comes in here, presumably he is targeting an ace and turning the kings into a bluff. But does he feel the need to do so? Depends on the sizing he goes. He should still have a lot of showdown value. It looks like he's coming really small, milky. And of course, this is not designed to bluff out ace x, more so to set the price and occasionally extract value from queen and jack x. So, quick fold. Indeed. Did see Baz resist the temptation to bluff on the button with a queen jack on a four liner board where Devoris was trying to trap him with an ace high straight earlier today. Caught my attention. I think, I mean, I didn't see the hand, but I'd imagine that these guys are just not mandatory betting, you know, when, when the opportunity is shown to them. They exert some restraint from time to time, of course. You know, if you want to outplay your opponents in these tough fields, you, you need to mix it up. Looks like Brewer's found his spot here of Jack-10. And it goes for 300 from Brewer after the bad slimp with Queen-9 suited. Plus 70k there, really important pot for him. Gives him some breathing room. Remember, it's one ante per hand that needs to be deposited. Gives him a free orbit. Free orbits are exactly what the doctor is ordering right now for Brewer. Orbits gum? No. Okay. Don't think doctors prescribe orbits gum, Randy. Certainly not. Accredited physicians. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Ace Jack has picked up a few more chips. More threatening jam here. 37 antes. And Nielsen picks up Ace Queen. 
Richard Young, Jackson, the big blind. Nielsen's got 50 antes, and I imagine this is definitely strong enough against Chris Burr's shallow jamming range. TBD. Now this all in over the top of Chris is putting significant pressure on the jacks of Young. Yes. As he will bin his holding. Nothing wrong with folding two jacks. They're tough to win three away. You're hoping they each have these kind of big cards sharing, but if there's an over pair, you're in big trouble. So Brewer dominated and unimproved on a king nine eight board where his short deck main event life is very much at risk. Just 22% with two to come. Turn card is a seven and he does pick up a gutter now. The 10 or the jack would suit him just fine. Can he stay alive? No, it's an ace on the end, and he will be out kicked by Nielsen. GG's issued. And Martin, the short deck specialist, breathing a sigh of relief there. If Brewer had understood Cantonese, who would have realized that his two jacks were in the muck? One outer. Are you referring to Gogo? -Go? Yeah, I am. Yeah, but I don't think he used Gogo. -Go. I think he used Jack Jack or something. Well, you don't need that to speak. <laughs> I think Gogo -Go is a is a Mandarin thing rather. You don't mind not using Cantonese. Look, <laughs> let's not base the Chinese knowledge on me, okay? It's obviously a terrible idea. Yeah. Back to uh, English. Yeah. On the wall. Randy. Australian? No, I can't do <laughs> that either. You're like... Confused. Uh, I, th I would say that's, from a nationality standpoint, a fair way to kind of describe where you're at. Yeah. But Murky. I somehow survive. That's Unclear. the amazing part. You're like the Sean Winter of <laughs> citizenship. <laughs> you know, I get questioned at the passport control, and I'm just like <laughs> throwing out these random lines. I don't know, man. Like, um, like, where are you from? You're like, well, it's a long story. So my parents, <laughs> are like, dude, just can I see your passport? You're like, yeah. Extra screening immediately. Ace queen suited. Very deep stacks. Expecting slow play, but Nielsen's not really shy of driving action. Not at all. Look at this. Aces. His jam running into Batsiakuski's button. And the two needles are about to pop Nielsen's happy balloon. No sooner has Martin picked up this hand than it is going to be in an awful way against Makita's kid. Then you have like 1.7? Yep. Yeah, Ace is really the only hand you fear. Eyebrows raised here mm -hmm. for Nielsen. He knows it. Hands in air. Can't surrender yet. Still 18%. 1.9 million chip pot. This be good for the chip lead if the ace queen can deliver a bad beat. So far, it's just a pair of queens. And you see Martin can hardly look, Randy. Turn card. Not providing the needed assistance as both players do pick up a straight draw for a chop. Is there help on the river? There is not. And that ten of clubs, you can feel really delivering a dose of devastation to Martin. Yeah, I mean, if 
we feel the pain in the booth, imagine how what he's going through. That's just brutal. You, you're looking in great shape, sitting on over 90 antis. The one hand you're not looking to go up against, he's got it. You don't. Very much so. Down to 10. That's your Kuski. That pickup leaves him knocking on the door of 3 million in chips. Danny Tang, a distant second. Just three from the money. That was 10 for a second. Brewer's elimination coupled with Nielsen's, leaving us five and four handed. 100. And with this commanding chip lead, Makita is just going to be relentless now as these more middling stacks are trying to just hang in there. Obviously. The ace jack suited. Reasonable kit with which to be relentless. And there is a look at the developments here. Brought to you by bookmaker.eu. Just look at that staggeringly deep stack of the Belarusian. It is Got 1.2 million notched already. His loan cash in the series coming, of course, courtesy of that second place finish in the 75K 8 Max. Shame on me, by the way. He had a fifth place finish in the 25K short deck as well that I'm completely overlooking. Mm -hmm. But it was a fairly dry series up until that 75K 8 Max. 0 for 6. Yeah, eyes on the prize. Really just up at the summit by himself right now. Just about 2x of Danny Tang, who's currently sitting in second. 300 antis for him. And really just trying to get involved in pots now as you see him completing pre-flop of 10-9 offsuit in the hijack. Expecting people to kind of play honest against him. Just given that he's got them covered, they can't just recklessly jam. Yeah, no doubt about it. Respect has to be shown to the Reaper. <clears throat> Four-handed short deck, an expensive proposition. But deep stacks surround Makita. Yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting to see how they approach this, given how deep they are, right? 147 anti average. All of these guys with that kind of stack. And you can see Daniel is just still willing to get involved, trying to represent that 8x on the button. Just not going to let the chip leader just run over them pre and post. 10-9 offsuit, inside straight draw, no heart to back up, but gut shots are always worthy of some action usually. Kind of dreamy here, right? King eight, strong kicker. Danny. Tough to believe his eyes here. Now obviously, there's going to be a reasonable number of bluffs in Devoris's range, but it's the flat from Batsyakuski that he's got his eye on, perhaps. Yeah, he better. understands there's a lot of little gut shots. He needs to just charge. On 30, we go. Feels like it should get this one done. There we go. Mission accomplished. As bads as Peel. Not really interested in proceeding. Danny, a 
a short deck veteran, of course. Huh? Didn't cash in the 25K. Did win his second, or his first title, rather. His second title was won here in the 50K turbo, but his first ever title back in Vietnam came in the 25K short deck. So he knows what it takes. Ollie, I look at the remaining nine. Short deck pro, short deck pro, short deck pro, short deck pro, and so on. All the way, every single one of them definitely got the chops to take this one down. No surprises then that they are yeah. mm -hmm. among those in the hunt for a cash here, three away from the money. <coughs> Is he the adjustment in play here from Makita, actually open raising these ace nine suiteds mm -hmm. rather than, you know, of course, open jamming and, and limping? Certainly. And I forget, does Makita have short deck titles, do you remember? Taking a gander across the spectrum of Vatsiakuski's... At least two is no limit mains. Four titles, as you mentioned, Randy. No limit main events, constituting a couple of Vatsiakuski's. Let's not forget in Madrid, the 7 Max 50K Euro event, a title as well. The lone short deck win came in a 750k buy-in back in 2019 in Montenegro. That's pretty, pretty big buy-in actually. HKD, it's around 100. Pretty big hand for Danny Tang as he limps under the gun with this king queen suited. Devoris deliberating behind him with the jack ten off. See what Makita's approach here. Understand there's some checks. We'll go with limp. Two king queens and a jack ten going to war. Mm hmm. Ten in the window, followed by a king as Dvoris's lead was very short lived. Top pair for both Tang and Bats. Pairs just don't play as well in short deck. You see them often get folded to even flop bets, especially with two to come. But King Queen now in position, closing the action. The straight draws do linger. Bad's also kind of questioning what it is that Danny would be willing to limp with. Obviously, Makita can apply so much pressure as the chip leader, and he is going to do exactly that in the face of this 45K. Yes, he's trying to define his hand, extract value from the straight draws, protect against it. And given they're playing a hun more than 170 antis to start things off, Danny can't actually just blast away all in with like a queen jack, which has high equity to blow off some holdings like king queen. So he's actually kind of protected that usually there's not a three bet on the flop given how deep they are. So kind of a safe raise in position here of king queen. Raise does get called as the seven of diamonds rolling off. A really nice card here for Makita. It's just so unexpected for Danny to be bet calling eight nine on the flop. Of course, we're not think even thinking about how two pairs could be involved for under the gun. And occasionally he hears from a bigger hand and king queen on the flop, so should feel pretty good about king queen, just whether he wants to control the pot a little bit. Does lose to ace king. Check we go. So the river now puts a gut shot on board. Makita treads lightly on that turn card. With 340 in the middle, Danny does as well. Second straight check out of him. 
Jack King. I don't know how I win the king. Well, you don't win, Danny. You win but you don't lose either. Relieving sensation. Yeah, I did say I don't know how I win this one. Probably true. Doesn't really expect King Jack to raise the flop. Let alone Queen Jack. Mm -hmm. One of the other sorts of hands that failed to improve on that particular run out. Final table this is mine, right? happens at seven it's not mine. players. Supposed to be good for like high urine acid. I don't know. For what? That's what Google said. Urine acid, acid to get rid of it. It doesn't make sense, does it? Because there's a load of acid in it, and that, right? King Queen rich environment. Divorce. Offsuit edition. Limps it. Pad's going to take a dusty one to battle. That's when you know you've got a lot of chips. Well, it looks like the forehead massage left any light on consciousness for a moment there. That's when you limp more often, knowing you're going to get so many more jacks from the dealer button. It's like, oh, it's calm and soothing. No aggressive feelings. Massage tells. Mm-hmm. Gutter on the flop for both Devoris and Danny. The 10 would be problems for Tang as Daniel Knuckles. And the fact that Makita is betting Queen 6 right now on this board texture just goes to show his game plan going forward with these remaining 9 in this big chip lead is get involved as many pots as possible, especially just limp pots, and just stab away. Profitable approach, obviously, given neither of these guys are really going to want to get into a bloated situation with them unless they've got pretty strong kit. Yeah, I would say so. And it's not like he's going to relentlessly three barrel off any texture. You know, it's a bit controlled, of course. Pairs to six, takes the lead. Doesn't really know it, though. As played, Makita expects to be up against Jack X at a lot high frequency, or these straight draws that you can see King Queens, Queen Tens. Does block those hands a bit with the Queen in his holding. Contemplating a bet. 100. Wow, 100k bet. It's a big one. Full pot. And now. Divorce, who knows that Bats is going to be incentivized to play a massive variety of holdings, some of which will include the nine, must concede. Not that he had all that much hand and was actually behind. I think he could have had. All right. All right. Cool. Cool. So our other five combatants at this featured table. Also very deep stacks. However, we do have Isaac Haxton sitting on 80 antis. 80 antis definitely can go to work. No added work from the button of Haxton as he knuckles and closes things. More king queens in the mix, by the way, this time for Watson and this time, a better development on the flop as he makes top pair. But take a look at Greenwood, who's got himself a gutter and a flush draw. And the action checked to him, Randy. Yeah, the 
suited here is what gets me excited. You know, if you want to apply pressure, you most certainly can do so. Lots of outs. Always nice for him to see the first position check as they like to represent that King X. I believe Watson checked. Maybe I miss saw. Yeah, he did check. Bet we go. Haxton, just the nines. Not sure how much value he's going to be placing upon them. Not the greatest future prospects for this hand. Of course, sometimes you hit an ace, but then your opponent has ace-king, or you they have 7-8, you lose more chips. Let's see if he wants to continue. Does still have to worry about Watson up front, who checked. Does lay it down. As played, king-queen often the best hand. Not going to put two pair textures in the hijack over limp. So Watson, the predictable customer, as Haxton declines. Another 80 into the middle. Ike would have made trip nines as Watson remains the best of it. Just 4% edge. I know, right? Just 10-8 has still got so many outs. Yeah. Crazy, right? Greenwood might be thinking it's hard for him to represent this 9x right now, given he bet the flop. A lot of times, middle pairs, bottom pairs don't really want to bet. Check. Check back from Sam. As he won't come three barrel. And Watson. Improves to kings and queens, though I'm not so certain that he feels after the check back on the turn from Greenwood that that was needed. And in fact, the queen does fill in 10 jack. So another check here from Mike. Yeah, it, it seems that Watson thinks there's more value trying to extract from Miss flush draws or like some gutties like ace-8, ace-7 rather than bet for value. Sam must be thinking he's often up against King X. 160. A full pot bet. Just trying to represent Jack-10. And Watson has called him no, extremely fast. Hmm? No. Mike's mind was made up. Pretty deflating there for Sam, who definitely took... A healthy swing. Yeah, not even a glimmer of hope where maybe that could get through. Nicely played Watson. Had a game plan going to River. Knew what he was doing against any size bet. Up we go. 12K ante, 24K button as Greenwood remains in second. Actually slips down to third behind yeah. Danny Tang. Apologies. Watson right behind him in fourth. Can't get this guy to pull two pair. Three pair. Three pair. We've always got at least two pair. Corrective admonishment. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping more he had uh, queens and nines. Something like that. Aces. Five seconds. Haxton looking over. Obviously admiring Watson's manicure. <laughs> Possibly also just as a secondary thing, uh, seeing how many chips he has. Yeah, okay. Just a jambo. What? Wow, it's a huge jam. Far from huge is the 10 6 offsuit, is a, a small woohoo let out from behind the mask there <laughs> by Haxton. Sounded like the Pillsbury Doughboy for a second. Oh, I remember that. 
You ever actually eaten any of those Pillsbury biscuits? I don't think I have. I did they ever make cookies? Did he make cookies too? I feel like they had the little cookies in a tube. Yeah. Maybe. Those were delightful. Now you just have Vegemite. It's disgusting. Thank you, Randy. Yeah, it is. I know. Really not fit for human consumption. For those that are scratching their temples, Vegemite, something obsessed over by Aussies worldwide. And I'm not sure sold outside of the island. I don't think so. No, maybe you can check the dumpsters in America. <laughs> you might find <laughs> it. <laughs> It's kind of like Nutella, if Nutella tasted horrific. Yes. Okay, I was going to say, where are you going with this? Not even close to Nutella. Meanwhile, Greenwood, a six of hearts, has Kiat's heart smothered. Limp Brigade underway. Watson wants a part of it. Jason, 7-8. Says, let's go. Greenwood, first to act with bottom pair here. Surprisingly, not much connection for all four combatants here. Just a little pair, a little gutty. In theory, though, Kuhn could represent the strongest hand, given he's on the dealer button. And we shall activate. Sixty K. Knifing through the field. Watson. I think the ace and nine are quite good. Of course, the nine is a tricky spot, just given he's out of position. But uh, Watson going to be sticky here. Occasionally got the best hand against straight draws. Given the way the hand's played out, Jason might feel that Queen X is a reasonable part of Watson's range. The fact, though, that he's still reaching for chips feels that he can just blow these hands off as he would need to put a sizable bet, and the size he's opted to go for, go for is ex targeting even the top pair at this point, full pot. Yeah, 226K is Jason recognizing the opportunity to apply pressure to Watson, who, of course, had him covered. We haven't lost a player over there. This is just balancing thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. A balancing thing, Ollie? Can yeah, you touch five, up on that? Five and four with nine left. So they're going to send a player over to the other table. And this is to make it a bit more fair, I imagine? Yeah. Okay. Having to play four-handed versus five-handed, of course, the, blind, the button comes around that much quicker. So. Kiat? Who and it's by random on who they pick, right? Sent over. No, Luca looks over at the table and <laughs> says, you know, <laughs> you're the guy. It's, it's a Kiat day. <laughs> <laughs> the next one will be a Westerner from America. Right. And in Canada. No, indeed it is very much at random that those sorts of decisions are come to. Thank God you're not like a tournament director. Just the things that oh, would come be to great. You have like a come wheel on. of everyone's face. You just spin it. Yeah, there you go. You just lose 10 big blinds for <laughs> no reason. <laughs> no, well, you remember yesterday. I don't know if you were in the booth for it. The decimator? I was not. Oh, it's so good. It's Ike's idea, I think. Where, like, once a level, you just high card for somebody <laughs> to get showered from the event. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, you just lose half your stack. All kinds of little, like, bad things <laughs> that can happen to you. It was so good. <laughs> Laughed hard when they were talking about it. <laughs> I don't know if I have all of the deets, but the general gist of it. Because <laughs> we got mystery bounty, right? That creates yeah. a little bit of fun. Now, like, ponying up for the decimator, <laughs> you know? 
You're the type of guy in the mystery bounty where it says you pay another entry when you open that envelope. Yes. Yes. That would be of, amazing. Of course you're excited about this dumb idea. Chaos, Randy. Chaos is your middle name? Mm-hmm. Seven-time titles. That's Jason's middle name. Two picked up already here at this festival on the hunt for his third, a second as well, as he picks up Broadway on the turn. Limped pre, checked post. Greenwood does have a flush draw. Getting trappy, trying to get Greenwood to just take a stance here. Four liners is pretty tempting to stab. Although it would not work against Jason's holding. Does have a spade for backup if he does exercise that option. Greenwood taking the bait, betting 36. Jason well aware of how difficult it is to have spades, but also aware that Greenwood has wide range as the button check back. Yeah, it's nice that Jason's decided that there's more value in me risking getting another four spade, but extract value from bluffs like this and certainly good here, Broadway. A high frequency, for sure. Fighting clean, though, against the bigger stack of Greenwood, which you start to wonder, with the spade blocker in hand, if Sam might have some heroic pressure in store. I feel like if Sam's betting here, it's actually just targeting these, like, weak two pairs, you know, ace X's, basically a non-king X holding. Not necessarily trying to represent the, the flush. I could be wrong. 72? Yeah, and this half pop bet design, and once again, just snap call. Greenwood, they don't give him a sweat. No, like, oh, maybe I made a good bet. Frustrated, nothing working today as Jason took the passive approach, allowed his man to do the betting for him. Flats and hauls one in with the Broadway. Blocking any of the pairs, and he's still just waiting for you. Jason, it's like a wet blanket out there, isn't he? Just can't get him off you. Okay. Not good when I pick the the king size on the river, and you have the king. Not great. I noticed uh, a lot of other stuff. Yeah. Watson has upped his needle game this series. At least flush size. At least he gets you sweating a little with the king. I think he's been in the lab? <laughs> he's been in the lab, he's like. <laughs> Sean Winter just rubbed off on me. Even when he's gone, he's just attacking. Oh, don't let Sean get in the short deck streets. Of course, these guys are just highly competitive, but um, I'm playing, playing with each other for many years. Eight twenty-three, including the ante. Sorry, how much? Eight two three, including the ante, I believe. Greenwood doing a calculation of how many antes this is, divide by twelve k. Trying to figure out if he can just open rip queen ten. Call. Flats. Ike. Jack eight offsuit. Let's go. No more bluffing this time. No Honest, Roku. Cool. So if he bets a flop, it is kind of like bluffing, right, given he doesn't have a made hand. But he said no more bluffing. I don't know that anyone's going to hold He's him to it. He's bluffing. Greenwood, you naughty. 
naughty man. <laughs> You're not surprised, Randy. I didn't know you were allowed to bluff in poker. Stop it. You're encouraged to bluff. Just a 24K attempt, though. Semi-bluff, let's call it. Up against bottom pair. See how interested Ike is. Hard to play bottom pair in this spot. It would be nice if he had at least a gut shot to go along with it. Hand clearly vulnerable. Let's see, though. A jack. Looks like he does continue, but a jack would be just a disaster card for him as he would make two pair up against straight. Seven, though. Sl should slow things down. 6x should not be part of Greenwood's cutoff limping range. But Jack-10 is. He does have a 10, but conversely, Mike has a Jack. There is a chance Haxton makes a stance here of Jack-8, just given the nature of just being third pair on a four-liner, he can represent the 6x. Jack certainly reasonable, too, to realize his equity. But it wouldn't surprise me if he takes a stance here, just applying max pressure against random holdings as well as some ace-x. Haxton does check it back, and then the jack rolls off on the end. So it's Jackson eights for Ike, but... A real problem in so far as Greenwood, the man who's made the nuts. Greenwood might size rather large, um, even just pot or even over. Like He's got the nut straight on his texture. There's two really strong straights in the form of 10x and 6x out there that he completely smashes. actually going for check so the idea here is that if my opponent has a buff I extract from that most certainly 10x would never check back so I'll get value from the 10x and potentially get even more and he probably also thinks 6x is a small part of Haxton's range given that he checked back the turn You heard Sam earlier say nothing's working. When he tries to bluff, he gets picked off, and when he tries to induce, he can't manage to do so. A super duper. Super duper mega. Even though he's hauling that one in, Randy, I feel like there's going to be a little bit of disappointment for Sam. Yeah, he's like, hmm. Do I further <laughs> engage in this verbal war? Looks like he's going to stay quiet on this one. Well, we're never going to stay quiet about our official chair partner here at the Triton Poker Series, Secret Lab. Our players are the best at their game, and that means, of course, spending long hours on their bumps to perfect their play. Secret Lab's research back chairs are extensively tested and engineered for optimal sitting health so that our pros can play optimally. Check them out at Secret Lab. Was it dot .com? Um, I want to say it was dot .co. Missed it. Hmm. I've read it how many times over the course of the last two weeks? And yet it it's escapes me. Dot .co oh, yeah. slash 20. 22. There it is. Here we go. Randy always has my back. Mm -hmm. Except on the occasions in which doing so would be a real threat to his on. career prospects. Not entirely infrequent. <laughs> also, if it may affect chances of my survival. <laughs> <I'll be laughs> first one going another way. I'm not a threat to our lives generally in okay. here. Mm -hmm. You might put but our livelihoods, Randy. <laughs> livelihood, yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Ollie. Greenwood taking that oh, one down. Added up to 14. So I was not doing that. Great. Good ideas. Yeah. Oh, my, my aces have already lost today, you know. You just played them safe. Back over at the other feature now. Greenwood's 
frustrations do continue despite picking back-to-back -back pots up. Not a frustrating outing for Danny Tang, of course. Just shy of two million, second in chips overall. Behind Badzi Akuski. 2.1, actually, as the app refreshes. This is going to be a fun 20k tournament. <laughs> Guys, 50k main. Oh, Concentrate. Oh, oh, oh. Wonder what Mikita meant by that. Oh, it okay. appears that he's finally <laughs> he spied. gotten wind of DMP out in the 20k streets there. Yeah, let's just dust All off this, this stack so we can go play over there, guys. Oh, very deep stack right now. 100 antis at least per player. 10-9 trade in the muck. Respecting the big stack. Richard respecting the situation as Cutoff can limp and slip in there with a great price. Scott Batsiakuski's nine dominated, while Danny has the king dominated. 7-7 seven, seven queen board, however. No surprise they're checking over to Mikita, the chip leader. He's been stabbing away relentlessly, Certainly even with very little connection. And he manages to get Makita to fire at it with air. But of course, the issue when the button is betting here is that 7x is contained in the range, especially as a check back. Agreed. Flat call from Danny. The way things are playing out right now on this board texture, Makita is going to be thinking very Queen X heavy for Danny. So if he wants to bet, he would just have to bet really big, really trying to represent 7X. Unlikely given the holding he's got, but potentially. One ten. Yeah, he's he's attacking here. Like Bezikuski and you know, Jason Kuhn really just representing these dealer buttons right now. Applying max pressure. Very don't much so. Don't think Danny's one to get bullied around right now at this point in the hand. Hangs tough. Pop grows to 376,000. Now, Bats does have a nine in his hand. The nine doesn't really matter in this spot, given the line. It's not like he's. But he's a block. Air, he Randy, doesn't need to block 10 you know? 9. Because ten nine is not check calling flop in turn, in ace nine probably too. It's rather I'm representing seven x, or I'm not, and check we go. So Danny's stubbornness is rewarded there, as that pop will narrow the gap considerably <laughs> between the two biggest stacks in the room. Just about a 900k lead over Danny. 
on the back end of that one. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. What bad timing is it for Kiatli? 400k jam into two kings. Equities are low. 400,000 desperately trying to just get through, which we know they won't, as all kings are present and accounted for. Two of them in front of Badziakuski in the cutoff. Bad's obviously mindful of the fact that Danny is involved in this one as the second biggest stack in the field. Trying to think about exactly how he wanted to proceed in terms of kicking Danny out or maybe looking to get him involved. Came with the flat, but Danny declines the invitation as he realizes what bad shape he would have been in. Wow. And that bad shape turns very good for Kiat Lee as kings are dead. So Bads is realistically only drawing to a chop. <laughs> now, <laughs> hang on. He draws live as another ace would leave him with aces full of kings. I thought maybe we had another one on our hands instead, the nine of diamonds. <laughs> a safe one. <laughs> that was a little spooky for a second. I, I was worried there, actually. Give Every time, I mean, literally, what other <laughs> game you're like, oh, you're drawing dead to a chop. Oh, wait a minute. Now you have 11% equity. I know. Thought we are going to get a Stevie Chidwick moment. Goes down like that in short deck, doesn't it? Very lucky spot, clearly, for Kiat. Gives him a lot of breathing room. Over 80 antis, I believe, at this point. Really changes yeah. things, though, for Makita as he slides down. Lee, conversely, sliding up into seventh, leaving Richard Yong on the shortest stack in the room. Whose turn is it? Call. 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 Young limps with Queen Jack off of that short stack. Sub 60 Annie's. Is that kind of the threshold in short deck, by the way, Randy, where we kind of Assign not just short stack in terms of the nine runners remaining, but an actual short stack that's going to be in that all inner fold range with, as we've seen, the occasional limp. So with 59 antes, he def definitely has room to kind of still get involved in form of limps. Um, I would say 40 antes definitely would be kind of like jamming, even hands like Queen Jack probably, but would be pretty excessive there with Queen Jack in that spot and unnecessary. And this Good news for him, he would have ran into two kings. Cowboys popping up again as divorce is raised to 135, makes quick work of Yang's limp. TBD, what it's going to do to Makita's ace nine suited. <laughs> I like shot that. I like shot that. Easy <laughs> 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 You know, you said Stevie was fucking around. 
that was fucking around. That was pure fucking around. <laughs> no takers. As Dvoris oh, calls that one in. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh? Mood continues to be relatively lighthearted here, three away yeah, from yeah, the money in this 50k short oh. deck main. Oh, <laughs> it's a game that kind of, I feel like players feel less of a sense of pressure in terms of, well, sometimes it just plays itself in these phases, you know. I've got the kind of hand that wants to get in the middle, you do too, and it just happens at such a higher frequency than it does in No Limit. Even prior to this phase. I agree, Oli. It's exactly what you just said. Is the hands play themselves. That's why it's a, a beloved game. When it gets very interesting, though, is when the hands don't play themselves and we end up deeper into streets with card removal considerations, blocker effects, which are so much more profound. Eights, king, queen, nine, seven, all make an appointment with this six, six, queen flop. Danny out in front comfortably. Yeah, everyone checking these kind of paired board little cards over to the dealer button. Let him make a stance if he wants to, but also pot control against the potential he has there. And they have been stabbing. On this occasion, it is Kyat Lee with the stab. Did we not see this pot already? Like, yeah. Danny had exactly King <laughs> Queen. <laughs> Deja vu, isn't it? Last time it was Bads getting after him. This time it is Kyat Lee who actually picks up a flush draw, which draws live against this Queen's full for Tang. Tang's actually thinking about taking the lead here, actually hoping his opponent did have 6x on the button, doesn't want to let it check through, thinks he might get more value. And like you mentioned, you got to charge those flush draws as well as they can still win the pot. And this is kind of a little bit of a math problem here is, okay, I hit my flush, my opponent's holding queen, how much can I get paid off? Deems it's enough since it is a small 40k bet into 166 or 156. On the turn, the bet call brings us a Jack River, which does not help Kiat playing the board. Big question here is do I put a small bet targeting 6x or do I check to try to induce from some stabs that turn to flush draw? That is the question. We got our answer with that check. Let's see if Kiat bites. Obviously, he's got to be asking himself, what is it that Danny would check all two streets with that isn't going to call this river? If we remove the 6x from his range as a limper from the hijack. Well, let me interrupt you for a second. Actually, it was check call lead um, from Danny Tang on the turn. So that de definitely changes things quite a bit. But, you know, some of the skill sometimes is giving up in poker. It's like feeling my bet's not going to accomplish much. does get called. 75k. Gone. Exercise in futility there and absolutely changing the landscape is the fact that Danny did lead on the turn. And without any straighter flush draws on that flop, obviously the check call then lead. Even the spade draws kind of removed from the equation, which of course so blocker heavy is Kiat. Yeah. And the second he got snap called there on the river, he might be kind of regretting that bet there. Yeah. Hard to p pitch a perfect game, as you would say. Yeah, very much so.
Here in the booth, we always have the luxury of staring at those whole cards. It helps, trust me. I've tried my hand at short deck, and when the whole cards were down, I got brutalized, Ollie. Yeah, that happens. Devoris. Oh, man. Max pressure application from the hijack with a 10-9 offsuit. Fifth biggest stack in the room. Kiat wakes up with the two kings ready for him. <laughs> you have ace nine again? No. Oh, you have nine ten off. Yeah. What the? <laughs> Nothing. Danny. Oh, I'll touch it. Oh, I blocked already straight draw. But I'll block the two pair draw. How is he here? He blocked it just straight. But I don't. I unblocked the two pair. Jack-10-9 flop, bottom two for Daniel. A devastating development for Kiat Lee's Kings. In this 1.4 million chip pot, but Kiat has the gutter. Now, the Jack on the turn counterfeiting bottom two. And the eight on the end completing the double. Emotional yeah. roller coaster that one was. Stressful. Good for Kiat, right? Took down the two kings, one of two kings. Easy day in short deck. <laughs> I like how you overlooked the 75k that got incinerated in the Queen Queen 6 6 flop. Hey, Focus on the good. In the past. Randy Lou, ladies and gentlemen, here for us. You're moving under the gun? So I'm moving. And then I need two back. Once again, that rebalancing of tables. Can you just move Makita? What kind of, who was on the hand? Huh? Ping pong game. I was. Danny <laughs> trying to say, can you just move Makita? He's like, I'm getting a massage. I got a big stack. Come on. Do we need two racks? What is, oh, the masseuse has got some stuff to move. I, I race. He, he He's too bad. I call the flop. I flop too bad. Yeah. I call the I call the flop in. and then don't jam. I cycle. You called with a gutter. <laughs> <laughs> Are they like retelling a false hand history to someone asking what happened? That's what it sounded like to me. It did. Trolling. No shortage of that. Makita's like straight to the app now. Amongst our crew. Strange reverse waddle there from Danny on the way over. <laughs> the things you notice. Okay. Cool. Very little that I don't. It's the negative space that I'm always paying attention to mostly. <laughs> <laughs> Randy. Is it bad that I'm looking at the negative space now too? <laughs> it's like <laughs> rather blurry. <laughs> King Queen for Kiat. He'll square off with Makita as both players pick up a piece on a Queen High coordinated board. Connected is always worrisome. You will see passive lines when there's flop straights in appearance. Improved, but scarier. Yeah, top two after a round of knuckles. Four-liner on board. How about a straight on board for both players after Kiat did not fire the turn? I guess they both improved. 
And the question is, is someone going to try and move his, their opponent off of a chop, trying to represent Asax, and look like Kiat's the one that can do so. In theory, he does have the range advantage as Asex got a lot of raises on the dealer button, closing the action. Fifty-one K. As Kiat doesn't want to play Sherzies with Makita. Makita trying to work through what Ace X combos though would not have bet that flop for Kiat. Obviously, it's going to be the dustier sort. Still a reasonable ace-x in my opinion, you know, like ace-jack comes to mind. Even ace-queen on the flop straight texture. Hard to say, really. I wouldn't surprise him if he's even thinking about putting a raise to blow his opponent off of a chop. Looks like he's thinking about even just laying it down. Yeah, he does lay it down, giving Kiat credit for the ace. So a nice river bet on that occasion from Lee will earn him the whole enchilada. Feels like mom wouldn't be too happy if Kiat on the hand, no, no sharing of the sorts. Yeah, Mikita also not gonna be too happy with them in about mm -hmm. an hour when it shows up on stream. No, it wasn't the biggest pot they're gonna play today. The feud always starts it small though, you know? It, it builds up. Don't, get, don't do that too often. Right. You ever had any feuds, Randy? I'm on starting with you, I'll <laughs> tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not looking for a feud. Come on. No, you're too you're too happy. It's, it's hard to, to, to be angry well. at you. You should see me in my mix game. <laughs> yeah, you have that, like, alter that ego full comes stuff up and you're like, hmm, you want some <laughs> some medicine for the headache? I swear, it's Advil. Just take it. What about this toothbrush? It's clean. You're like, why is there a blue pill and a red pill, Ollie? <laughs> You're like, don't worry about it. Tylenol is just doing some, like, weird themed stuff now. <laughs> Ace nine here as the Kiatli activation theme continues. Queen Jack suited. Definitely a lovely hand to take in position. Extra nice in a sense that with these kind of stacks, the undergun player doesn't really open ace, queen, ace, jack that often. They will just limp. So if you're up against ace, king, of course, two live cards at a high frequency. Suited extra benefit. Suited ace is down, closing the action as he's down to 600k in chips. Doesn't really want to bleed. So it's going to be round two between Kiat and Badziakuski, whose queen jack turns into top pair and a gutter on the queen 10 eight board, just the gutter for Kiat. Very scary texture here for Kiat to bet into. He needs to think about how the ranges have changed with him opening and Makita flat calling. Does he feel it's queen x heavy? He does, and rightfully so. You know, with these steep stacks, you're gonna see king queens, queen jack come along, jack tens, everything with a good holding or reasonable equity. really working this one over with 206 in the middle. Yeah, he's not sure if he's getting kind of pot controlled against a holding bigger than Queen Jack right now. Under the gun limps. 
Can be scary from time to time, but a three-quarter-ish pot bet from Badziakuski. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you could see Kiat was well aware of what yeah. Makita was concerned about as he pump fakes the check jam on that board texture. Would have been a surprise to Bads to see that as the players are already on their way to a scheduled break here in the 50K short deck main, where Bads is well off his high water mark, but is in the chip lead still, 2.8 million in front of him with nine runners remaining. Kiat Lee, nice spin there in that frame as he's got himself up to fifth. Those counts there are brought to you by Poker State. Not to be overlooked, of course, neck and neck, Young and Devoris. Richard Young coming off of a title already in the 25K short deck just yesterday. Back at the desk here, Ali and Randy. And uh, the mood continues to be light, bit jovial, bit festive. Obviously going to be lighter for some than others, including the likes of Jason Kuhn, who is well aware of the fact that he has got himself up at the top of the Player of the Year award race. But turning our attention to other storylines, Jason already has two main event titles in short deck under his belt. Two titles here at this festival could be just a high water mark that I don't know that anyone else would be ever able to approach at the Triton Super High Roller Series if he were to take this one down. Yeah, obviously, if he can take down the short deck main, it would be an incredibly incredible achievement in itself, right? Um, as is, is still great. Imagine if he even takes down the Ivan Leal Player of the Year leaderboard right. at the same exact time um, just to end things off in this final day of coverage. It's phenomenal. He's a great player. We all know it, Ali. Listen, he's fourth in chips right now. I think the most resounding way in which to make a statement would be to win both a main, a, a sorry, a no limit title, a PLO title, and a short deck title at one festival. Three titles, three different disciplines. But we can only dream. The fantasy continues, and the action will continue here on this last day of our 2023 Super High Roller Series. Coverage from North Cyprus. Don't go anywhere. Just about 10 minutes. We'll be back with more. Stay close. GG Poker. It's the best poker. The song. biggest poker. Song. This is a crazy. No way. <laughs> Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation from pre-flop to river, we've got it all. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players.
All right, gets away from it. That's so fold. Kuhn. Obviously, drawing live, as just about any hand is in short deck. It's been so long ago that I forgot what I folded. Haxton. Always. Rolling the dice, picking up the gut shot. Backdoor hearts for the time being, a 10. The required kit to spare this 220. Drop it up. Turn. Fails to yield it, but got her on board. Six would be a chop. Instead, it's the eight. <laughs> so, Haxton. Showered, but registration still open. Same day, the following. Get, yeah, five more. New stack? Yes. Fresh. Fresh beat. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. boss appears to have cobbled together a little okay. north of the 300. <laughs> he rebought for, uh -huh. and his ace king is prepared for a spin. And Jason contemplating giving him one with two jacks. Can't afford to do it. Yeah, potentially going to spin the wheel here. Does have two players behind. Some concern. Oh. <coughs> you want this one? I think succeeded. One of the kings busy for boss in Greenwood's hand. It looked like all the aces were live. <laughs> and a king in the window. Vaulting. Boss in front. Jason prepay prepped, but hold the phone. Turn card. Gives him a gutter and a flush draw. Jack would, of course, work as well. And 
there is the 10. As Paul showered. That was kind of the last hand of the level. Maybe maybe they'd let you re-enter. Probably not. No, it was 8K that hand. It was 6K there. Lasting out the table, ace 10 against ace king. You can Shankoff down to just two right antes. So that's official. Prize pool's been confirmed. 44 runners. 17 left. Daniel Dvoris leading the field. I'm caught too. Oh, you're not having me? Yeah. Akita, Jason, Sawat, Sam Greenwood rounding out the top five. Six players paid. 154,000. The min cash. 700. Yeah, you got to do that at the end. You like make him feel in the crowd. And then he like turns over and flops it. Good bit of runway, of course, between us and that money bubble. As two pocket queens find themselves in this one. Greenwood under the gun limping. Lee and Duan caught in this crossfire that comes courtesy of Coons button 80. Okay, now the Poku is serious enough. I can't have any assistance. Greenwood has made the call. So Jason is technically leading the POI. Right there. Technically. Yeah, did they push it up there? Let's see what we got here. A warm welcome back to the Merit Royal Diamond Hotel, Spa and Casino for the final day of the Triton Super High Roller Series here in North Cyprus. Randy Liu alongside myself, Henry Kilmain, stepping in for Ali Najad. It is, of course, the 50K short deck main event, event number 16. And Randy, we're down to the final nine, so just two more eliminations before that final table with six places paid. And we touched on it with Ali once the prize pool was announced an incredibly large min cash here, north of three buy-ins. Yeah, I believe we also see these kind of bigger uh, min caches given the nature that people tend to rebuy multiple bolts and, you know, it's nice to be in the black. Um, so, yeah, a lot to play for, of course. Um, it is the main event short deck title. We got that Jacob and Co. Yeah, watch do. on the side, you know. and uh, Every single one of these guys, more than capable of taking it down. Lots of short deck experience. But we do got a chip distribution where the chip leader can kind of just press on and try to attack the people trying to squeeze into that top six payout. It certainly does feel that way if we take our attention to the Triton Poker Plus app, looking obviously at Makita atop of the chip council with 189. But note that cluster at the bottom there, Randy. Uh, Ike Haxton, Daniel Dvoris, and Richard Young, all sub 50. And, and with that, potentially a lot of kind of caginess with Makita leaning into the likes of Greenwood, Lee, and Kuhn as things stand. Yes, we should have a lot of caginess because of how close they are at the bottom with those shoving stacks. And if you think about it, we just assume those three get it in. Well, we're down to the final six. We're so those money. guys in the middle need to play cautious. Well, looking at the red feature table, Kuhn joined with Watson and Tang. Then the shortest ta uh, shorter stacks rather over on table three as we throw it down to the arena, the main event of the short deck side of the series is Danny Tang, table captain on the red table, looking for his second title of the series. Jason Kuhn looking to be the first ever double main event champion, taking down the main, the long deck, and potentially the main in the short deck here. And Randy, of course, let's not forget the Ivan Liao, player of the year points up for grabs as we head into the final two tournaments. And don't forget, he could also be a 
champion in multiple games at one series <laughs> and take down the leaderboard, right? We got PLO that he did well in, of course. Here we go. Start start things off. Short stack coming in with a limp 9-8 suited. Let's go Richard Young, by the way. Red cap. Red cap is lucky. Why would he change it? Of course. He could have opted for the champion's cap. Was like, no. Nah. This is the one that got me that cap. Fresh off that victory in the 25k short deck ante only for his second career title. Second on Malaysia's all-time money list. Here's the shortest stack here, but he knows all too well just how he can spin it back up. So we head to the King 10-9 board. Little piece for everyone. Kat Lee, middle pair and a gut shot. Makita with a very weak top pair. Richard with just bottom pair. Yeah, kiat has been on a bit of a run. Did win King-10 <laughs> versus two kings, and then later winning with two kings against 10-9. Even though his opponent blocked two pair to counterfeit, but now he's got 1.3. Check around. A little bit of comfort now for Bats, turning top and bottom. 105 in the middle. Yeah, Kiat Lee comfortably in the middle of the pack. Fifth in chips. Richard? Oh, sorry, go on. No, I was going to say, I was expecting Bats to strongly consider firing, but does opt for a check here with top and bottom. It is very connected. Lots of cars to dodge. That's an okay one. Dodge, he does. Yeah, a bit of pot control from all three players here. Understandable in that we are just three off the money. Few people left in the field looking for a trip saver, if you will. Daniel Dvoris, one of them. Only cashing one event this series, bricking all of the bigger buy and stuff. Mm. Same for Ike Haxton. They are at the bottom, though. They are indeed. Struggle. Short deck, Randy. Short deck. It, it's anyone's <laughs> game, really. I know, like, sure, Makita's got 2.8 million in chips, but things flip flop very quickly. So Watsu finds Malaysia himself Malaysia. third in chips, knows all too well as he came in as chip leader into that 25k. Mm -hmm. One of six, ended up going home sixth. So yeah. yeah, the flip floppiness as you like to call it. Yeah, and even Greenwood, right? He was earlier today before you came on, was sitting in second place, is now currently in sixth. But Makita has been able to kind of maintain this chip lead for quite some time. Anything goes. Yeah, Bats with two caches here. Second in the 75k for 1.2 million. Four titles, 18 caches, and almost 17 million in Triton earnings. So he does not need this as a trip saver is what you're telling well, me. Well, you know, we were speaking about with Ali. Yes, he cashed for 1.2. But the 200k Lux on Invitational, the 100k main did not cash. Potentially in for a couple of bullets in the main. Everything else, you know, that's six, 700k just buy-ins alone without re-entries. Don't know about the cash games, obviously. But yeah, I would love... I would say he's a favorite. I would <laughs> like to assume that he is at least break-even, if not slightly, in profit for the trip. Yeah, and obviously in pace, on pace to squeeze into the money with a high showing. 750 up top. Three quarters of a million. Jacob and Co. Triton collaboration timepiece, of course, going to the main event champion. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, by the way. Event number 16. What a fantastic series it's been with so many storylines, the highs and lows of tournament poker. History being made here, of course, Jason taking down two titles. Seven-time champion still in the hunt here for title number eight, which at that point would be Ooh. ludicrous. Hold your horses, Richard Young. Going to jam from the cutoff with his ace king, and Bads is going to ask for a count. For this amount of antis, two jacks most certainly would probably come in, continue to battle. The big question, though, for Makita is, is Kiat Lee trapping here? where he might be accidentally risking 1.3 million chips. Not something he would want to do with two jacks. Yeah, 
Perhaps he knows that the calling range of Catley would be incredibly tight. As Lee gets out of the way, Richard Young, the all-in player, at risk <coughs> with the yeah, two overs. It's a fair fight, Randy. Flipping for his tournament King life to get back up to 1.1 million. That wow, like leading a bit. <laughs> Always a smile, even when at risk. As it comes 10-9-7, that is not the flop Yong was looking for. Did you say he's drawing dead? <laughs> One eight where you would be. That's not an eight, that's a king. A queen, jack, or an eight needed for bats. Ten outs once. 36% equity. One card to come. The seven of hearts. Pairs the board, and Richard Young, Randy, with the red cap, doubling up to 1.2. Moving up to sixth in chips now. Bit of breathing room. One more double. Become one of the tournament chip leaders. And we know just how easily that can happen in short deck. I think it's confirmed. Run good cap. Ah. He's telling his mate right now. This cap. Don't even dry clean it. <laughs> I expect that... The merchandise store over on the Triton website. <laughs> Sold out. It's going to run out of stock <laughs> right very quickly. Just imagining like full table red caps next stop. Catley, another one of those in the conversation for elite players without a Triton title. There's a couple of them, isn't there? Yeah. Dvoris. Dvoris is also one of them. Davies. Ike Haxton. So three of the final nine looking for their first title. Would be a fantastic way to get the monkey off the shoulder, winning a main event. To the ace, seven, six, all diamond board, Young with that king of diamonds. And the most equity with two cards to come. It's hard for divorce to attack with auto diamonds holding. Check around we go, and he's got 615k, one of the short stacks, of course, remaining. Ball pairing on the turn. Cat Lee knows that he's going to have the most traps in the form of ace, king, ace, queen. Yeah, basically right now when he sees a check round on the flop, he's discounting the ace by quite a wide margin. Figures that if that's the case, his opponents really can't call without holding a big diamond. Cool. The diamond we got, though, for Rich Jong. It's also nice that the other two cards on the board are obviously undercards to his eights. Yes. Part of the Malaysian contingent practically tied as the third ace rolls off. Gatley with the check mark. Actually, one of the best cards for these two eights, surprisingly, here. Wouldn't really expect like a pair bigger than eights to have called on the turn. Checks okay. through. Gatley up to 1.4 million as we close. Well, wow in on yeah, the final table. It's a sick one as well, Randy, because obviously the final table is a final table of seven. Yes. So you survive the final table bubble, but then you're still not in the money. There's the final table bubble followed by the money bubble. So yeah, just sure. bubbles and then there's player of the year bubble or something too, maybe, <laughs> who knows? One step at a time. Couldn't have scripted it better. The Ivan Liao player of the year. Leaderboard. Started back in Madrid last year. Here we are, final two events going down to the wire.
Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but having the chip lead on the bubble of a short deck event isn't quite as sim quite as similar as in Hold'em, where you can really push people around, and that being a byproduct of the equities running so close. Yes, yeah, so you wouldn't really expect mm -hmm. Makita to just you know open jam like any two, like where you see in some spots in. In no limit hold him. Well, he He's still gonna alive. come along with some limps and stuff too. It, it's just a yep. different approach um, in short deck than no limit hold him on how to approach the the chip lead. Also, kind of depends on how your opponents react to all in plays. Do they narrow their calling range, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Who gets stealth aces? Who gets down aces? He ants at the other table, you know? <laughs> Nobody else gets aces on the bubble. Oh. <laughs> Back over to this table, Danny Tang. Chip leader. For his second title, the series would be his Whoa. third overall. Yeah, long old ways to go. Oh. Oh. 580. Five eighty. Yeah. Cut off the button, Randy. Given the stack he's up against, we'll be probably pushing these King Ten right. in Wait, to attack. Nice Jack is most certainly going nowhere. Shortest stack needs to find a spot to double. Still three from the money, so while we are approaching it, a little bit too far to lay this yeah. one down. He knows it. Cut off the button. No potential traps behind. Gonna have to spin the wheel. First one was this. I thought I was actually gonna have gone the I'll have to wait for the clock. 1.2 million. Not even I can that hold. Much, so. We've got to sixth in chips as so we head to the ace, jack, nine board. Top two for Ike. Gut shot and running diamonds for Danny. Seven of diamonds, you're fine. Ooh, oh, six of diamonds. It's brutal, it really is. This. I haven't been right once yet. I mean, I was kind of close that time. He once now for the two-time champ no. to eliminate Ike. <laughs> you just let Ike squeeze it at least. Ooh, Queen of Diamonds on the river. Danny with the runner, runner flush extends his chip lead at the top and eliminates Ike three spots off the money. And with that, Randy, we are now on the final table bubble. Two tables of four. One more elimination and the short deck main event final table will be set. You know what I mean? Like the... The yeah, it was a tough one for Ike this week. Life or these the last two weeks. The, mm. it. it really Series was. Saver. Yeah. Over. A good point. Cashing two events. <coughs> that being said, I'm certain that's Fifth in the, the 30k mystery for 160,000 and 19th. So Ming cash in the 20k. Rough trip out. 24 caches in total. Hey, that is another thing the GG brand attorney could do if they wanted. Let you, let you squeeze on all ends. Total caches. GG, you could squeeze through everyone all Jason Kuhn with the most, 32. Boss Paul, second, with 28. Ike in third. Jason attacking here of 10 9 suited, first one to go. We are playing four handed. So under a gun is. Later position than normal. Oh, I did. Yeah. Danny of Ace Queen, but it's quite a big jam. The bigger the jam, the more narrow the calling ranges well, of your opponent. Of course. Uh, every chip lead. <laughs> Jason rocking that custom. Jacob and company Triton collaboration piece for taking down the No Limit Holder main. As Danny cool. does. Get out of the way, gotta retain that chip lead. Yeah, as Randy like mentioned, on the first one and being like, well, he wants to be the one moving know. all in, putting the pressure you know on what? everyone else. Oh. In short deck tournaments, it pays to be the attacker. Right? 
You know the feeling of, uh, do you think somebody in the tank just like fucking around and then they use a time bank and you're like, oh shit. Oh, I mean, I definitely know Danny could just be showering me, but. Yeah, but they, they use the time bank and you're like, oh no, this is a. Yeah, this is real life. Yeah. Like when I. Close up. At the 100K final table, I jammed King Queen and you had sevens in the small. Like Steve opened you flat sevens, I jam. And I was like, oh yeah. You made it. I was like, oh, he's a hundred percent forward into you. You uh, you convinced me the other way. <laughs> made me a believer. Yeah. Oh. oh yeah. Steve had some out of this world flats that final table. Hit me with the king seven suit with one hand. Whenever it was like tons of pressure on him, he just flatted the small blind with king seven suit. Well, that. At the 100k final table. It was insane. I don't remember that one. Crazy. It was the hand where Hecklin shoved queens and I called ace queen suited and sucked out. Oh. Uh. Danny with the limp. Jack 10 suited. It's one of the most talked about hands in short deck, of course. Jack 10. Plays incredibly well. Always has tons of equity, even up against hands like aces. And how about this for a flop, Randy? Top and bottom for JK. Danny Tang with the two overs and the gut shot, as well as backdoor spades. Checking top and bottom. Noteworthy. Does give the Jack-10 the nut of butters. Some pot control from Jason, obviously aware that top and bottom can very quickly shrink in terms of value size on future streets. Ooh, hello, sneaky check on the turn from Tang. Yeah, trying. He figures that he can get value, of course, from 10x, try to get him to bloat the pot for him. And then also, if his opponent isn't holding 10x, then maybe they try to represent that extract in that manner. However, it does go check through on the turn, so he probably is going to discount the 10x at a wide margin, especially with the jack dropping off, as he wouldn't have the super straight. Maybe he goes for crying call value against ace x. You just call it the super straight. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to start using that. Is there another term for it? I don't know. I just made now, it up. Now we know. Okay. The super straight. I think we usually hear people say like six card straight or something. Okay. Let's stick with the super straight. straight. I like, I like it. So a small tickle on the river. Payoff incoming potentially. Looks like there it. There you go. Cool. Like how he sends it in his direction, the chips. Like you probably got me. Sneaky, sneaky. And he getting paid on the river. That Jacob and Co. main event. Timepiece. <sighs> Jason's wrist. That's what everyone else is fighting for. They all want to be able to Thank you. show off that watch byproduct of taking down a main event. Talking of Jacob and Co., the official timekeeper of the Triton Poker Series, make these incredible timepieces. And they're not just about the diamonds, the sapphires, and the rubies, Randy. If you're into poker and gambling themed gear, there's just the one perfect watch brand to check out, embedding a playful spirit into the watch functions. Their Astronomia Casino has a functioning roulette wheel inside yeah, the piece. You can it check it out it can't during be like, the break. It's not there, but it's at yours, right? Obviously no, awarding those oh, really? special That's collaboration right. timepieces to be won in the Triton No Limit Hold'em and Short Deck main events. One that will be awarded today. Saw Zach from our marketing department mm -hmm. put out a little poll on Instagram. <coughs> It was a picture of Ronaldo, footballer, rocking a Jacob & Co. timepiece. And then he took a picture of himself with the exact same watch. Who wore it better? The fans voted that Zach from marketing wore it better. Yeah, but um, it was probably Ronaldo, wasn't it? I mean, <laughs> people probably. voted. Probably was. I didn't see it, so I can't really have too much of an opinion on that. Sorry, Zach. Ace, Jack, seven. Got shot for both Greenwood and Tang. So once with top two. Tang under the gun. 
He is table captain. Would have loved to have a spade in hand. But still thinking about taking a stance here. He believes that the calling range of ranges of his opponents has shrunk considerably given that we're now two from the money. He's got the big chip lead. Watson's got top two. Queen on the turn, now giving Tang an open ender. King or an eight needed. Look at Greenwood nodding at the King 10 <laughs> in the muck. Huh, cool. See if DT continues firing into Sir Watts. If his game plan was to bet 10 on a flop, definitely okay. crossing his mind to attack here on the turn. And he figures he can actually apply a lot of pressure against like King Jack, Ace 10, mm. some kind of like one pair weak gut shot holding that doesn't have a spade in hand. He is leaning into so once. Feels like he has nothing to do other than call and reevaluate on the river. Yeah, that happen happens a lot in this game. Of course, so many bad river cards could show up. That one? That's one of them. There's now a four-liner on board. 9-8 gets there as well. Let's see if Danny slows down after being called on two streets. It would be a bluff that potentially get through, Randy, given the run out. It's also, yes, 10-9 bluff here would probably work, but it's hard to do so as there's a decent amount of King X still in Watson's range, right? King Queen, um, King Jack off of King of Spade. Right. Yeah, that King of Spade certainly. It's a can't. reasonable holding, especially in a limp pot. Watson over limping and um, off suit broadways is very reasonable. But Danny can find a bet, though. <sighs> Pretty savage. Four, six, five in the middle. Oh my. Savage it is. Savagery from Danny. Just leaning into Michael Watson. And he had that bet with his friend at the start of the year. One Triton title. And I think it was four caches needed. Obviously. Came in clutch here. Came in clutch in Vietnam. So two titles. Does he get a bonus for I overperforming? <laughs> <laughs> Back to this hand real quick. Um, Ace Jack, clearly in a, not in a great spot. If there's anyone capable of sniffing out bluffs correctly. There's no really like obvious bluffs out there. Apart from Oh yeah, no, sorry, I was about to say apart from King X of Spades, but obviously King X is now improved to a straight if it was the lone King of Spades. This is pretty much the only hand, right? The 10-9, and look at that, Danny Tang extending his lead, and it's a sizable one now, Randy. 3.4 million. First in chips, second is Makita Bazikowski with 2.3. It's a real nice cushion for Danny at the top. If you look at his graph as well, it's just been it's just been a grind today. Yeah, it's but a very steady grind, chipping oh, away yeah. into the streets. Trip, He's been pretty relentless post-flop. Back to the other table, Daniel is getting even shorter. Kiat Lee's betting here just queen 10, second pair, and it's good. 10 blocker to the straight that Divorce is looking for. Pretty mergy here of Queen 10. Given he's up against a dealer, but under some weak King X's, he can probably fold out. Maintain control, extract value from gut shots. Open ended. Takes. Taking a card here. 355 back. Ooh. 
a delightful card for the 8-9. Yes, indeed. And although it's the third nut straight, given the way the hands played out, very unlikely Kiat to have a hand like ace-jack or jack-nine. In fact, I think we can comfortably remove Jack nine, maybe ace jack at some frequency, but yeah, I can see ace jack. But um, regardless, he's playing a 355k stack, 475 in the middle. He wouldn't be folding, even though he may fear that hand. The question now is, does queen ten have value in extracting right now with kind of a weak two pair? Not even kings up. He might find like a blocker bet, or maybe a check evaluate. 4-7-5 in the middle, Taurus with just 3-5-5 five, five back. There we go. Nicely done, Daniel DeVoris. Straight's good. Straight is good, so Daniel was the immediate short stack. Doubling through DeVoris, uh, sorry, Forest doubling through Kiat. They now switch positions. Kiat Lee is now the shortest stack. Forest up to 80 mm. antes, moving up to fifth in chips overall. Short deck, Randy. That's how quickly the tides can turn. Forest. Looking for his first Triton title. <coughs> so many crossbars over the years. Such an incredible Triton track record without a title. See if Kyat decides to make a stance here of ace 10 as he falls to the bottom of the leaderboard. Above 50 antes, he's out. Mm. ICM is very real at this point of the tournament. Nikita yeah, loving the this spot. Overwhelming chip leader at this feature table with 154 antes. Second in chips is now Boris with 79. I'm super excited for this final table, man. Looking at the field, Richard Young, short deck extraordinaire, Danny Tang, Makita, I mean everyone, there's not a name left in the field that doesn't have what it takes to close this one out. You'll take any seven? I'll take any of these guys. If I have to bet on them. Back-to-back -back jams here. A little bit of an upgrade from 8-9 suited. Ace 10 again. Hitting the muck there for Kiat. Boss just making bad sweat for a few seconds. I was never thinking of calling the Honestly, I think he just didn't know what that shit was on him. I didn't want to say that, but yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, that's the only time he tanks that he didn't realize it's on him. Talking of boss, yesterday, if you recall, Paul Poir and Jason Kuhn on several occasions during all ins with the run out, not realizing who had won the hand, just super. You know, burnt out, mental fatigue, call it what you will. There was a situation where Boss was counting out chips to pay someone out. Nobody apart from the dealer recognizing that, Mr. Paul, you have aces and queens, top two pair. You win. <laughs> Table just breaking out in laughter, of course. At just how tired these guys are after 16 days of grinding. Yeah, it goes to show yeah. how... Endurance is a, a key part of this kind of marathon series. You get that extra EV at the end. When people have been fatigued <coughs> playing every single tournament out there. 
Well, talking of tournaments out there, <laughs> would you believe event number 17, Randy, the final event of the series, the 20K short deck, Dao Min Fu playing his first ever short deck tournament is the overwhelming chip leader with two lamas left. The guy didn't Six. know the rules yesterday, Henry. He was getting coaching from Tom Dwan and Daniel Dvoris, Jason Kuhn and Paul Poir. Massive chip lead. 587,000 second in chips is Paul with 325. But more importantly, Dao Fu has two lamas remaining. Paul is out of lamas. Insane. But he learned the rules yesterday and he's jumping straight into a 20K? Like, does he not look for an easier spot? Jeez. Okay, Dao Min Fu, we got our eye on you. Oh, we love him. Makita, just relentless. 9-8 offsuit, all in. That's three all-ins in a row he's taken down. Picking up one ante from each player, double ante from the button. It's adding up. Okay, back to the other table. Knock one more out. We combine to one table. And then we will find ourselves on the stone money bubble. And what a money bubble it is. Three buy-ins. Incredibly uncommon, especially in high roller events. Not something you see every day. Seventh in chips. Cut off the button. All on. This time really is a good one. Okay. okay. Good luck. Easy. Good luck. Uh, now I was lying again. Uh, <laughs> I knew that was that. That I had was a very strong lying. Read. That, yeah, that <laughs> I had a very. Yeah. I would like my. Believed him again. I'm no. a sucker. Like definitely got an ace. Right. I mean, also it's just hard for you to have an ace when I have two of them, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I believe that. Mm. Gotta say, both times I shoved it, really did not want. Just always a different vibe in short deck events, in terms of atmosphere and energy at the table. A lot more chattiness, even when there's 750k up top. <laughs> yes, it's true though. Um, just the nature of the game, it's, yeah. um, it's, you know, it's action heavy. Some of the decisions, you know, especially pre-flop a little bit, you know, more simple to mm. keep in um, easy terms. But still, it is rather it's complex kind of when you start to throw in the, like the pay jumps, the the tournament aspect of it, all your ranges need to change. Post flop is actually rather tricky when you're deep too. And we're playing deep stacks right now. That is a fun flop for Danny Tang. Second nut flush draw and a gut shot. Get more <laughs> down mid foo in the background saying easy game. Yeah, he loves the short deck now. Oh, he's converted. Once you get once you get a taste. Lifetime. They said that about PLO, right? Once you get a taste, you can't go back, but short deck. It's a different beast. KDK is the bet here. High equity. Chip lead. Deal the button check. Big cards on flop. Easy to apply pressure on these weaker holdings. Doesn't shake Watson, but I could imagine a lot of multi barrels incoming here between seven of clubs. It's not a bad card. Picks up extra outs, of course. Now turning bottom pair, but it's another one of those kind of 
fake showdown type holdings where you're never really good. Even though he has a pair. He's going to check it on over to Sir Watts. So what's here, Randy? Second pair, no kicker. It's kind of a let's just check it down and hope you check it down with me situation. Certainly what it feels like. Betting is basically turning into a bluff, but I'm not sure if he wants to do that against the chip leader. So what's with the check mark? Daddy bricks his combo draw. 250 out there. Yeah, it looks like he's thinking about some kind of bet check bet line. Trying to represent some ace 10 type holdings. Maybe like a king jack that played it slow. Yeah, I've seen short deck a lot harder to go for thin value. Checks through. Danny saying you win. So what's up to 1.9 million looking for his second title of the series. Third in chips now. Some real storylines emerging here. Danny saying king. King six, like Randy Sam Green with like second in the main. Option, Jason you know? Kuhn two titles this trip. So what's like, like, Richard lazy, like, and Danny the with a title? Cat Lee looking for his first. As is Daniel Torres to the outer table. And Keita, of course, looking for title number five. Just mashing away into the shorter stacks. That's covering everyone at this table by a considerable margin. By a massive margin. I mean, Bats on 2.5 million. Voris with just a million. 172 antis. Bats has a 100 anti lead over the rest of the table. Given yeah. how tight it is at the bottom. So he can kind of relentlessly jam into these stacks as mm. the worst case scenario, he loses 73 anties, but generally speaking, he's just been chipping up over and over again. Hence why he's opting for the jam strategy. Wouldn't really be able to do that at the other table given they're much deeper. This is definitely the table he wants to be at. He's 10 for Young. Only seventh in chips. Oh, yeah. Cut off the button. Yeah. Yeah, ace nine feels like. You've got eight. Show it, Richard. Missed value. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Have some of that. Richard, ace ten is not a strong hand. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Doesn't matter, you don't call much. <laughs> hmm? You wouldn't call much. You're gonna ace king, ace queen. You want to think about that? You don't want, you don't want to risk your stack. I mean, you're happy with Germany. <laughs> Final table bubble, Randy. Eight left. Six oh, places I paid. Every time after that, my Seven hundred and fifty thousand up top. Richard looking for his second of the series. This is Danny. <laughs> Peter looking for title number five. Jason Kuhn looking for title number eight. And to win both the No Limit Hold and Main and Short Deck Main, something that nobody has ever achieved at a Triton Super High Roller Series. Right. 
Thoughts on this, Randy? Makita with the Atex. You tend to see these kind of Asex suiteds actually look for reshove spots. It's a big question is why is Makita not open jamming into me this time? It's more polar. Equity, yeah. It becomes more polar when he comes in for raise. It looks like he's going to make a stance here. He's going to run into the Ace King suited. Trouble for Daniel. Still 32% chance to hang in there. Yeah, but in terms of equity, it's one of the worst spots you can find yourself in in short deck. Final table bubble, Randy. Forrest running into top of range against the four time champion. And well, on that board texture. Looking incredibly bleak for Daniel Dvoris. Needs an eight or a nine on the turn to have some form of, well, there you go. Eight of clubs does now give him four outs. A nine to double up. Otherwise we are down to the final table. The eight of diamonds completes the run out. And with that, Azirkuski eliminating Daniel Dvoris in eighth. Moving up to 3.7 million. And it means that Bads overtakes Danny Tang at the top of the chip counts and is going to be going into that FT as the chip leader, Randy. Give for his fifth Triton title. Jeez. Daniel Dvoris. Of course, Randy. That means we're on a 154k money bubble now as only six places will be paid. Can't lead down to just 44 anti, so I'm expecting early doors in this FT to see a lot of caginess from the middle of the pack as the likes of Danny Tang and Makita get to just lean into those middling stacks until Kiat Lee either doubles up or is eliminated. Chip counts brought to you by Bookmaker. The 50k short deck main event as we welcome you back to the break desk. The final table has been set. Randy and I are going to take a very quick five-minute break as the players get ready to battle it out for the 750k, the Triton and Jacob & Co. timepiece, and, of course, the main event title. Don't go too far. We'll be back very shortly. The following quiz is brought to you by GTO Wizard. You open pocket fives from early position and face a three bed from the big blind. You're 25 big blinds deep. Do you fold, call, or shove? Do you know the right answer? Take your chance to win a one-month premium GTO Wizard subscription. Scan the QR code or go to gtowizard.com slash triton. We give away five subscriptions every day. Master poker and learn how to crush the competition with GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. The biggest song. poker song. This is a crazy. No way! <laughs>
Welcome back to the break desk, Randy Lou, alongside myself, Henry Kilbane, as we've worked our way down to the final table of the short deck main event, 50k buy-in, event number 16. And the funny thing about this final table, Randy, is that we are on the stone money bubble. We just had the final table bubble, but one more elimination to get us into the money, 154k min cash. And we we're obviously just discussing before we went on break, that this is all about Makita and Danny kind of pushing the rest of the table round until Kiat Lee either doubles up or is eliminated. Yeah, and we know these big stacks are going to attack. Um, fortunately for them, they are sitting across from each other, it seems, so they can kind of just take opportunities to kind of attack these um, other four players in the middle of the pack. But all, all eyes on Kiat Lee. He's short, 44 antis. Everyone knows it, so perhaps maybe... Yeah, I'm just going to see the big stacks attack. Nothing else, really. Yeah, they are sat away from each other, as you said. And that really does kind of, you know, once Danny's out, it means Makita gets to do it. Once Makita's out, Danny gets to do it. Um, looking at the the stacks, I mean, Lee kind of in a rough spot. But look, he can do it. He's done it before as we throw it down to the main stage. Final table of event number 16, the 50K short deck main. And... That man in the red cap, fresh off that short deck victory just yesterday. Mr. Richard Young looking for his second title of the series, as is Danny Tang. Jason looking for his third, would you believe? Kat Lee looking for his first ever Triton title. Nikita out in front, but only just. Head of Danny Tang by just eight antis. 154k bubble here. Payouts brought to you by Bookmaker. Eventual champion going home with yeah, 150,000. Piece of hardware as yeah. well as the yeah, Jacob and Company and Triton collaboration timepiece. So let the games begin, Randy. Begin we shall. First step here is for players to try to squeeze into money. We got a more than 3x min cash to come. It's a lot of buy-ins. Notice the King-10 going into the muck as he Richard Young is in the middle. Shout out producer James and Martins. Working hard. Getting a little picture of me whilst I was taking uh, 
Sweet. <laughs> Meditation on break. I'm break even if I'm in cash. You in for three as well? Oh, there we go. A couple of the Anyone guys in for one three here? bullets. Oh, guy. I'm in for one. <laughs> oh, okay. no. Yeah, I'm in for one as well. <laughs> Jason and Richard in for one. Jason also one of us. Bit early, got it. Oh, God. So three, two, one, like this. Like one point eight, two, two, eight one, one, one. Yeah. <laughs> so Watson, Danny need. Yeah, oh, sorry, so Watson, Kia need a min cash to break even on this tournament. <laughs> it was a similar storyline for so what's of course in the 25k. Pair up. Did not pair up. Needed third or better to break even on his six bullets. Ooh, we got a little sweat. <coughs> that bad, huh? You gotta look at it three times before you mark it. <laughs> Jason knows what's up. <clears throat> For those of you just joining us, a warm welcome to this final table of seven. Event number 16, the 50k short deck main. Penultimate event of the series here in North Cyprus at the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel, Spa and Casino. Final day of coverage for us here in the booth. To appreciate everyone that's been keeping us company over the last two weeks is Richard Yong. Okay. That's for the Open Jam, the Ace Queen. It's gonna get through. <laughs> like the squeeze. Yeah. Ace is always a good start, but not the six yeah, to follow. Yeah. I had the first cut sweat. For people that may be new to short Line deck, up. of course. <sighs> flushes beat full houses. The deuces, threes, fours, and fives are removed from the deck. Have you noticed, like, towards and the, the end ace of the can trip play is, like, as an ace or a five, for example, on a six, machine. seven, eight, nine board. Like a twenty k. Ace would give you a table, nine high straight. Like, you know, you got as well as like ace nine on a six seven eight board give you a nine two. high straight. From America, he's a fierce opponent <laughs> to all players around the world. Here's Jason. Good. And now it's just quick photo. That's it. Nothing. I was super excited. Really. Yeah. 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 Ye
not sliding into the money just yet. Regardless, this texture is getting quite bad. And with that, Danny improving the two pair on the river. What's the bounty normally like in those games? 10k, if I'm not mistaken, with like Rui uh, Cow. And I know they did like a 10k once. Yeah, that, that adds up. Clearly, like you're playing like what, seven handed, <laughs> 60k extra. <laughs> you're playing 100k stacks. Understandable. Well, anyways. Queen nine here comes in with a bit of value. Going to get paid off rather Queen quickly nine. as the jack six is good. Any bounties? No one's starting to chip over. So he has tied. The chip lead it is a sizable one for both Makita and Danny. This third closest stack belongs to Michael Watson on just 1.7 million. So, two million chip buffer for both Tang and Bats. Something you see all too often. Sam Greenwood on 49, Catley on 29 antis. It's going to be snug and can understand the Queen's fold from Richard. Jason, of course, looking to add some more points by making it into the money. Makita is actually going to activate this king eight in the earliest position. Just expecting people not to mess with his big stack, so gives them more opportunities to see flops. Kia is really looking for a spot. Queen 10 is questionable, though especially against an early position limp. You don't want to force any all-ins. Fold equity is much lower with that stack depth of sub-30 antis. Well, it's Greenwood's turn to look down at Jack-6 on the bottom. You're right. All right. All right sixth in chips. <coughs> is a good try? <laughs> <laughs> Who said that? The dealer? I love that. Retreat. How about it? The bounty hand with two pair again on the jack eight six bats with middle pair king kicker. Thoughts on these kind of boards, Randy, where there's just so many straight draws available. Makita with middle pair. Yeah, Makita's frequency will increase quite a bit just given the nature of the board and the situation we're in a stone cold bubble. Expecting forward equity. I think if we weren't on the Stone Cold Bubble and he didn't have this chip advantage, he probably would just kind of slow down things with King 8. Jack 6 is kind of an interesting spot where you most certainly usually have the best hand. I feel like if he's going to raise, he'll just push all the chips in there. Otherwise, he calls, waits for a cleaner turn with just one card to go to slide chips in there. Not really looking to raise and deuce from like, say like gut shots or open ended straight draws. And what are the clean turns given that every card bar a king True. completes the straight? Right. Um, the cleanest turn would be a jack or six. <laughs> Obviously hard to hit given that stupid pair right now. So maybe he just comes in with jam. So difficult to navigate. Obviously Cat Leon just 29 antis. Of course, the nice thing about Jack-6 is blocking sets, of course, which would snap them all. His biggest fear is pocket eights. But I suppose if his opponent has king eight, could certainly have jack eight as well. Would rather have top two pair. Mm. Yeah, that's a great point. Obviously, some counterfeit outs. Looks like he's going to leave a little back. But pretty much all in. It's 
going to let it go. So really crucial pick up there for Greenwood to overtake Richard Young and move up to fifth in chips. Now a sizable gap between himself and Kiat Lee at the bottom of the chip counts. Pretty nice to see the wop with that garbage hit and then just smash it like that. <laughs> That's <laughs> with the soul read. Watts has been uh, pretty active in the speech department this this trip. Yeah, I would he say. has. Yeah, he's been enjoying himself. Great one-liners. Talking of Sir Watts. Hello, Ace King of Clubs. Currently sitting in third. The big question, is it better for him to limp or just open jam himself? Yeah, it always feels like, really, Poker Gods, are you trying to deal me out of the tournament? Yeah, and just practically most of it. Definitely ideal on Stone Cold Bubble. He's not trying to, like, make it, like, 10 antis to induce someone to re-jam on him and doesn't really want to force it all in if he doesn't have to. Danny of two jacks, not, not a great spot for him, so he's out. Always a slight sigh of relief to at least get it through. Especially when you're third in chips on the stone money bubble. One of these final seven players will be going home empty handed. Min cash of 154,000. What's the eventual champion? Going home, Randy, with 750k. Sorry to interrupt, but he does not want to see a call from anything. <laughs> Even like Ace Queen, he's like, no, I'd rather just take it down prey flop. Yeah. Given they got decent equity, Stone Cold Bubble, 3x payout. That's why you just go all in to shut out those hands and not make it like 10 antis, get re jammed by some hand, forced to call. Especially if you get covered, is quite awful. Bats is going to come with well, 7x here from under the gun. Strongest range. Note the Queen Jack suited. Hitting the mark power of raising. Look at that ICM pressure on everyone else. Yeah, Makita knows it. So he's able to get away with those raises. <laughs> It's a big difference from 0 to 150, 60K, right, min cash, then sliding right in and getting one page up from there, which is closer to one more additional, you know, buy-in. So very, very important is this part of the tournament. Slide in if you're, you know, third through seventh, top two, looking to press. Kiat running out of time. 25 antis right now of King Jack offsuit. He knows he needs to kind of pick up a little bit of chips just to hang in there. Yeah, of course, a massive difference from Hold'em in the sense that every hand you have to put in the ante <coughs> in short deck. It's not like you can yeah, pass through the blinds and then wait an orbit. Oh boy. It's 525. Bats with the ace queen. This is going to be it, Randy. So Ace Queen definitely can give the King Jack value, but a couple things are coming to mind. Whether preserving Kiat Lee into this tournament give him more opportunities to chip up as everyone just kind of handcuff. Also, just calling here, <coughs> maybe leaving the 50k back as everyone will be super handcuffed on the next hand. Good luck. <laughs> and maybe another opportunity to raise and take preflop, giving one ante from each person would add quite add up quite a bit. So call we go, 50k back. This top pair versus middle pair. Nice spot. Okay, queen seven. That's not happy. Yeah, that's not, he's not happy with that. In it goes. King Jack? Mm -hmm. Cat Lee, 70% favorite to double up here. 12 Some caches, 4.6 million in Triton earnings. Came sixth in that 200k Lux on Invitational for his Some career best that. score of a million. 30,000 as he turns to pair. I like it. <laughs> it's 
bad not luck a good in that. Four more, <laughs> Four more outs. Ace, queen, or a ten needed. Broadway. Doesn't come, and with that, yeah, Cat Lee doubling up Randy, and all of a sudden, we've got some insane ICM pressure now, as there is a massive cluster between fourth and seventh. Jason on 1.2 million, Sam Greenwood on 1.2 million, Richard Young on 1.1, and Kiat with that double on 1.1 himself. There's just a seven anti difference between Richard Young in seventh and Jason Kuhn in fourth. Yes, uh, a very different dynamics now as everyone will want to tighten up their ranges considerably. And also that's gonna m move Makita down to second place. So maybe he can't attack as much. Perhaps more opportunity for Danny Tang to get involved. Right now 9x mystery in the muck. Go on Richard. First one attack advantage in this situation as no one wants to force all ins. I had a hand for a happy jam. <laughs> I was already counting the pot. <laughs> <laughs> and then Richard came in. Mine, right? Richard, of course, in that interview saying how he prefers short deck over long deck due to you know, the super pros in Hold'em. The variance in short deck equity is running a lot closer and obviously just the years of experience of playing short deck was there at the start the inception of the game back in the macau days i, I wouldn't even want to hazard a guess randy as to how many hours and hours of experience he has under his belt as our chip leader and he's looking down at a couple of aces does he go for the limp trap here randy well he's thinking about it he also knows if he raises, not all in right now, it might also be perceived as strength. Does come in with a 130. Small enough where people might think they've got some fold Jeez. equity. Ace Jack in the muck doesn't take the bait. But Watson's got two kings, and he's going to think the chip leader is just up to no good. How can he ever lay down two kings right now? What a disgusting spot. J mind you, Kiat Lee just doubled. So yeah. he knows there's a waiting game down there at the bottom. Watson's in for three bullets, I believe. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. Kings oh. against aces as he does move all in. And Danny, of course, going to snap oh. call with the aces. Came in third in chips to this final table. Yeah, you can hear Watson's frustrated, muttering to himself. Not these two aces. What the fuck? What do you mean? Well, brought to you by bookmaker.eu. Oh. If Danny Tang oh, yeah. oh, can yeah, hold here, it will be the yeah. overwhelming oh. chip leader in the money. <laughs> if Sir Watts can find a king. Oh, wow, it's looking incredibly bleak on the ace jack six board. He's a queen or a ten for a gut shot sweat. Let's find the king. <laughs> One outer. The running kings was something we didn't mention. As the nine of diamonds completes the run out, and Michael Watson is our bubble boy. Kings against aces, Randy. Nothing so Watts could have done. It's the chip leader opening. What are you going to do? You got to attack. You got to maintain your stack and try and chip no, up. <laughs> GG, yeah, Watson. Jeez, and with that, so Watts bowing out one spot off the money. Of course, that victory in the PLO, final table in the 25K, as well as the final table in the 100K main, but running his kings into aces on the stone bubble of the 50k oh, short deck like main and with that yeah, yeah. one now guaranteed hundred and fifty four thousand dollars that bubble not taking that much time yeah like obviously they're like classic itm things are different everyone's happy now they they've squeezed in <laughs> some people are break even now some people break even one of them one not 
And for Cat Lee, said he was in for three bullets. Jason Kuhn picking up 10 additional points now, making it into the money. Talking of JK, uh, aces from the hijack. Pumping it up to 150k. That's with a potential spot here. Ace Jack. This is hijack v cutoff v button. It's a late position open from Jason. Well, 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 well. Makita finding the fold. Bravo, sir. They're going around, Danny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're going around. Yeah. <coughs> yeah? Yeah? Oh, wow, they are. I wow. gotta say, when Micah snapped, he seemed like, you know, he had a little... Yo, I, like, I was like, neck, he, 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 he didn't look like somebody who had a skin. You know, he looked like, he looked like somebody who had a... Had a, huh? had, a, had a had a path to win huh? the hand. Mike, what are you doing? Oh, you're doing it. 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 Oh, Imagine if he goes back to back victories. That red cap is going to be sold out. <laughs> it's already sold out, buddy. <laughs> Probably not, but I'm just saying. It might be. <laughs> Head over to the Triton store. Grab some merchandise. Ace King on the button for Greenwood. That cluster at the bottom. Just 10 antis between Jason in third and Kat Lee in sixth. Well, I'd be happy to run this one as he does announce himself. Oh. Nice spot in the sense that he's picked up a couple extra antis with these three limps. Easy game. Blackjack. Easy game. Blackjack. Yeah. Flipping. You didn't even know which one I had. Maybe, maybe I had ace ten off. Just didn't believe you guys. Favorite against that. I did Look not have it. did not have ace ten off. <laughs> thank you. And the atmosphere. As always, thank you. <laughs> so <laughs> different at short deck tables. Really learn from the best in the business. Watching these short deck pros. I'm talking about learning from the best. GTO Wizard, you can take your game to the next level. The number one app for poker players. You can start crushing at gtowizard.com slash triton today. Wizards, or should I say upcoming Wizards, you can join our giveaway for five premium GTO Wizard one month subscriptions at gtowizard.com forward slash triton to take your game to the next level. You can enjoy GTO Wizard entirely for free for 24 hours. You can also get a 10% discount on your first purchase. One of the things that I've been recommending throughout the series, Randy, is you know, noting down some hands, the way that the elite players are playing them, then opening One up point. the GTO Wizard app, taking a look, seeing maybe how close they're playing to what the app is recommending, and maybe noting some of the deviations that they're making as well in terms of different sizings and whatnot. Yeah. 100% well said. Thank you, mate. Mm -hmm. So, I do want to point out something yeah, to you, especially now that we've made the money, is that Jason can just get as high as possible for a placement finish in this tournament. It really would make it very tough for Stevie to come back on that Ivan Leal Player of the Year leaderboard. Yeah, there must be a cutoff so point, no right, where I believe Stevie we'll can't win it. We were saying that Top two, like, pretty much guarantee. Top yeah. three is very likely. Is it basically in the sense that Stevie no, has to, like, so. you know, <laughs> win, probably the win, win, win the 20k. No, I mean, he has to win. He has to win, right? Yeah, but he's fired a bunch of bullets in the last two tournaments. I'm in for one in both of them. And uh, I didn't get to play this one. Like, I think if he wins this, like, and I get fifth or something, he wins. There we go. Yeah. Weird. It's a weird spot. It's yeah. yeah. Very weird spot. And it's obviously prestigious bragging rights. 
but 200k on the line. So Jason's got a kind of a funny scenario on where he's got some kind of bubble situation where he's trying to get place as high as possible. Might not want to be too crazy <laughs> with six remaining. <laughs> Jason on the button. King Queen. Talking to Stephen oh, Chidwick. Yeah. Just quickly, over in the 20k. Things not going great. Currently 11th. Sorry, now 12th in chips. Now the 12 players over there as we head to the ace, Queen 10 board. Bantz with top pair. Jason with middle pair and a gut shot. See how Bats wants to proceed here. Top pair, no kicker. Just shy of. That pot. By betting the flop, it leaves him uncapped. You know, if he was holding some kind of stronghold, he wouldn't be checking this to Jason position. Jason, though, mandatory call here with pair of queens inside straight draw. And he just hit it. Trip queens on the turn. Jason in position against the under the gun open. Yeah, and clearly a disastrous card for Makita in a sense as opponent, likely to improve. But also, you know, yeah, I don't know, it's just bad, right? Like, it's a raised pot. You can definitely see, like, Broadway-type hands defending. The six. Yeah, the kicker. Given it's a raised pot, I wouldn't put, like, little aces in Jason's range. Preflop too. Anyways, looks like Jason is going to cut out some chips, knowing that King Queen is usually the best hand. 560 in the middle. I see him cut out about 250. Probably not that many bluffs that Makita can beat here have to be like jack 10 or king 10 taking a stance very little outs against queen x so many gut shots out there potentially be turning themselves into a bluff yeah it have to be one with showdown value a little bit of showdown value does know that jason's pretty creative Pants not going anywhere just yet. Yeah, Sun. definitely giving Jason a lot of credit for turning these pair of straight draws into bluffs like Jack 10, King 10. Jack 9 does now get there. Backdoor diamonds also rolling off. Yeah, like King X of diamonds, King 9. Million in the middle. I wouldn't say Makita is worried about <laughs> Jack Nine or King X suited, like King Number, just because he raised okay, preflop. <laughs> Jason, just checking behind. Happy to take this one to show down up to 1.8 million now, creating a very healthy gap between himself and the rest of the shorter stacks. Of course, Randy, this being the penultimate event, event number 16, the 50k short neck main, means that once we crown our champion here, coverage for the day is not over and done with. So we do have event number 17, the final event of the series of 20k, which you can actually see running in the background.
on our other feature table. We're picking up coverage once we crown a champion here. Well, what's important, Henry, is that we see Jason rack up some points here and can Stevie on pull to come back in that final event that we're covering. Yeah, gonna come with the limp. I'm under the gun with the sevens. One C over our overwhelming chip leader, Danny Tang. He's jack of hearts. Puts the pressure on everyone else behind. So makes it two million to go. That is going to pick up the antis, Randy. Kelly oh, will not be continuing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the lucky piece of confetti was for Danny, not me. Keeping it just in case. Danny with almost half the chips in play now, would you believe? Yeah. <laughs> Thirteen million in play. He's got five point five million of them. <coughs> a great spot. Mystery card for Yong, but we know he's got the Ace of Diamonds. <laughs> We're going to be seeing a lot of this for the time being. The short stacks just open jamming. 198,000 for fifth. Everyone currently guaranteed 154,000. See the pay jumps do get bigger as we move our way up the ladder. Did you collect a time bank from me? Can you translate, Randy? Uh, they said a lot of words. They said some numbers here and there. Something about ranges, payouts. <laughs> What the weather's like yeah, back home. I honestly have no idea. I'm not going to bluff my way through this one. <laughs> Last two positions. Kiat versus the Goliath stack of 5.5 .5 million of Danny Tang. How's the first one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't even look, need to look at the other card, that's oh, the funny thing. <laughs> Danny's showing his first card to Kia. How's the first one? Before even looking at himself. Can you pay his ante? <laughs> back to back titles for Rich would be quite the feat. I personally don't recall. Two short decks out of three, then we enter the third one because he's still in this tournament right now. Yeah. Would be pretty impressive, I won't lie. Back to back as well would be insane. Then Not something I've seen. Possible. It certainly is. But I, I cashed three times on one one event. All right, Danny. <laughs> he's like, I heard you, Henry. Like, yeah. come on. Give me some love. He said I wasted my time in long deck. It's clearly a shot deck player, right? I'm aware of that. But that game in both, man. What are you talking about? True. Mm -hmm. 
Potential open jam spot here for Kiat. Yeah, 50 antis. Two players stacked behind him. Knows they'll usually get through. Uh oh, a little smile. What does that mean? He's queen and two oh. kings. <laughs> okay. Potential three way affair here, in fact, very likely. Danny obviously looked at the Ace of Clubs first card. <laughs> the Ace Queen. Danny just loves making me and Richard and Jason and everyone's butt here. All in? That's good luck. <laughs> what is this? All in announced. <laughs> wow, like that. Uh, uh, even. I have a count of yet. <laughs> oh, <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Greenwood. Spicy. Oh. So a highly likely three-way all-in incoming here. What's important for Greenwood is, what is the stack of Kia Lee? He's got him covered. So if there's like some kind of double elimination, it's the guy who's got more chips that gets the higher placement. That's what's important. Lynn brought to you by bookmaker.eu. A three-way all-in in the money. The final table. The 50k short deck main. Danny looking for Broadway, an ace. It comes Queen <laughs> Jack 9. Wait, I'm dead. What a flow. I'm dead. Can we bottom pair in a flush yeah, draw? Just, just mark your hand. Oh, yeah, You're no, dead. I have a queen. Spit. Chop. No chop. No yeah, chop. No chop. No chop. No chop. Yeah. Green with Queen. one card away from ace. tripling up. Ace, ace. <laughs> Queen. I'm going to say Hulk. Queen of Hearts. Ooh. Case, Ooh. ace. Ooh. <laughs> ace of Diamonds on the <laughs> river. Danny Tang. I have more Rivering yeah, top I two. Yeah. Eliminating both Sam Greenwood. But Danny won everything. Kiat Lee. Oh, yeah. they, they're looking yeah. for a page on. Just getting confirmation yeah. on the chip counts, of course. But Greenwood did start the hand with more than Lee, so he's going to be going home <laughs> with 198,000. Kiat Lee going home with 154. And with that, as you heard Richard Young say, good for me as he gets the 100k ladder, courtesy of that ace on the river. GG's to Sam Greenwood, of course, as well as Kiat Lee. Both adding another cash to their Triton track records. But with that double elimination, down to the final four players now. Danny Tang with 60% of the chips in play with four left. Look at that stack distribution, Randy. It was pretty hard for that ace queen to scoop that flop, right? It was a <laughs> mega one for Kiat over a pair of kings for Greenwood. And you know what? Pay jumps, of course, but that does give Jason Kuhn even more points. Guaranteed top four. Indeed, that is a fantastic point, Randy. In fact, can give you the exact amount of additional points he will pick up for that ladder. Head to the Triton Poker Plus app. Check out all of the rules and how the points are collected for his fourth place finish. Guaranteed, of course. Respectful. Very well. Wow, you made it, Richard. That was worth an additional 30 points plus the multiplier. And obviously, this being a main, that could end up being worth 65, 70 points in total at a bare minimum. One more ladder for Jason, and it's pretty much locked. Marco Balat saying, I love Sam Greenwood. He's always polite and very skilled at poker. Couldn't agree more. He's in the booth. Darlene Najjar during the $200,000 buy-in. The Lux on Pay Invitational. On day two, you can check out that coverage. Once we wrap things up here and learn from one of the best. Danny with 7.7 .7 million. The chips in play. It's only 13 million in total. Yeah, he just has <laughs> so many chips and can get involved, whether pre-flop, pre whether raising or limping. 9-8. Nothing here. 
But his opponent's just kind of marginal hands in the form of middle pair and bottom pair. Vincent with a seven bottom pair, ace of spades in hand, overcard to the board as well. Let's come with a pot size bet. Yeah, just attacking. He has been attacking on the dealer button, given he knows he's got the widest ranges. Could still hit some big hands. Yeah, it has all the two pairs. It's now Richard Young, the shortest stack. Did just get that 100k ladder. Everyone guaranteed 253,000. Their efforts. I'll take it, I'm hungry. Yeah, they, are. They, they were scheduled for the next break. I mean, not this one, but... I don't need it. I don't care. I would... I'm quite whatever. Eat outside on a break. You know, Makita's always thinking, look, if I can skip dinner, it gives me more chance of jumping into the next event. Always. I'm always up for it. This man is just a machine. 190. But we'll figure things out when that time comes for now. Danny Tang. Is he doing the chip leader thing? Just raising? Expecting a lot of folds? Yes. Danny has 380. Eight antes. Second in chips is Mikita Baziakuski with 127 antes. He has 3x what Mikita has. Really feels like it's Danny's to lose. Does love the 50k buy ins, by the way. Both of his titles coming in a 50k buy in event. It's Queen for Bats in the cutoff. Might just open jam this one. But actually going to limp here. Looking for a limp drop limp jam spot I presume. Maybe hope hoping Danny will attack. Yeah, expecting Danny to potentially lean into him, obviously, as they are first and second in chips. Um, queen ten nine. Top pair, top kicker. Bats. Danny with that eight of spades. Could certainly have a little jack behind that. Could be a jack. Could be a seven. Given a check back, I think it's safe to say Jack X is out. card. Gonna check for a second time. Now oh, straight on board. A really interesting card as players might try to push their opponent off of a chop. Let's say that both of them are pretty likely still to hold the King X, so if they opt to try and represent it, would be pretty credible. Forty-four runners in this one, down to the final four as Bats does come firing the four-time champ. Hundred into one hundred and twenty gets the job done. Well, safe to say he blew, blew his opponent off a chop there. Nicely done. Bats now finds himself with a little bit of a cushion between Jason Kuhn and Richard Young. Fun being here. Huh? Another final table for you. Yeah. You kick him butt. Yeah. <laughs> Talking of 
final tables, Richard Young. Over on the Triton Poker Plus app. I need to finish above a Makita. To do what? If I bust and then Makita wins. I mean, you're fighting for the top of the mountain, right? I'm fighting for top five. Oh, you can get top five still? Well, I'm in top five right now. Cool. It's just Makita's like up my ass. <laughs> you know? This is Richard Young's 15th final table. Do, do you get anything for top five on the leaderboard? Because that's so apparently what's I important for Danny Tang right now. Just like a round of applause. I guess so. Okay. Bragging rights. I know between you and Chewie, who is the leader yeah. now? You and Chewie. Uh, me now. Me, okay. yeah. yeah. Uh, that's right, Jason <laughs> is currently in the lead. Guaranteed fourth here. It's got to be a sizable one as well. I feel like Stevie now needs to win event number 17. Not saying it's over and done with, but Jason just coming in clutch. Taking down the main. Guaranteed fourth here. Bats. Couple of queens. Under the gun. Second in chips. 77k ladder. Between fourth and third. Start things off with the limp. Jason gets to see a free flop. Yep, playing 85 anties back. And well, free flop it is. Top two for Jason. Bats with the overpair and the gut shot. Yeah, but in this situation, Bats actually still the favorite 51% equity. Of course, could counterfeit, hit a jack, hit a queen. Running diamonds. Running diamonds is becoming... More of a real thing with the six of diamonds dropping off. Even though he's currently behind, still see that 50% equity. And you can see that Jacob and Co. Triumph piece as well. Do you, Does anyone really need two of those? One for each wrist? Can he borrow it to me? I'll look after it. You go and ask, okay? You let me know how that goes. All Two right. queens. Jason looking for some value as well as a bit of protection here. In case you didn't get, get a good look last time. One more. The three anti bet here. Half the pot. Cool. Bats was maybe thinking of trying to get into a bluff. It'd be hard to represent a, a big hand right now, given the action and texture. 10-9 is good. Feels like another one of those where Jason's just going to be happy to take his showdown. Yes, Jason always worried about like aces up now with an um, ace of diamond that would have checked call turn. Queen's no good for Bats. Jason closing the gap up to 1.9 million now. Two, six, nine, eleven. So Randy 11. heading into the first scheduled break of this final table. That's how things stand. Chip counts brought to you by Poker Steak. Small blind anti 25k, button anti 50k. Danny Tang with, I mean, how many <laughs> chips is this? 311 antis. Close to 65, 70% of the chips in play. Bats in second with 100. Jason Kuhn in third with 75. And then a bit of a drop off to our 25K champion yesterday, Richard Young, 
taking down the first short deck event of the series. As we welcome you back to the break desk. Randy Lou alongside myself, Henry Kilbane. Uh, Randy, obviously, Michael Watson, first elimination, stone bubble, kings into aces, just unavoidable. Yeah, you know, it's the top top hand in uh, short deck and the second top hand. They're going to clash. Lots of chips went in. He was severely disappointed, and then we had that big collision with the double KO. Um, Danny Tang just getting there, face queen against two kings and ace nine suited on that. Pretty crazy flop out there. So that does bring us to our final four competitors. Massive chip lead. Richard Young sitting on 52 antes. Big pay jumps now with final four. Well, talking of pay jumps, Richard Young happy to get that 100k ladder with that double elimination. Don't go too far. Quick 10 minute break. When we come back, we'll be playing down to a champion in the short deck main event. See you guys very shortly. GG Poker. It's the best poker The biggest song. poker song. This is a crazy. No way! Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation from pre-flop to river, we've got it all. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players.
difference from Hold'em in the sense that every hand you have to put in the ante <coughs> in short deck. It's not like you can you pass through the blinds and then right. wait an orbit. Oh boy. It's 525. Bads with the ace queen. This is going to be it, Randy. So ace queen definitely can give the king jack value, but a couple things are coming to mind. Whether preserving Kiat Lee into this tournament give him more opportunities to chip up as everyone just kind of handcuff. Also, just calling here, maybe <laughs> leaving the 50k back as everyone will be super handcuffed on the next hand. Good luck. <laughs> and maybe another opportunity to raise and take preflop, giving one ante from each person would add quite, add up quite a bit. So call we go, 50k back. This top pair versus middle pair. Nice spot. Okay, queen seven. That's not happy. Yeah, that's not, he's not happy with that. In it goes. King Jack. Cat mm -hmm. Lee, 70% favorite to double up here. 12 Four caches, 4.6 million in Triton earnings. Came sixth in that 200k Lux on Invitational for his career best that. score of a million. 30,000 as he turns two jack. pair. I like it. <laughs> it's That's not a good two pair. <laughs> Seven. Four more outs. Ace, queen, or a 10 needed. Broadway. Doesn't come, and with that, yeah, Cat Lee doubling up, Randy, and all of a sudden, we've got some insane ICM pressure now, as there is a massive cluster between fourth and seventh. Jason, really on one point, just the yeah. years of experience of playing short deck was there at the start, mm -hmm. the inception yeah. of the game back in the Macau days. I, I wouldn't even want to hazard a guess, Randy, as to how many hours and hours of experience he has under his belt as our chip leader. Danny looking down at a couple of aces. Does he go for the limp trap here, Randy? Well, he's thinking about it. He also knows if he raises, not all in right now, it one third. might also be perceived as strength. Does come in with a 130. Small enough where people might think they've got some fold Yay. equity. Ace Jack in the muck doesn't take the bait. But Watson's got two kings, and he's going to think the chip leader is just up to no good. How can he ever lay down two kings right now? Oh, what a disgusting spot. J mind you, Kiat Lee just doubled. So yeah. he knows there's a waiting game down there at the bottom. Watson's in for three bullets, I believe. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. Kings against aces as he does move all in, and Danny, of course, gonna snap call with the aces. Came in third in chips to this final table. Yeah, you can hear Watson's frustrated, muttering to himself about these two aces. What the fuck? What do you mean? Brought to you by bookmaker.eu. Oh. If Danny Tang oh, yeah. oh, can yeah, hold here, it will be the overwhelming oh. chip leader in the money. <laughs> If Sir Watts can find a king. Oh, wow, well, it's looking incredibly bleak on the ace jack six board. He's a queen or a ten for a gut shot sweat. Let's find the king. <laughs> One outer. The running kings was something we didn't mention. Okay. As the nine of diamonds completes the run out, and Michael Watson is our bubble boy. No, it, it's a, Kings it's a against problem, aces, it's Randy. Median, but it might be below Nothing. Top yeah. three is very likely. Is in a sense that Stevie no, has to like so. you know <laughs> win. Probably win the twenty k. No, I mean, he has to win. He has to win, right? Yeah, but he's so fired a bunch <laughs> of bullets in the last two tournaments. I'm in for one in both of them, and uh, I didn't get to play this one. I got I think if he wins this, like, and I get fifth or something, he wins. There we go. Yeah. Weird. It's a weird spot. It's yeah. yeah. Very weird spot. And it's always prestigious bragging rights, but 200K on the line. So Jason's got a kind of a funny scenario on where he's got some kind of bubble situation where he's trying to get place as high as possible. Might not want to be too crazy <laughs> with six remaining. <laughs> Jason's 
person on the button. King Queen. Talking to Stephen oh, Chidwick. Yeah. Just quickly, over in the 20k. Things not going great. Currently 11th. Sorry, now 12th in chips of the 12 players over there as we head to the ace, queen, ten board. Bats with top pair. Jason with middle pair and a gut shot. Bats wants to proceed here. Top pair, no kicker. <laughs> Just shy of third pot. By betting the flop, it leaves him uncapped. You know, if he was holding some kind of stronghold, he wouldn't be checking this to Jason position. Jason, though, mandatory call here with pair of queens inside straight draw. And he just hit it. Trip queens on the turn. Jason. In position against the under the gun open. Yeah, and clearly a disastrous card for Makita in a sense as opponent, likely to improve. But also, you know, yeah, I don't know, it's just bad, right? Like, it's a raised pot. You can definitely see, like, Broadway type hands defending. The six. Yeah, the kicker. Give it a raise pot. I wouldn't put like little aces in Jason's range pre flop, too. Anyways, looks like Jason is going to cut out some chips, knowing that King Queen is usually the best hand. And welcome back to the break desk here. Ali Najad alongside Henry Kilbane. In the money, in the 50K short deck main event right now, four of six players who can make that claim still remaining, and of course, the massive chip leader, Danny Tang. Looking to close in on his second title so far here at this series. The top prize, 750,000, 253 on tap for fourth, and it really has been a bit of the Danny Tang show, hasn't it? It has indeed. I mean, he's said that 50Ks are his tournaments, both of his titles coming in 50Ks. Uh, and yeah, clashing straight away. He's eliminated everyone at the table so far. Aces against Kings. Watson came in third in chips, out on the stone bubble. And then his ace queen, cracking the Kings of Greenwood and holding against the ace nine of Cantley for a double elimination in one hand. So yeah, I mean, what, 70% of the chips in play? Um, looking for his third title and to join a very exclusive club with Phil Ivey and Wyke and Young. Three of our four players that remain here all have titles thus far in this series. Richard Young coming fresh off of that 25K short deck. Of course, Jason Kuhn, two titles already and a second in the PLO. What a storyline he has got on his hands in terms of the POY. Batsukuski, short deck prolific player obviously across multiple disciplines but just a couple of caches under his belt so far made it count though obviously with the 1.2 million yeah and if you look at his results over the last like three stops quite a few crossbars in as well in terms of coming close to another title there was always that conversation when him and jason had four apiece um, so, yeah, kind of looking to narrow that gap a little bit as well. Yeah, it's been a bit of a breakout for Badziakuski. As mentioned, two players have already been showered in the money. Kiatli, 154000 going home with him, 198000 for Sam Greenwood. This, of course, the final day of coverage from here at the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel and Casino. And we plan on bringing you not just the finish of this one, but the 20K short deck, which is also underway elsewhere in the room as you get your first look at the final four chip counts here on the back end of the break. Any of 25K, button 50. And that look brought to you by Merit Poker, the real poker experience. You see Richard Young, a million in front of him, but 42 antis, generally the depth of stack that one expects to be ready to go pre, more so than all others. But yeah. Richard has also shown a bit of a propensity to kind of uh, especially as I think back to the heads-up grind yesterday on route to the title against Chris Brewer, turned short deck into a, a smaller ball affair. 
He really has, and you know, seven-handed, he made a bit of a tight fold from early position with Queens. He was kind of in a bit of a cluster. Uh, Ketley was the immediate short stack. And yeah, I mean, he's just, he's laddered his way up to fourth. Really knows how to nurse that short stack. His 15th Triton final table this is. 15. It's just incredible to think about. His ninth short deck FT. Yeah. That's right, because I remember just yesterday during the interview, I told him it was his eighth. Second on Malaysia's all-time money list, of course. Mm -hmm. Guaranteed take at it least. For. Sorry. No, 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 it's okay. Raise and take it for the aces of Makita. Just was going to say guaranteed. 253,000. The red cap still being rocked. You think he's superstitious? I think a lot of the Eastern poker players gamblers, just the gambling environment. There's a lot of superstitions involved, right? Not always overt. Sometimes it's just kept to oneself, not openly discussed. But whatever he's doing, it is working. And right now the king-queen offsuit works for him as he limps under the gun and Tang wakes up with two kings on the button. Young obviously aware that Danny's going to be trying to push him around. Open jam. And he does lay it down wisely. Not the hand to dig in with. It's kind of the Sean Winter of the short deck. So I should say Sean Winter <laughs> is the No Limit Hold'em version of Richard Young. Like that better. Feels like Danny Tang's to lose, although he's got some tough competition. 314 antis, second in chips, Makita with just 104, so a 3x lead. Consider the second in chips. If Makita does double through Danny, they're right neck and neck. That's a great point. At the top. Yeah, so. that is a great point. And you know that short deck is one of those games that lends itself very much toward those sorts of pre flop collisions. Not with this sort of kit. However, jack nine off for Danny. Danny coming with the complete 150K out there. Both players with a piece. Eight high, or ace high rather. Board, gut shot in the desert, to go huh? with bottom pair for Richard. I'm gonna play like 25k plus. Now Danny's oh, nice. When I can. Pick up an There's open ender. Yeah, 25k plus, but when Still I can. no betting. I might not be able to Baby's play. Baby's coming, huh? Yeah. So I might not be able to play everything. But we'll get in there for the big one. Check. Full check down. As Danny will collect that one. Baby's coming. Tang, as you mentioned. A couple of titles, 16 caches, 6.2 million to million dollar buy earned. The winner. It's been mm -hmm. a while. Of course, so we finally get to play million career. dollar buy. Yeah, right. In December. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Confirm. a bit of a weird spot for Jason and Bats with Richard so short. A little bit of a waiting game until Young either doubles up or is eliminated. You heard the exchange there between Jason and Makita, by the way, Henry. Pretty one. We finally yeah, get to play a million though. dollar buy-in. Mm. Just when you thought 50K was big. How many runners do you reckon they'll get? If I were to just say a number without re-entries, probably like 33 or something. There'll be no re-entries? I doubt it. I think it'll be a freeze-out. Okay. So the structure's going to be sense. super mega slow. Super mega slow. Makes yeah. a lot of sense to do a freeze out for one million. Bucks. Yeah, I think so. Nobody gonna care, like, you know, extra million just for rebuy. Yeah. Just in the bag. No rebuy or rebuy. No rebuy, I don't think. Any idea about this million dollar buying event? I've heard some whispers about it. Same. Oh, yeah. Presume it's gonna be happening <coughs> under our watch, not something beyond our borders. Is it uh, on win? Yeah. Yeah. One drop. Mm-hmm. December, I think. Oh. 
Come, you can stay at my house. I, I got chance because I'm waiting my lawyer to... Now I already send the... My lawyer send everything to the embassy, waiting for interview. Okay. So apparently it's going to be a one-drop event. I believe that's Guy La Liberté of Cirque du Soleil's charity. The first of those one-drop million-dollar buy-ins. One by Antonio Esfandiari. Another one won by Justin Bonomo. Dan Coleman yeah. coming to mind. There was a 100K version of it that took place. I want to say that's the one Bonomo won. Maybe. I don't know. I wasn't sure. Hold on. Jax. The Jam. Richard wants to make this his stand. It's the immediate short stack. Well, he already put a king-queen into the muck once before and does it yet again as Kuhn wins as well. And it was indeed a million-dollar buy-in. The version the Bonomo one? that Bonomo won 10 back million? in 2018. 10 mil, indeed. You know, they say nobody remembers who finished second. Any guesses? The second and third both play Tritons. Uh, Dan Smith? Third. And... Non-American. Vogelsang? You're in the right country. Okay. Fedor? Yes, sir. Fedor Holes. That was pretty well done, by the way. I Thank know the you. roster of people that are available to play million dollar buy ins tends to be rather narrow, but he nailed it. Meanwhile, bats. The concerns for him at this point, Henry, are just that notion that Richard has 37 antis. There is an available pay jump that isn't an altogether negligible $77,000. 200. Perhaps by virtue of some patience, so looking to make sure his tactics are tidy. That's exercising the time extension. And then opening 4X. Yeah, I'll see the major concern here for Bads is he does have Danny Tang behind. All in. <laughs> who gets to do this? Correct. Oh. I shouldn't do this to myself. Uh, why? Why? Why have done it? I mean, yeah. I well, might just just jam this hand. No. I just. Kings? King, king. It's okay. I have no overcap. It's obviously a byproduct mm. of Bads being second. An overwhelming margin. Be a disaster to go out in fourth. But Ali, 69% of the equity, about as good as it can get in short deck. Five million chip pot. Mm. And Bads. Hard one to win, Dan. Yeah, very hard. Looking one to win. great. Drop this king. Hearts are covered. Dead. Dead. Yes. Dead. Courtesy of the ace. How much is it? 1.6. Mads didn't want to play that pot for that much, Henry, but Danny didn't give him a choice. 2 .2. Just ran into top of range. But he had to have been wary of the idea that Two. it wasn't lost on Bads as the opener that that was going to happen with some frequency. And as such... He should be ready for it and higher up in his range. Yeah, I mean, just the equities run so close and you just don't like inducing as much with ICM in short deck compared to Holden where obviously you're just thrilled to induce yeah, with one, hands one, like queens, ace-king, kings, aces. Yeah. But just as you said, 
you know, bad stubbles through Tang, all of a sudden it's tied at the top, and that is exactly what's happened here. A massive drop off to Jason on just 70 antis. Richard Young on 35, Bads on 201, and mm. Danny Tang on 222. A lot quieter out there, by the way. It's a bit of a a setup for such things right now, with four remaining, obviously. A multitude of storylines. Makita looking to narrow the gap between himself and the breakout by Jason Kuhn in terms of total titles won. Equilibrium there, though. But I, yeah. POY for Jason. Three titled festival. <laughs> I'm fairly sure. Back to back for Young, even. Two yeah. titles on the festival for Danny. Go on. I want to say Stevie needs to win the 20K now with these points here. Now, that Jason has got. Earlier in the day, before all of the math had been done, first would ice it for Jason. Second, apparently, would as well bar a Stevie win in the 20k and multiple entries as well Not by account, Stevie please. for the extra points associated with that which is kind really of as cool. I think about it I know. an interesting granted it's a great business decision but it is an interesting way to gain extra points beyond just regging uh, on time no. it's like well, hey shower off a bunch of bullets no, eight, pick up some extra points 735 eight, Especially in like a 20k, which is the lower end of the binds available at Triton. Yeah. Jason, going to give Richard a spin here as he jams over the top and dominates. We see one of Richard's immediate outs busy and bats his hand. Two sixes left. Unnecessary. Flush and straight possibilities. Also available for Young. And Finish. now those hopes yeah, shop. Okay. are dashed. Jack Could receive an ace queen yeah. jack board. Queen 10. Queen 10. Wait, no. Yeah, queen 10. No. GG. And that's it. Okay, GG's Richard. issued yeah. to Triton co founder Richard Young, who will not be picking up back to back titles. But obviously, continuing to assert himself as one of the more dominant figures in the short deck streets in terms of his resume. Never misses one, does he? Really doesn't. 15th yeah, final one, table in his Triton career. Ninth short deck final table. I mean, that's got to be up there as a record, Ali. Fourth place will be good for 253,000 as we say goodbye to Richard Young. Solid performance, as per usual, in the short deck streets from Richard, and he leaves behind the following three. As you get a look at the chip counts, brought to you by our title sponsor, GG Poker, and then the remaining prize pool, brought to you by Poker Stake. Of the 2.2 million, the lion's share of it still seeks a home, 330K. The lockup and a big jump of 185,000 between third and second. Podium for all three. Mm -hmm. Three of, I mean, the true legends of the Triton Super High Roller Series. Kuhn with seven titles, Bads with four, Danny with two. Just putting it out there hypothetically, Jason wins the short deck main. What do you do with two Jacob and Company Triton collaboration type is is it just like one on each wrist or i mean the double wrist one not until you get to three do i think you really face an issue maybe you wear one around a necklace <laughs> an anklet maybe you attach one to your wall as like a clock I mean, it's a little bit small for that but i'm just trying to get creative not a lot of creativity required for the time being on the flop, but on the turn, suddenly a four-liner and a spade draw for Danny's pair of nines. Jason with the ace-jack always had the best of it.
Really fun one here, given Makita doubling through Danny before the elimination of Yong. Obviously, Jason chipping up the holding with the ace queen. Now it really is a case of may the best man win. Look at this, Jason. Coming with the check call. With the ace jack, four liner on board. And he's gonna win at showdown. Unless Danny can bluff him off this ace jack. Yeah, he's gotta get himself to that showdown first, doesn't he? be a bit of a three-way battle here. Jason, shortest stack with 110 antis. By no means down and out. In fact, incredibly deep. See that 20k running in the background. Taking a look at the Triton Poker Plus app. 20 Thank runners in that. Bugging you for player of the year points. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure if we go, let's say third, second, I'm not sure what the difference could be. I don't know. I mean, obviously it doesn't mean, well, it, it means something, but no doubt. yeah. And actually I could break into top three as well if I win, I think. There, there's a chance. So I don't know. Yeah. But And it'd be what, number three? Huh? Number oh. three it'd be, right? If you won, third title? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Bats limps to Queens as Jason casually involved in a conversation regarding the oversight on our part in terms of non-1-2 runners in that Ivan Leal Player of the Year award race where Danny is suggesting that a win here would put him in to the top three. Kuhn and puts his focus Back on the task at hand with a raise to 300. Feels like an all you can eat uh, situation. Be incredibly impressed if Bats just comes with the limp call. Avoiding this setup, especially three-handed. I mean, Queens, so strong. Wow. Bravo. Found the number. 250,000 deployed by Bads, who has Jason covered. And doesn't have a lot of reasons to get away from his hand for the time being on an 899 board, which isn't supposed to be the part of the deck that Jason's interacting with as played. Makita checks with Flo. Check back from Jason there. On the flop with the overpair. The aces obviously not scared of over cards rolling off, but has given free cards to some of the gut shots and straight draws. Okay, a club's on the turn. Jason wants to go for the delayed C bet now. Doesn't. Wow, double delay now, which strikes me as even more odd than perhaps the flop check, which we can get more behind, right? What's the thought? Honestly, I just think it's him being deceptive, just in position, not too worried. Probably feels like he has Makita crushed, Makita with maybe some ace-jack, ace-queen type holding, given that it was obviously 
raised to 12 antes pre-flop. That does check. Certainly, despite the double paired board now, Jason can activate. I feel like Jason's played this one to perfection in terms of getting value from Makita. He sure has. I mean, finds Makita sitting on two queens, which are very much wondering what's going on. That's with the bluff catcher. He beating bottom of range. Some of those raggy ASEX can't get away from it. Sizable pickup for Jason, narrowing the gap up to 3.4 million. Bad's down to 4.4 now. We have got it's short, a game on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Out? How did it not come like at least a 10 or a jack or like something Forget more scary on the river? Forget who you're talking to. Huh? True. Did you forget who you're talking to? Yeah. Clash of the Titans. Special shout out, of course, to Shambhala Jewels, the official partner of the Triton Poker Series, crowning our poker champions with exquisite men's jewelry. Shambhala Jewels creates high-end designs with diamonds, precious stones, and 18 karat gold that are braided and polished by hand in Copenhagen, Denmark. And all three of these players got a Shambhala Jewels piece. The titles they have won over the last year. Danny with two now. Jason with a few of his own. I'm still just thinking <coughs> about that line taken by the two aces of Jason, not to mention the line delivered by Danny at the back end of the, the pot where he goes, how do you get that run out? I mean, eight, eight, nine, nine, you know, double paired board, but it's just, even in short deck as played, never a concern for Jason to be up against eights full or nines full as we turn our attention to round two between he and Bads, who, by the way, probably has a pretty rancid taste in his mouth after that one. I thought you were speaking about me for a moment there. No. Do you have a now. rancid taste? But yeah, queens against aces. But to be honest with you, all things considered, losing, I say, only very lightly 600k in that pot could have been a lot worse, of course. Cool. Yeah, three-handed queens into aces. Oh, my. Bads. Betting 40 with the best hand and suddenly Kuhn on the turn makes queens and nines to jump in front as he checks a second time and looks poised to take a second one away from Makita for the time being as the gap continues to narrow between he and the Belarusian. Yeah, Bad's gonna continue going for value, understandably so, 75% on the turn. Cut off the button. Of course, the range is incredibly wide in these positions. Top pair going to be good a lot of the time. Short deck. Another 300 into the middle as the three-quarter pot figure retains Jason, and now he gets counterfeited courtesy of the seven on the end. That is one way to get that. Sure is. The old suck, resuck. So many incredible moments 
throughout this series. <clears throat> Wrapping it up with 50k short deck main. Three of the Triton OGs, if you will. Sorry, guys. Bads able to river the best hand in that last pot. And I want to say, as much as we're tempted to think that every single pot is taken in stride by these guys, that there's a particularly stiff level of competition between Makita and Jason in particular, the man who he formerly shared the most decorated player honors with at four apiece before this breakout by Kuhn. As we see Tang breaking out on the button with the king-queen suited. and has him dominated as he flats and this flop favoring Danny in terms of the gutter and the hearts. Yet the ace queen has 41%. Feels like it's going to be really difficult for Jason to win this one even though he does currently have the best of it unless the turn brings like an ace. He's going to continue with his gut shot. Does not want to see a 10 of, obviously. and 25k a lead from Jason with the gutter now a four liner on board on the turn and how credibly is he is he going to be able to represent a 10 so he has a decent amount of 10x for the hijack limp calling range It's a double barrel. <laughs> this feels like one of those spots where you just flop the world and turns a brick. One card to come. barreling here in spite of the four liner the 325 obviously going to get called by Danny here who has outs but that is not among them as the board pairs but does create texture that might provide an opportunity for Danny to turn this king queen into a bluff provided that Jason gives him the opportunity be a very difficult spot for Jason. Just ace high. It'd be a tough bluff to find as well. Danny isoing pre shouldn't have many two pairs. Although it is obviously going to be a polarized iso. So maybe taking the bottom of range hands like 9 8, jack 8. Maybe some pocket pairs. Is he ever going to get Jason to fold a straight, though? Given the way the hand played out. Wouldn't fault him for just waving the white flag here, but at the same time, just got king high. Jason literally beats nothing but king-queen. Loses to everything else. 800. 
And there it is as an understandable shutdown from Jason when the turn call came in perhaps and this eight pairs on the river. Though remember, Danny was the man that did raise it up on the button. And look at those piercing eyes it's just yeah, beneath the window's yeah. cap. Yeah. Say I might lose to a bluff. Well, the only hand he beats is king queen. There's not a single Why combination. A Pretty incredible. Other than king queen, that and he that's beats. exactly what Danny has. Hmm. Well, you were just mentioning there about Bads and Jason being tied for a decent amount of time. I remember joining in Madrid of last year. They both had three. Then they both won their fourth in Madrid. Going through Bads's. Triton track record. There was a couple of times he could have leapt in front. Third in the 50K in North Cyprus, followed by a fourth in the 30K short deck, September of last year. Two final tables in Vietnam. That's where Jason claimed his fifth title. And then, of course, a second place finish for Bads here in the 75K and a fifth in the 25K. Let's talk about variance in the later stages. Jason to jump out in front by three titles. Coon with Ace King here. Issuing punishment to the limpers. Danny always going to want to play almost any combo. Once Makita open limps, provided that Danny doesn't want to raise, just given the price laid. Oh. Oh. Queen nine not going to continue, of course, as Makita does dig in and finds himself dominated. And flopping second pair against top pair. Interesting spot for Jason. 650 in the middle, SPR around three. So many straight draws out there. Might just be a big bet spot, even a potential overbet slash jam kind of situation. See short deck, equity right. denial game. There it is. All you can eat. Are you ready oh. to back me, Ali? In short deck? In short deck. Tag me in, coach. Not in this field. Uh, yeah. I don't think you would. Well, you probably wouldn't feel bad about showering off a little bit of <laughs> Ali bucks, but. No, I feel like there are more there are more fun ways we could shower off some of your money. Right. I you betting click a button that button I can't yesterday. get into Annabelle's. No, that's not Ali bucks. Oh, you want to. Oh, right. That's Henry bucks. Well, but. Go in Ali's way. Right. <laughs> The Bucks formerly known as Henry Bucks. Oh. Just let me click that button every now and then. Makes me feel alive <laughs> knowing that <laughs> we're bankrupting someone else. <laughs> Henry, I promise you, having done sports, having played poker, do not enter Sorry, the man, day trading there. streets. <laughs> Dangerous man to hang out with. King Queen 10. As Goon is the dangerous one in this altercation. Continues to get the better of Makita. For the most part. Barrel and take it. 7 8 was never a consideration for Badziakuski. Annie up to 30K now. 60K the double. It's very evident 
that it's all business for these three here compared to when we made the final table. There's a lot of you know, chattiness and table banter. I think since returning from break three-handed, maybe just a few words exchanged and understandable given what's on the line here, not just the 750K. Caught it, caught it midair. All of them looking to add a title, the legacy, the bragging rights of taking down a main event at a Triton Super High Roller Series. So much more than just money on the line here. Especially for someone like Jason who doesn't play beyond these borders any longer in terms of Triton series. So the family pot yeah. delivering a King Jack seven flop. Gut shots for both Kuhn and Bads, but for Tang, top pair and the best of what's around. Yeah, a little something for everyone. Bads looking for a, an eight as a queen would actually give Jason a better straight. Danny doesn't want to turn two pair, that's for sure. Oh. See what JK comes with. Three nut outs. So another 300,000 into the middle to take this club turn, which pairs the board. That's a wet wipe. What's a wet wipe? Jack of clubs on the turn. <laughs> That's one way of putting it. Well, I felt like to respond to you with a moistened towelette. Don't ever say Would the have word been moist weird. ever again, please. <laughs> 160K comes toward the middle from Batsyakuski. Fired on the flop. Still has equity even against hands like Trips, two pair, with that double gut shot. The only player with a club in hand. Jason ducks out, would have hit an ace, but instead it is Bad Zyakuski who has hit the flush. And that is an even less welcome card than the one before it for Danny. At Bad's with the fourth nuts, obviously flushes beat full houses in short deck for those newer to the game due to the mathematical improbability of making a flush. But still up against a 100% range. Danny can certainly have a queen or a 10 of clubs in hand. Hand like queen 10, 10 9 with a 10 of clubs. Nine. Some sort of animal noises coming from behind myself and when you check that front. Ali here. It is the end of the series. Maybe hear some war cries. They're really trying to get you Coming in this training, you know? huh? they, they just announced one hour dinner break, <laughs> just so you can join before the end of rage. Me? Don't lose hope in me yet, just buddy. Just no, but I mean, within one hour, it's likely this thing might end or at least got two heads up, so. Yeah. Makita, by the way, Checking the nine of clubs on the end there. Do you think it's a function of looking Queen to induce turn, Danny to bluff or yeah. more caution? Chippies. Yeah, I think uh, chippy, chippy, it's going into chippy. check call mode, letting Danny kind of hang himself a little bit, rhythm. given that. Uh -huh. Chippy. <laughs> <laughs> it was the ace that rolled off, of course. Bats has narrowed the gap, just 30 anties difference between himself and Danny, and he's extended the lead oh. over Jason. I'm gonna check. check. 
Queen seven. Button check back, turning into top pair here. Danny's Jack 10 suited. Middle pair, checking. Note Danny's willingness to limp the Jack 10 suited, by the way. Henry, a hand that generally likes to get additional chips into the pot. Yeah, it's interesting since going three-handed, there's been a couple of spots where I was expecting more money to go in pre. These guys just really feeling each other out at the moment, trying to remain balanced in all spots. Danny making the straight after two streets of checking. I got it. Can't get pretty Jason one. to fire. So pretty. It wouldn't have been right if they let me hold against that one. Too pretty. Just looking at that 20k, Stevie is in <laughs> for a lot of bullets. Uh-oh. I'm counting, so you get three lammers. So that's three gone, six gone, seven gone, nine gone. And he's currently on his third lammer of his third entry. Trying to rack up some points. Event number 17. Only one of the shortest stacks in the field. Just heard Makita saying they're really trying to Check. Jason get in there. It's that hour long dinner break currently ongoing. I don't think Kuhn has any designs on anything other than this final table for the time being as the three amigos take the ace nine six board. Bottom two for Bats. Check to him. Check. Yeah, I see a lot of these bottom two pairs check. just check behind in position for pot control. Just so check. difficult to play across multiple streets. Don't want to play an inflated pot. The hand is vulnerable as bottom two in short deck. Two twice. Now look at that. Danny not even entertaining the idea. Keeping him honest. Activating on the turn after declining to fire on the flop. Down Min Fu, by the way. <laughs> mm -hmm. First ever Hello. short deck tournament. First ever hand. Four way all in. Somehow wins with King Six off suit. <laughs> <laughs> so getting coaching from Tom, Daniel Forrest, Jason, boss man Paul. We knew it was going to happen. I mean, the guy is converted for life. The guy's going to leave a few people talking to themselves is what he's going to do in that 20K. If hands like King Six suited are sailing in. I think they all just agreed to, you know, minus one lammer. Blind all in. What's that like? Almost 7k in, e in equity. Meanwhile, two kings always with a good bit of equity, but not always limping. 
as we begin to see some snugger approaches given stack distributions at present, not to mention pay jumps. Jason, less than 90 innings, and that pesky ace finds its way onto this board where Makita has a gutter. But should the nine come in, he's going to have a problem given Danny's 10 8, which has been checked to. Yeah, just a nut low board for Jason, not to state the obvious, but overcard as well as you know, the raggy hands that check behind. Yeah, snap fold. It's all of them gut shots and straights, two pair. Hundred K barrel from Danny. Just trying to win it here. Not going to happen. North of half pot sizing. As he bricks the turn. Can't say the same for Bads, though, who hits the queen. Jason's kings, of course, found them up. Danny with a few options here. I'll try and just realize and potentially cooler Makita should a nine roll off. So a hand that doesn't really have any showdown. Potentially wants to double barrel and rep that straight. 600. Cool. That's a spicy over bet. Polarity always tethered to this kit. Why so much? That's the question on Makita's mind here. Well, he wants to put himself in a spot to potentially play for it all. That's what he's trying to say to Bats. Oh. Bats makes the call. Now Danny hits a 10. On the turn, or sorry, on the river. Let's not overlook Bad's making the call. Obviously, he did have the draw to the nine, he thought, with the queen. But it's still a massive number to call. Now Danny suddenly finds himself with almost 1.6 in the middle, courtesy of his turn decisions. Hmm. Queen. Queen? With the eight, Danny. <laughs> wow, he looks a bit shell shocked. <laughs> get him to call you down with Queen A, get me to fold pocket kings on the flop. I don't think I've ever seen that reaction from Danny before. He genuinely looks. Folded kings in the flop. Surprise of that one. I think he's <laughs> almost offended. <laughs> Like, really? Yeah. Really, man? That's one of those where I nod my head, put it in the back of my mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then it really try to get gangster on somebody <laughs> later on in the session. They make the list. Yeah. Yeah. But th those are the ones that you just don't forget for months to come, and you just wait patiently for the spot. I, I can imagine there's a few people on your list. You know how the FBI <laughs> has like a most wanted list? There's a few people that have been kind of living rent free in my head for a little while <laughs> that I'm just desperate to get my pound of flesh on. Bads. Nine suited, 4x, nine's on the button for Kuhn. Bats has actually taken the chip lead now after scooping that 1.5 million chip pot against Danny. Just a lone pair of queens. Kuhn's defense yields one over card and the same gutter that Bads has here. That's a fun flop. 
for these two hands. That's in theory. Should be somewhat concerned of this board. As range does want to play passively. 1086 rainbow. Jason certainly with a nut and range advantage on this ball texture. Bad's of course retaining the overpair advantage. A little sprinkle, one third. 175 specifically. will proceed. Now picks up a king high straight draw as both players are open-ended. 860 in the middle, 2.2 back. It's a tough one for Jason. Does have two very key cards in hand, of course. Potentially get check jammed on. Some maybe Jack-10 type holdings. It's got a knuckle. Oh, no. Queen on the end. After a round of checks, Batsyakuski with the king high straight. Jason, just the queen high. That's a disgusting run out for Jason. Bads really shouldn't have much ace-king. It's always going to be this, this being the setup. 860 in the middle. I guess Bads against one-third can have ace-king a decent amount of the time, but still feels like such an unlikely spot for Jason to get away from. Remember, Bad's the man who raised pre-flop to 240. Then check called the 175. It goes check, check on the turn. Oh no. What's what? going to be made yeah, of this? You can't even have ace king. You literally can't have it. I mean, you check call 175 there with ace king? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, what in the world is this? Jason blocks two nines, and card removal in short deck is a much bigger deal because there are. I guess you just quartered me, man. 1.9. This is, what is this play? I just don't understand. I'm pretty sure you're only blocked with range. Okay. This is one of those stupid spots where. I just have a straight, and <coughs> I have a straight twice, so I unblock all your blocks, but you're just being greedy. Yeah, you're just being greedy, I think. Uh, well, what is this? Can't blame Jason for being confused as he goes to multiple time I mean, banks. Literally, it would be insane to fold that pocket nine, so like I was just have straights in my hand. <laughs> Music to Makita's ears. Ah, oh my god. Now the bet's 1.9, yeah? This is like insane. It really is. I guess you're saying you have king nine suited? Let me see if I... Wow. That's how you become a seven-time champ, Ali. But will he act on oh, that intuition. Oh. What a read. Jason. Makita, 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 my man. My man, Makita. My man, Makita, putting me in the blender. Oh my god.
This is crazy. Man. I mean, I'm just never, ever, ever, ever supposed to fold. You're going to crush me here whenever I fold. Find a bluff, I guess. What is it, pocket kings, maybe? Maybe you love kings? Probably not, right? Yeah, I this is really wild. 175 call, okay, so. 240 call. Mm, this is the craziest hand of all time, actually. It's a walk through Jason's mind for the time being. But if he clicks call, it'll be a walk among the tombstones. As he'll be out in third. A look there at Makita's girlfriend watching on. I don't even care, man. Let's go. What an incredible fold, Jason Kuhn. An impossible fold, you could say, Ali. I'm speechless. I mean, you just leaped up out of your chair in the booth. I mean, you want to talk about the things that separate good from great. I know it seems like we just pile the praise on from in here with maybe gratuitous regularity, but it is because we bear witness to such things at these Triton Super High Rollers with alarming frequency and often in association with Jason Kuhn, it must be said. And you begin to recognize that it is no accident that that man has the accolades that he does. It really was an impossible fold, and yet he found it. Giving us an insight into his thought process as well. Just saying that he unblocks all the bluffs, but Makita's just getting greedy. Then oh. reading him for exactly king nine suited, given that he should never have ace king, given that there was money going in on the so flop. How does it make you feel as well? In Baz's shoes, in a spot where you should have all of Jason's chips, he should be out in third, and instead he's still got two million after making a fold like that. See, I might have to really turn to him and be like, you folded two nines? <laughs> Try and get in his head. I mean, feels like a free roll <laughs> in that spot. Obviously not in like a malicious manner, but just kind of a sporting make him wonder, make him chew on it. You not got the whole delay time. before anybody knows. Mike, what a pot that was. I'm going to be chewing on that one on the flight home tomorrow. That was in a very, very impressive fold. One of the folds of the series so far, especially in short deck. Hold well on, Jason. Still in with a chance to take this down. What do you spy over there? Only whenever you're standing up with the iPad in hand, I kind of feel like... Uh, <laughs> I mean, he's truly been anointed a god of sorts by the chat. And certainly by us here in the booth as well. Talk of him being the GOAT. Ji Ho Cho saying one of the best all time folds in short deck. Is he the best poker player on the planet? I can't tell if it's typos. People trying to say good fold or if indeed they mean God fold. <laughs> Unclear as the Queen Jack 8 board 
is very clear. The nuts for Danny Tang, far from for Jason. Bats with those hands back to back against Tang and Jason. It's taken the chip lead. <laughs> what was that? I know we're not generally supposed to bleed into multiple successive pots dwelling upon that which is already in the history books. No. But the history books is certainly where that particular exchange is going to be found in terms of the short deck library. Yeah. A fantastic moment. I think a lot of us are out in third. If not all of us. We talk so often about winning flips and making huge bluffs, big hero calls. We often overlook the massive folds part of what makes a fantastic world-class elite poker player. Top two for Danny. As we Calm ourselves down in the booth. Ali, take a seat. You're worrying me. <laughs> I just um, I don't know that I'm ready to do that yet. You're like a concerned parent. I <laughs> just <laughs> top two for Danny, betting 130 here up against the gut shot. One that Jason is going to peel with as the field whittles down to heads up here with 440 in the middle. Eight pairs, Jason, on this turn in the limp pot pre. Was producer James here? for that particular hand. I mean, the calmness with which he continues to be seated at his desk. Some really? hockey going on. It just... <laughs> Some cycling. Ste stepping in to advise third nuts, it's an easy fold. James, he's like one of those chat pros. In fact, he is one of the people in the chat yeah. saying easy fold. Yeah. Classic James Dempsey. Meanwhile... Tang firing his second barrel of 280,000. He's, by the way, got something on his mind well removed from the moment. That, of course, being the 600K call on the turn by Batsy Akuski's Queen 8. <laughs> I've never seen that reaction from Daddy before. <laughs> <laughs> he really. Yeah. This is the classic, like, really, mate? Really? You know what it is? It's like you're four to five days past the expiration date on the milk. You really want cereal. You open up the carton. You give it a sniff. You think everything's okay. But then you pour it out and there's a mild curdle. Oh, and you're like, damn it. Why? That was the look on Danny's face. I'm putting that exact face right now. Why? Because you want cereal. You got to check. No gamble, no future. <laughs> Two nines for bats. Sixes for Danny, which turn into bottom set here. Two over cards to those nines. Could see bats giving it a little tickle, maybe trying to take it. Instead, just decides to check. It's cautious 
procedures continue to be the order of the day for the most part. Five K bet. This one's over. Cause we're grinding. Wouldn't have it any other way. Last yeah, night they really trip, are. gotta work hard. I'm gonna take four whites from you. Gotta keep my stack deep. Jason just helping himself to bounce his stack. You ever been to the butcher, Henry? They put the meat into that machine with the handle. I believe it's called. Then they, yeah, yeah. Then the meat spaghetti comes out. That, yeah, yeah that. What that's what it? we're watching. <laughs> the meat grinder. There it is. More limpiness. Tang turns into trip queens, uneventful for Jason's 6 7. Nothing to write home about Jason on that one. Yeah, bet 40. Take it down. I like that it's gotten a bit intense out there. It's a very jovial affair. A lot of lightheartedness towards the end of the trip, but these guys know what's up. Danny looking to join a very exclusive club alongside Waikin Young and Phil Ivey as a three-time Triton champ. Makita looking to get back into the conversation after Jason separated the gap at the top by three titles. Tool, which of course were picked up Get out of the way. Let these gentlemen meet each other up. right here in this one. One in the 20K earlier on in the festival, and of course, that main event win Good for <laughs> 2.4 million. Now, then, another heads up affair this time, Tang and Bads. Danny knuckling the paired board. That's not interacting. You ever called your shot like it, like Jason has before, Ali? Just kind of going into a session, say to your friend, going to clean up today. Yeah, it's never gone well. <laughs> I feel like it's better to walk in and be like, I'm going to dust off six racks tonight. And then if you don't call your shot properly, you don't have to feel bad about it. You are a weird egg. Yeah. <laughs> no arguments. <laughs> Meanwhile, that's his little 40K in position on this flop. Didn't do enough to shed Danny's A6 as he pairs the turn and it goes check, check. Now a king, changing nothing. That's still with air. Danny happy to try and get this one to showdown. Given the opportunity as Makita waves the white flag. And Danny letting him know that ace high wasn't going to be rolled over. Yeah. Courtesy of a 40K button bet. Look how tight it is at the top, by the way. I mean, Up to you guys. I'm down to keep playing. Whatever. It really doesn't get much tighter than that. Just 
three antis in it, I believe. Or five. Five point seven six to five point six roughly as Bats and Tang. Looming over the mighty Jason Kuhn as it stands. Players will be headed to a break, which means of course we are headed back to the desk here in North Cyprus. Annie's headed up to thirty thousand, and it should be a heads up affair right now. Henry, don't need to tell you why. Yeah, I mean that's one of those ones where it's very easy to be concerned about, you know, what are the viewers going to think of me? What's the poker community going to think of me? Whenever you are on a big final table with a hand like that, where the downside is, you know, getting showered and everyone calling you an idiot. But look, having just the self-belief to make that fold, immediately reverse engineering it in his head. We got to glimpse into Jason Kuhn's thought process as well and then yeah. eventually just kind of throwing the cards it's like what am i even thinking about you know yeah i mean he he had a moment of intuition obviously it conflicted with all of the logic of the hand as played yeah. for him and yet he trusted it and clearly those are the forks in the road that one needs to choose wisely upon as jason so often does so then 50k short deck main event still looking for a champ and once we do crown that champ of course we'll take you to the 20k last event of this particular series. Henry and I are going to step aside just a few minutes on the break, and then we'll be back with more coverage. And as we go to that break, take a look at yet another GTO Wizard quiz. The following quiz is brought to you by GTO Wizard. You open pocket fives from early position and face a three bet from the big blind. You're 25 big blinds deep. Do you fold, call, or shove? Do you know the right answer? Take your chance to win a one-month premium GTO Wizard subscription. Scan the QR code or go to gtowizard.com slash triton. We give away five subscriptions every day. Master poker and learn how to crush the competition with GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. This is a crazy. No way!
Yeah, running out of time. 25 antis right now of King Jack offsuit. He knows he needs to kind of pick up a little bit of chips just to hang in there. Yeah, of course, a massive difference from Hold'em in the sense that every hand you have to put in the ante <coughs> in short deck. It's not like you can you pass through the blinds and then first. wait an orbit. Oh boy. It's 525. Bats with the ace queen. This going to be it, Randy. So ace queen definitely can give the king jack value, but a couple things are coming to mind. Whether preserving Kiat Lee into this tournament give him more opportunities to chip up as everyone just kind of handcuffed. Also, just calling here, <coughs> maybe leaving the 50k back as everyone be super handcuffed on the next hand. Good luck. And maybe another opportunity to raise and take preflop, given one ante from each person would add quite, add up quite a bit. So call we go, 50k back. This top pair versus middle pair. Nice spot. Okay, queen seven. That's not happy. Yeah, that's not, he's not happy with that. In it goes. King Jack. Cat mm -hmm. Lee, 70% favorite to double up here. 12 Some caches, 4.6 million in Triton earnings. Came sixth in that 200k Lux on Invitational for his career best score of a million. 30,000 as he turns two jack. pair. I like it. <laughs> Bad it's not a good two that. pair. <laughs> Four more outs. Ace, queen, or a 10 needed. Broadway. Doesn't come, and with that, Cat yeah, Lee doubling up, Randy, and all of a sudden, we've got some insane ICM pressure now, as there is a massive cluster between fourth and seventh. Jason, really on one point, just the years of experience of playing short deck was there at the start, the inception of the game back in the Macau days. I, I wouldn't even want to hazard a guess, Randy, as to how many hours and hours of experience he has under his belt as our chip leader. Danny looking down at a couple of aces. Does he go for the limp trap here, Randy? Well, he's thinking about it. He also knows if he raises, not all in right now, it one third. might also be perceived as strength. Does come in with a 130. Small enough where people might think they've got some fold yeah. equity. Ace Jack in the muck doesn't take the bait. But Watson's got two kings, and he's going to think the chip leader is just up to no good. How can he ever lay down two kings right now? Oh, what a disgusting spot. J mind you, Kiat Lee just doubled. So yeah. he knows there's a waiting game down there at the bottom. Watson's in for three bullets, I believe. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. Kings against aces as he does move all in, and Danny, of course, going to snap call with the aces. Came in third in chips to this final table. Yeah, you can hear Watson's frustrated, muttering to himself about these two aces. What the fuck? What do you mean? Brought to you by bookmaker.eu. Oh. If Danny Tang oh, yeah. oh, can yeah, hold here, it will be the yeah. overwhelming oh. chip leader in the money. <laughs> If Sir Watts can find the king. Oh, wow, it's looking incredibly bleak on the ace jack six board. He's a queen or a ten for a gut shot sweat. He does find the king. <laughs> One outer. The running kings were something we didn't mention. As the Nine of Diamonds completes the run out, and Michael Watson is our bubble boy. No, it, it's a, Kings it's against above, aces, it's above Randy. Median, but it might be below Nothing it's possible. It certainly is. But I, I cashed three times on one one event. All right, Danny. <laughs> He's like, I heard you, Henry. Like, yeah. come on, give me some love. He said I wasted my time in long deck. It's clearly a short deck player, right? I'm aware of that. But that game in both, man. What are you talking about? True. Potential open jam spot here for Kiat. Yeah, 50 antis. Two players back behind him. Knows they'll usually get through. 
Uh oh, a little smile. What does that mean? He's queen and two oh. kings. Okay. Potential three way affair here. In fact, very likely. Danny obviously looked at the Ace of Clubs first card. <laughs> the Ace Queen. Danny just loves making me and Richard and Jason and everyone sweat here. All in. That's good luck. <laughs> what is this? All in announced. <laughs> wow, like that. Uh, uh, even. Could I have a count of Piet's? <laughs> wow. wow, Greenwood. Spicy. Yeah. So a highly likely three-way all-in incoming here. What's important for Greenwood is, what is the stack of Kiali? He's got him covered. So if there's like some kind of double elimination, it's the guy who's got more chips that gets the higher placement. That's what's important. Lynn brought to you by bookmaker.eu. A three-way all-in in the money. The final table. The 50k short neck main. Danny looking for Broadway, an ace. It comes Queen <laughs> Jack nine. Wait, I'm dead. What a flop. I'm dead. Can't Queen and eight. Bottom queen. pair and a flush draw. Hey, just, just muck your hand. Oh, yeah, You're no, dead. I have a queen. Spit. Chop. No chop. No chop. No chop. No chop. No chop. No chop. Yeah. Green with one card away from ace. tripling up. Ace, ace. <laughs> Queen. I'm going to say hearts. Queen of hearts. Ooh. Case, oh. ace. Oh. Okay. Ace of diamonds on the river. Danny Tang. I have Rivering yeah, top I two. Yeah. Eliminating both Sam Greenwood. But Danny won everything. Kiat Lee. Oh, they, they're looking yeah. for a page on. Danny Just getting confirmation on the chip counts, of course. Second and third both play Tritons. Uh, Dan Smith? Third. And... Non-American. Vogelsang? You're in the right country. Okay. Fedor? Yes, sir. Fedor Holes. That was pretty well done, by the way. I know Thank the you. roster of people that are available to play million dollar buy-ins tends to be rather narrow, but he nailed it. Meanwhile, bats. The concerns for him at this point, Henry, are just that notion that Richard has 37 antis. There is an available pay jump that isn't an altogether negligible $77,000. 200. Perhaps by virtue of some patience, so looking to make sure his tactics are tidy. That's exercising the time extension, and then opening 4X. Yeah, I'll see the major concern here for Bads is he does have Danny Tang behind. All in. <laughs> gets to do this. Correct. Oh. I shouldn't do this to myself. Uh, why? Why? Why have done it? I mean, yeah. I might just, just damn this hand. No. I guess. Kings? King, king. It's okay. I have no overcap. It's obviously a byproduct mm. of Bads being second. An overwhelming margin. Be a disaster to go out in fourth, but Ali, 69% of the equity, about as good as it can get in short deck. Five million chip pot. Mm. And Bads. A hard one to win, Dan. Yeah, very hard Looking one great. Brought this king. Hearts are covered. Dead. Dead. That's it. Dead. Courtesy of the ace. How much is it? 1.6. Mads didn't want to play that pot for that much, Henry, but Danny didn't give him a choice. 2.2. Just ran into top of range, but he had to have been wary of the idea. And the 20K now with these points here. Now, that Jason has got. Earlier in the day, before all of the math had been done, First 
would ice it for Jason. Second, apparently would as well bar a Stevie win in the 20K and A warm welcome back to the break desk here. Randy Lou alongside myself, Henry Kilbane at the Merit Royal Diamond Hotel, Spa and Casino. We are three-handed in event number 16, the 50K short deck main event. And Randy, it is three of Triton's OGs. Batsy Akuski, chip leading, four titles for him. Danny Tang picking up his second title earlier on in the series. And of course, Jason Kuhn, the seven-time champ. So looking at this, all of these guys know how to win Triton events. All of them have a ton of experience in short deck events and really is anyone's game, Randy. Completely agree with you, uh, Henry. You know, it's anyone's game. Um, as you mentioned, you know, these guys have shipped titles in various events. And Jason is the short stack right now, 1.8 million chip stacked. The other two neck to neck for the chip lead at the moment. It really does come down to who's going to be able to keep their head in the game, play their very best poker as they grind this one out. We are very deep stack, although there is some eyes on Jason Kuhn as the shorty. Well, normally, Randy, coming back to this frame, we would be heads up. 99% of the time, or had any other player in the world, bar maybe a few, would have been out of the tournament in third. Before the break, pocket nines for Jason on a 10-8-6 board. Check from Bats, bet from Jason. 175 into 515, cool. Turn brought a jack, went check check. River brought a queen, giving Baziakuski the king high straight with king nine suited. Overbet jammed. Jason Kuhn just somehow found one of the best folds that I've ever seen in short deck. The chat went absolutely crazy. Ali jumped out of his seat. And we also got a glimpse into Jason's thought process as well, just like thinking it through, saying he blocks the bluffs. And that Baz was just getting greedy. Made a world-class fold. Finds himself still in the mix with 61 antis. As we throw it down to the main stage as these three duke it out for the $750,000 top prize. And of course, the coveted Triton Trophy. As well as that Jacob & Co. Triton collaboration piece. But yeah, Randy, you can check that hand out on the Triton Poker Plus app. It was an insane hand and a fold that I think a lot of people would admit that they would be out in third. Henry, what if I told you I've already witnessed that hand and was thinking world-class play? I believe you. It really was. It was just an amazing fold. Found it. There's a reason why we say Jason's one of the best in the game, especially in what short deck. From time to time, anyway? he just finds life where others find exit. Yeah, and you know, I said it before the break, we talk about hero calls we talk about winning flips to win tournaments big bluffs but we often overlook the massive folds that are needed as well to rise to the top of a tournament of the chip counts and jason although he's the shortest he's still in with a chance he's given himself a lifeline and plenty of chance of course with 46 antis we've seen the guys at the bottom come to the rise to the top no. for now though we've got some chip leader action Limp pot here, ace-996. Nine, nine, now, of course, the conclusion of this 50K main. We're going to be picking things up in the final event of the series, event number 17, the 20K short deck anti only it is. Dennis Schufering cur currently leading the final 13, 23 entries in that one so far. They're grinding. They are indeed. Late Reg finishes at the end of this level. So if Jason is eliminated in the near future, he would have time to run into that one. Stevie Chidwick obviously out there battling, looking to regain control of the Ivan Liao Player of the Year leaderboard. We'll talk more about that later on as we work our way through this three-handed affair. Bats with the gut shot and nine high diamonds reaching for chips here. Still got top pair. Although they both are neck to neck for the chip lead, they still need to be wary 
as Jason's to clear short stack. Don't want to kind of get in a big collision between these two. Yeah, of course. If you're playing a lot of small pot controlled stuff. Well, and just as we say that. I know. Danny's like, no. Going to play for chips, expecting to have the best hand. This may be a byproduct of Tang closing the action in position. Gets to make it 2-10 here and then opt to check behind on certain rivers. I think the idea here too also is that he doesn't expect Nikita to be playing 9-7, the Stone Cold Nuts. So once he raises, Makita pretty much never kind of three bets back to turn. So he can kind of set the price and, you know, react accordingly. There we go. Flush. Well, we all know just how tough it is to make flushes in short deck. That's with the fourth nuts. I'm going to check it on over to Danny. 620 in the middle. Flush. Danny going to check behind, oh. and of course, that's uh -huh. Kuski. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> this one down. <laughs> 6.1 million now, creating a bit of a buffer between himself and oh. Danny. Boys, it's been a fun couple of weeks. Mmm, Makita. He's very sneaky. No good shit. Urban Boris. Urban Bats. The sneakiness. Are you going to play all kinds of stuff this summer? You're just going to go no. there and just... 25k plus. 25k plus, you're going to go there and just light Vegas on fire. You too, Danny, huh? No, nah, I'm grinding, man. I, I am in the Colossus. In you're going to win a couple bracelets, 600, huh? 600 Colossus. Hell yeah. Maybe not. Maybe not. No, I don't know. Probably like, I don't know. Two, 5k plus, maybe? I don't know. Well, well hit me up when you get to town. Let's grab some I dinner. Will. Yeah, definitely. Same to you, Makita, obviously. Bad's more focused on the task at hand rather than dinner plans in Vegas. Yeah. Why are you saying goodbye as if like it's going to be me and him heads up now? <laughs> no, I don't believe I don't believe that, but it's you never know. It's short deck, you know. 240. I plan on getting some rest. After I bust. Well, we were just talking about first and second not colliding. Now Danny approaches this facing the 6x open from Makita. Owen. Pass. Oh, you can eat. Yeah, no, of course. It, it's scary, of course, but um, you know, oh, even though Makita covers, he really can't call very light either. Just given he only covers by a little there. bit. He say. calls he's wrong. He's the clear short stack. So I'm pretty there. sure I'm like two queens probably hits the muck there Honestly, even the from Makita. Like, why did I just say that to Jason? It's gonna be he, he's Makita's gonna snap call and I'm out. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. Hopefully not going anywhere. Oh man. Jason looking for his third title. The trip. Danny looking for his second. Makita. Bit of a dry spell since Madrid of last year. Say dry spell. Several crossbar finishes. Back to back ace kings. Oh boy. Oh. This could be it, Randy. The limp from Danny. Jason I'm all in. with 43 antis does announce himself. Yep. Bats behind, gonna oh, get out of the way. Brother. I got an ace and a queen. I got ace kings through it. Just about as rough as it can get in terms of equities. 29% for Jason. All in brought to you by bookmaker.eu. Come on, lady. With a king though, with a king though. <laughs> <laughs> the lady can come with a king though. Lady, not ladies, ah, uh. lady. Couple of them, maybe. Okay, we'll chop it up. Yeah, I'm okay. Don't, as long as I don't lose, we can chop. Okay. I'm okay with that. Some chop outs available, of course. Danny's saying, as long as he doesn't lose, he's happy. <sighs> okay. Seven or a nine needed seven. for a chop. Right, so there's nine or seven. Let's not even queen for the win. Either. No queen, I'm okay with One card to come. 
Ugh. doesn't find it, Randy. And with Good that, guys. our seven-time champion, Jason Kuhn, eliminated in third oh. place. Vegas, man. All right, my man. Take care of yourself. Adding 330,000. 15 seconds. Oh, hey, buy me into the uh, turbo. I'm coming uh -huh. in. I'm coming Track in. Record. <laughs> Imagine like 15 Congrats. seconds, literally. That's dope. I'm in. It's got 15 yeah, yeah, seconds. Buy me in. Yeah, yeah, I'm in. <laughs> to jump into the 20k, straight into event number 17. Just as he was saying his farewells to Bads and Danny. Another deep run here. Jason Kuhn obviously made that incredible fold. Three handed. To give himself a lifeline, but ultimately coming up short against Danny Tang's ace queen. Sorry, Ace King, rather. Jason out in third. Danny Tang with a chip lead against Makita. So heads up, Randy. 515,000 guaranteed. Danny Tang looking to join a very exclusive club. We're going to throw it to a quick break. And when we come back, we'll be crowning our champion. It's the best poker the biggest song. poker song. This is a crazy. No way! Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation from pre-flop to river, we've got it all. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players.
heads up in the 50k short deck main event live from the Merit Royal Diamond Resort in North Cyprus. Event number 16 of the Triton Super High Roller Series. Danny Tang squaring off against Makita Badziakuski. 186 antis plays 144. Both players guaranteed $515,000 for their efforts. Of course, not just the money at stake. It's the coveted Triton Trophy. Danny Tang looking to join a very exclusive three-time champion club. Makita looking for title number five. And of course, that Jacob & Co. Triton collaboration timepiece going to the main event champion. Randy, these two have battled it out heads up before. Back in Madrid, Makita coming back from a massive chip deficit to actually stop Danny from at the time winning his first title. Well, we've got another big short deck heads up match coming here. Very deep stack. 165 anti is the average amongst these two players. <laughs> That's absolutely so, insane. But, um, I imagine actually quite a different um, heads up match incoming, right? Um, these two players definitely a bit more of the aggressive side post flop. Could see some interesting pots for now. Let's see how they kind of feel each other out. First blood. They're going Makita's way. Unless. Danny can get him to fold. Of course, as you mentioned, incredibly deep here. Different styles to the Chris Brewer, Richard Young heads up match. I, I would think so, especially given what we've seen up to this, leading up to this heads up match to begin with. And uh, King Queen going to fight over bet. Check, check, flop. Check, check, turn. And now an overbet on the river for Danny and immediately shades off from Bats. Can he sniff this one out? So overbet is obviously polarized. Bats thinking this is a 9x or nothing situation. Decides that it's a bit too much for his king 10 and lays it down. Danny just playing phenomenal so far today. Came into the final table as chip leader. Then one of the first hands, I want to say, just like an Thank orbit you. in. Thank you. Coolard, Michael Watson, Danny Tang with aces, so Watts with pocket kings to get us into the money. Then he went on to eliminate with Sam Greenwood and Kiat Lee in the same hand. Ace Queen cracking the Kings of Greenwood and holding against the Ace Nine of Kiat Lee just before the break to get us heads up, eliminating the seven time champion Jason Kuhn, Ace King against Ace Queen. Running well, playing well. It's a lethal combo. He does love 50Ks. Both of his titles coming in a 50K buy in. Bad's heads up for the second time this trip. Came second to Michael Soizer in the 75k for 1.2 million. So it looks like the pre flop raise sizes <coughs> five antes that Makita's going to opt to go for. Standard for heads up? I think everyone's kind of got their own kind of sizings that they prefer. I feel like Makita's one of those guys who've kind of solved kind of what is the <laughs> optimal sizing. So I'm going to say 5X is the, the standard with this stack depth. Talking of solved, you were in the booth, I think, yesterday when they were discussing the amount of equity based off the outs. And Makita, within literally a few seconds, was like, yep, 14 ounce, bang, 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 two to come, 51%. Yes. And our graphics were showing 51%. I need the <laughs> graphics. So like here... I can tell you that Queen 10's got 44%, but, um, you know, I, I need that crutch to lean on, but that's okay. Those of you just joining us, heads up in the short deck main. 
warm welcome to all of our viewers around the world. Massive thanks for all of the support over the last 16 days. Wrapping up things here in North Cyprus. A little two-month gap between now and London. We'll be back for a full series July 27th through August 10th. And again, appreciate you all getting involved in the conversation, both on YouTube, Twitch, and socials. Two more titles to be won on the final day. As Danny flops an open ender, bats with top top, to making it 240k pre in position. Yeah, of course, if we drop an ace, we could have a huge pot here, especially in heads up, ranges are wider. For now, though, it is top pair, top kicker versus open in a straight draw. Equities are very close. Sh in short deck, straight draws do get there more often. Yeah, no, the equities, even with top pair, top kicker, Nikita only has 56% equity with two cards to come. Yeah, let's see how Danny approaches this one. Problem is that he limp called preflop, so the main value hand that I see is kind of like King Jack, uh, pocket jacks occasionally. You would expect Ace King, you know, to pump it up preflop. So call we go. Understandable, given he should have a narrow value range for raising the flop. Very interesting card here, as Makita should not be perceived to hit that Jack X as much as he would want to kind of con pot control a bit. Tang checking on over to Bantz for a second time on the Jack of Diamonds turn. A big question here is whether he should kind of bet this turn, check back river, or check and kind of decide. You lean towards checking a little bit more if you feel that your opponent is capable of kind of bluff raising you on that jack x if you bet kind of small for blocker. And wow, what a river card. That's improving to top two. Danny Tang rivering the nut straight. See what size he comes with here. Flushes shouldn't be too much of a concern. He has the ten of clubs in hand. Maybe some full houses. Exclusively aces, it feels like. Or kings that was getting trappy on the turn. Very small bet here. Trying to induce a bluff race. And also the if you think about it, when Makita checks back to turn, it's hard for Makita to have kind of like trip jacks or better. So Danny also gets to target like the king X's that just priced in the call given what's been laid out. Looks like call is incoming here, Vase King. Queen ten. Might have got might have been able to get a little bit more value, but didn't expect it to be just ace king. Regardless, eight point three versus four point nine. In stacks. Yeah, first major pot going Danny's way there. Creating a nice little buffer of three million. I'm personally preparing myself strapped in for a lengthy heads up battle between these two. As we saw between Brewer and Richard Young. Seems like a fitting way to end one of the most memorable series in recent memory. If you haven't already, click the like button over on YouTube. Love for you to take a couple of seconds out of your day. Just click that button, help us grow our channel, reach a wider audience. Continue to go from strength to strength as Triton very evidently on a mission to grow the game we all love, to continue providing some of the best entertainment and poker content in the world free of charge. And even though we are finishing today, there's an insane amount of cash game content, and we're talking nosebleed cash game content. Several seven-figure pots throughout the trip. Randy's going to be 
in the mix in the commentary booth, releasing those over the next couple of months. Henry, I'm just going to say that it was a record amount of not only pot sizes, but just um, amounts of footage captured, <laughs> you know. So, uh, we you know, we're just lots of records being broken. You're going to come into London drained, mate. You're going to be like, listen, guys, I've been doing commentary for the last month. <laughs> amount of work you've got cut out. Exactly. Back to this hand. We do have a quite an interesting pot developing here. We've got bottom two versus double gutter. Double gutter definitely can put in some chips. Is limp pot, so Danny Tang is... Of course, going to feel pretty comfortable here. Bottom two, ace, queen, you would have heard from preflop. Feels like the strongest holding Makita could have right now is like an ace, eight. But un unlikely when you're holding the eight yourself. Bats making the call. 420 in the middle. Six of hearts on the turn changes nothing. Except the equity shift. Now up to 71% for Tang. Seems like there's still a decent amount of value to be had for Danny. It is tricky though on a lot of river cards if, it's, if he does get called. Hard to kind of like completely break out. So he's going to err on the side of caution. Does give the opportunity for Makita to Attack here, double gutter, 29%, just jack high. Given the nature of the ball texture, Andy, just so many gut shots out there. Jack 10, 10, 9, king jack, king 10, you name it. 75% from Makita once check two. Yeah, so if you're targeting these gut shots, you do need to bet a bit sizable, about three quarters pot is what she's done here. Otherwise, if you bet too small, you know, these king jacks feel obligated to continue given the price. So now you can try to outprice these hands that are out of position. For now, though, it is still a weakish two pair, so really can't be raising with this and blowing up the pot for no reason. Well, Makita, rivering showdown in the form of third pair. Not really beating anything, though. Apart from maybe like an 8-9 or an 8-7, you could argue, wouldn't bet flop. I would think the likelihood this Jack X is good is very low. Probably expects like 8-9 to fold decent frequency on the turn, given it was a 75% pop bet. Regardless, is can he get a hand better than Jack X to fold right now? You have to keep in mind he went bet call flop from Danny Tang, so Danny's probably not expected to bet like naked queen X's, so he might not be targeting these. And notice that he's going for a really big bet. Just trying to get these like ace raggedy type hands out. You know, like ace 10, like ace one pair. Ace gut shot. Bats really putting Danny in the blender here. Of course, we have the pleasure of watching them two battle it out in the 25k. If you recall that epic hero call from Danny against Makita, can he do the same here? Because Danny was passive on the turn, it's perceived that all the straights that got there, 10 9 and King 10, is in Makita's range and not Danny. You expect the straight draw type hands to multi double barrel to turn out of position. So Makita's trying to pounce on the fact that he's got a range advantage for nutted hands. See if Danny can sniff this one out. Let's it go. A huge swing there. Obviously, had he called, Makita would have been down to 2.9, <laughs> and he knows it. 5.4 million now, clawing back 600k. <laughs> That's not what you want the post-mortem to be from your opponent. You know you got bluffed. $235,000 heads up match between these two titans. Randy, we crossed the 165k subscribe mark.
Bingo. On YouTube, we crossed the 80k follower mark on Twitch. Double bingo. We're growing. Are you surprised? No, damn right we should be, right? Damn right, boy. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate all of you guys. If you haven't subscribed yet, might as well. But we'll see you at the next stop, London. You'll get those alerts now that you've subscribed. Also, some of the social media content. I watch exclusive it. Exclusive interviews with some of the game's biggest stars. Also, some fun stuff thrown in there. You know, some. I, I look for the goofy ones. Yeah, those are the ones I'm after. Them. I remember the uh, April Fool's prank that Pete put out about Super Long Deck or whatever it was. <laughs> it wasn't called Super Long Deck. Longer Deck, I believe. It Longer was. Deck. That's right. There we go. Back to the action real quick. A6, A10. So it went limp. Prey flop Makita, 350 open, which is quite large. Eight and a half antis or so. Does flop best, A6, but we we'll always know that bottom pair of sixes is always questionable. I'll see bet from Danny. Going to get it done. Makita, the snap fold. Things going well. Danny's way so far in this heads up match. And I imagine you're getting a similar vibe to me that this, with the few hands we've seen already, right. that this heads up match is completely different than the last one that we had between Brewer and Yong. No, 100%. I mean, we were talking about potentially having a long heads-up match on our hands, but given that these guys are willing to play more inflated parts, more aggressive post-flop, it, it could certainly be over very quickly. Yes, I agree with that. It's just that these guys, they don't want to let any chip get away from them. Attack as hard as possible. Really, truly a, a bloodbath of heads-up, and that's what we want to watch. Queen 10, top pair for Danny. Broadway gut shot for Bats. Limped pot. That's with a little tickle. 60k. Sorry, 60%. Close. Yeah, it's we're 16 days. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Anyways, um, he's got top pair here, seven kicker. Not too great, but still top pair. We'll have to play out of position for the rest of this hand. Really, the main card he's looking for is seven. Ten's a nice card in the sense that it does freeze action from time to time as the aggressor perceived to bet bottom pair a little bit less. Should be afraid if you've got King X that your opponent has check called trips. Or hand that can turn into trips. So we will check through. Blank. See if Danny wants to come with a small blockish sizing or if he's happy to just go into check call mode. Let Makita potentially bluff. Back. It's going to check through. Danny continues to climb. Game face on. Yeah, since it got three handed, since the departure of Richard Young. You know, we were talking about how jovial, light-hearted it had kind of been throughout the day. So, well, in fact, throughout the last two events since, since getting into the short deck part of the series. But the moment it got three-handed, you quickly realize that there's a lot at stake here. And again, not to state the obvious, there's a 750k. But these guys are all looking to kind of etch their name into the Triton history books. 
Jason was obviously looking for this title number eight. More comfortable. Bad's looking mm -hmm. for number five. Which one Danny like looking more? to join Ivy and Wai Kin Yong. Well, I have to say short deck. I'm happy that you asked me this question. That I don't know, is that some sort of I mean I thought you would be able to tell the dif difference at least. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but you don't, so Sorry. I don't know. Is, is that is that is that good? Is that like a compliment or like like a Does it does it mean that you playing too good in a sh in a full deck or not good enough in a short deck? <laughs> is it not the other way around? <laughs> yeah, I'm kidding. <laughs> Or do you just think I'm bad in both, so you don't know which one I'm good at? <laughs> this conversation got awkward pretty quick. It did. Danny's response made it awkward. Yeah. <laughs> just he was like, oh, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> Back to the serious faces, shall we? Yeah, no more talking, guys. Yeah. Stop making it awkward. Leave that to Randy and myself. Now, just to let you know, Randy, of course, event number 17 to 20k. 29 entries in that one. <coughs> Top prize of 214,000. Five places will make the money as we see Danny flop top and bottom. Nothing to write home about. Obviously, Makita with just seven high. I believe with... Jason Kuhn coming third. Stephen Chidwick needs to win. So needs to win, and he needs Jason to not make the money if the calculations of Luca Vivaldi. Both of your titles you won from the pool deck, right? That'll no, be exciting. Shot, we'll long. be able to cover that at the end too. Okay. A silver lining for Jason Kuhn More getting the opportunity to even <laughs> enter the tournament, given when he busted. Yeah. Haven't won a main event though. Haven't won a short deck main event too. Awkward once again. Came close in long deck once main event. Second. Top and bottom for Danny. Top pair, very decent kicker, especially in a limped pot. Practically the nut kicker, given that Danny Tang didn't pump it up pre-flop. Right. So let's just throw away Ace King in his range. No surprise here that Makita feels confident. King Queen. Let's see if Danny Tang wants to try to fire more chips in there. Looks like he will come in with call. Some counterfeit outs, of course, for bats. Eight or a ten, as well as a queen. Win him the pot. Yeah, still decent equity, 32%. Want to play cautious. He is uh, aware that he's up against a very wide range in the dealer button. King six, however. Looking to extract value. Worst kings. Pair gut shots. All sorts of hands, even gut shots in the form of broadways. Whatever it is, 200k is the bet. I imagine that King Queen be a comfortable call here. Five card hands already existing, seven nine. Hard to represent that from the cutoff, so I wanna kinda contain the pot. Calling 
hole. Does make the call, Randy. 7.20 in the middle. Going to the river. And it's the eight of diamonds, those counterfeit outs we're discussing. Top and bottom, no more. For Danny Makita with a much needed pickup as Danny had started running away a bit a little bit. Not to say that this hand is 100% going Makita's way, of course, but it does feel like... Yeah, after that check, I'd imagine his king six is going to be like, hope it's good. Um, hard to extract value given his, the kicker is now to 10 on the board for him. You have 9 10? Or king 9? King. Queen. Okay, so, of course, the 9 10 would be the hand that Danny would win against. Makita Banziakuski, 16.9 million in Triton earnings, four titles. 18 caches. In terms of crossbars, Randy, fifth place finish in Jeju, the 1 million HKD Triton Hold'em. He's won two main events, one in Montenegro and another one in Jeju. It was back to back, and I believe he even final table the third main, no limit main, but didn't obviously win it. And won the 100k, 750k HKD short deck in Montenegro. That's a big buy -in. That main event that you mentioned came fourth, so another crossbar there. Then obviously in Madrid, picking up his fourth title, followed by a third in the short deck main. Then fast forward to North Cyprus last year, two final tables, a third and a fourth. Then in Vietnam, same story, two final tables again in the short deck main as well as a second here in the 75k. One of the most decorated Triton players of all time as he flops top two on the Queen Jack 7. How you holding up, bud? We chilling? We chilling. We chilling. Just watching some high level play. Fantastic end to the series. Two of the Triton OGs, both looking for their first short deck main event title. Lots of interesting mystery cards that Danny could be holding, King of Clubs. Four Looks 50. like he will continue, and we really have no idea, but given the sizing, I'm kind of thinking it's some kind of big combo draw or some clubs. Can't even really imagine him raising a single pair like this. And you're holding top two. Really, the only hand you fear right now is pocket sevens. Blocking top set, blocking mid set. Take one in position, reduce the equities of these big draws. Well, the ace of hearts on the turn, should Danny have that combo draw you're talking about, the king ten of clubs. Even if it's just king x of clubs, um, you know, he picks up equity, can attack for sure. His range is uncapped, given he limp preflop and the button check back. So he can still represent the top tier of hands, whereas Makita cannot. Might come into play in this spot. 600? Six hundred. Really want to know what that mystery card is. Regardless, whether it's King Ten or King X of Clubs, you would expect them to continue firing on the Ace, especially because you think Makita would raise a limp in position with like Ace Queen and Ace Jack at a high frequency. That's in a tough spot with a very vulnerable. Two pair, but not going anywhere just yet. 2.2 million in the middle. Big river incoming here for both these players as the nine of spades changes nothing. Given that Danny has at least the king of clubs. I think it's safe to say if he continues firing, he's got 
King-10 most of the time. If he checks, then it's most certainly some kind of busted king X of clubs. Is it possible? I mean, it's like an ace king of clubs, although I don't feel like they've been limping monsters so far, heads up. They've just been playing some very straight up honest poker. It's possible, but a little bit unlikely, I would say. Danny comes with Makita, the effective stack with four million. Whether he's got or not, the king is a great blocker if you are bluffing to king 10. Huge range, range advantage if you're bluffing. Danny really taking his time, mulling this one over. Check raise flop. Big bet on the turn, and now pretty much putting Makita all in for his tournament life. On the river. 10 9 bricks, King 9 bricks. Only King 10 gets there. What is it? What a time to have a mystery card, Randy. Yes. Um, given the huge overbet and the texture with King-10 and 10-8 that exists, I'd imagine Danny's perceived value range for this sizing is, is straight and not necessarily like top two or some kind of sets. Maybe some sets, but mainly geared towards the straight end. If that's the case, that would mean that this jam is polar, therefore Queen Jack is more trying to decide how often he's up against the, the straight versus some kind of slightly better two pair. I fold. Danny Discipline. Check raise the flop. Follow through on turn and river and gets the fold. And with that, extends his lead, Randy. And it is now becoming a sizable one. A five million chip lead. Of course, no introduction needed for the host and the home of poker in Europe. Of course, the Triton Super High Roller Series here in North Cyprus. Merit Poker situated on the beautiful shores of the Mediterranean. The Merit Kyrenia Hotels in North Cyprus deliver five-star accommodations and entertainment year-round. From beachfront cabanas to nightlife and gaming to all-inclusive dining options, guests are looked after with pleasure. And if that isn't enough, Merit Poker Room provides Europe's biggest tournaments and best cash games with action to satisfy everyone from recreational players to high stakes gamblers, you can head over to www.meritpoker.com to book your trip today and be uh, part of the Merit Poker experience. Yeah. Five million chip gap, Randy. You know, Henry, during that dealer change, you could have went and asked Danny what he had. I think the viewers would have really appreciated what that mystery card was. <laughs> I was actually busy paying some bills, okay. Randy. Um, maybe I should do that. Yeah, next time maybe, you know, do it yourself. <laughs> so you didn't care. Okay, good to know. Anyways, I was pocket sixes. caring about our sponsor. I know. I'll find out. I want to know. We need to know. Just in fact, should we take some wages? Do you think? Okay. Do you think he had it? Yes or no? If I had to guess, I lean towards yes. But. It's a tough one, <laughs> really. I'm in the same camp as you. I feel like he had it. What do you think, ladies and gentlemen at home? Bluff or no bluff? Danny, of course, has been here before. Heads up against Makita back in Madrid of last year. This was back when Danny 
didn't have a Triton title. May of last year came second in the 50k, seven max for 932,000 euros. And at that time, Makita had three titles. He went on to win it, the first player to ever reach four. And then it wasn't until one of the final events of the series that Jason Kuhn tied him to go four apiece. We also heard Danny when he was on Michael Soyser's rail on the in the 75k saying, don't do what I did back in Madrid, of course, referencing that heads up match. He almost did though. He, he let the other guy get the lead for a little bit in that heads up match here. Soyser and Makita. Yeah, Soyser. Yeah. yeah, he did. Anti has gone up 50k, 100k. 44 runners in this short deck main, generating a prize pool of 2.2 million. Nice. ISO from Danny. Yeah, an A7 is kind of a nice hand to kind of attack pre flop. Blocking hands, willing to limp jam on you. Doesn't play that well post flop. Misha Malinovsky over on YouTube saying, I am pretty sure it was King 10. Mm -hmm. Well, Randy and I are in the same camp. I mean, I didn't say I was pretty sure. It was just would be my guess. Higher than Those Makita connecting with top pair, but Danny with a gut shot. Last time Makita was in the spot, did lead out top pair. Queen kicker continues to do so. Sounds like some action Sounds in the like background. <laughs> Sounds like Dow, doesn't it? It does. Trips for Bats. Almost a stone lock on this hand, and unlikely that Danny's going to continue against more aggression. Yeah, definitely not against this sizing. Not open ended. He's out. Tara Harrison saying, commentator, hard grinders. Cheers to you. Appreciate the kind words, Tara. It's definitely been a grind. The three musketeers in the Triton commentary booth. Randy Lou, a.k.a. Nananoko. Why are we musketeers? Is this a good compliment or? What do you want us to be, Randy? I don't know. The three amigos? The three blind mice? That's not good either, is it? What's the one the the wolf and the three pigs? The Goldilocks and no no. They yeah, the Goldilocks. Big, is it Goldilocks? 
<laughs> I don't know, <laughs> man. <laughs> Jeez. You it's come up with a name. Okay. How about... The Musketeer Trio. Chat. <laughs> if Randy's microphone suddenly goes quiet... <laughs> You've muted me. The cord might be wrapped. Hey. Hey. Unnecessary. <laughs> Yeah, Randy Lou, aka Nananoko, poker legend, turned commentator, Ali Najad. Not really sure what nickname to give Ali. The Persian Prince. I think he'd like that. Yeah. Of course, myself, Henry Kilbane. No, no, no. Henry. Kill the kill, game Bane. Kill the game Bane. Yeah. In the membrane. Kill Bane in the membrane. <laughs> You gotta GTO choose one. You can't, you can't have. Oh, why do you have so many different names? H, HK, What do you want Kilbane. more? A trophy or the watch? A trophy? Ooh. Not even close. <laughs> Most of Jiko and Ko would be happy with me saying that, but. Yeah, it's easy, not close. Danny. Come on. I don't know. Yesterday's watch? Different. <laughs> but probably still the trophy. It's different for you. You have a couple, you know? You can only win that watch if it's a main, though. That's true. Although you can only win this trophy size if it's a main, because it's the ex extra large one, I believe, yeah. if it's the main event. Yeah. Or maybe it is close. Trophy hunting. Limits pot, by the way. Ace king against jack 10. Queen queen jack board. Yeah, we've seen the cutoff, the out of position player pre flop playing a very limp heavy strategy but they're going quite hard post flop okay. 300k in the middle 8 of diamonds on the turn changes nothing Danny's still with the best of it might be hard for Makita to attack here once he gets called on the flop Queen X certainly going nowhere. Jack X picks up some gutties that might feel obligated to continue. Pot's still pretty small given it's limp. But let's see if he decides to bet again. Would have to be targeting like really weak Jack X's. Looks like he is going to try and do just that. There's a quarter pot on the flop. 50k into 200k. 150 on the turn into 300k. The two overs and the gut shot. And he makes the call. 600k in the middle now. Apologies for the graphics. As another undercard rolls off. As you said, Randy, you know, Danny, with that kind of 100% range on the button, can certainly have. 10-9, full houses here. Queen-8, Queen-7. We did check back. Yeah, any queen, really. If Makita bets now, he's really trying to represent Queen-X, of course. Looks like he gives up, so... Jack-10. Not much value to be had when check through. Check to here. No kicker. You can always question whether you betting opens the door for your opponent to make a raise, so nice play. <laughs> really chipping away at Makita right now, 9.3 million versus 3.9. Yeah, sizable lead for Danny. But the crazy thing is, you know, the mindset that you need, Danny's been here before, he had a 19 to one chip lead over Makita in that event. Makita turned it around, went on to win. And when you've been in that seat, you've held the chip lead over one of the best in the world. Does that thought ever kind of creep back into the back of your mind? Self-doubt maybe kick in should Makita win a couple of pots? It very well could, especially because it's the same two players playing right now in these two seats. Danny just needs to try and close this one out, but 
Even though he's got the chip advantage, Makita still has lots of anties to work with, around 75 or so. You just can't ever count your opponent out in short deck. Easy to spin it up, easy to get carried away, and would be a huge mistake with what's on the line. You're not going anywhere. Overcard, ace high straight draw. Bad's turning him dead. As a 10 would now give Makita a full house. In before three hour heads up match, Randy. Look. How long was the last heads up match? Like at least it's two hours, almost, right? Yeah, almost two hours, I believe. We were sneaking up on that two hour mark. Yeah, very possible this could happen here today. Bit of deception here with the check back on the turn, Queen 10. Nikita figures that he doesn't need to protect his hand as much given he's got the 10 for backup. Trying to let his opponent, you know, think his king or jack is good and pay off a river bet. Will be a bet check bet line. Perhaps he goes large, thinking that you don't think I would check back Queen X in the turn in position a lot. Try to confuse his opponent. Yeah, I would love to see him go polar hit. Four hundred. Pot size bet. Polar as it gets. Danny obviously rivering a pair of eights. Queen. Keita getting some value there. Danny keeping him honest with the rivered bottom pair. Some updates from the 20K, event number 17. Tom Dwan is currently chip leader, 14 left. 29 runners in that. Late Reg is <sighs> over and done with. Only eliminations so far. Chris Brewer, Alex Mazhenkov, and Dao Min Fu. Of course, our eyes and attention will be on that at the conclusion of this. These are good. Stephen Chidwick. Do you have one at home? Huh? Do you have one at home? Secret lab? It's to win. No, I'm not. Shout out Danny Tang. Give our sponsor a little shout out. Secret lab. They are good, Danny. We've been in them for 16 days straight. Yeah, I feel like we would be the best testimonials <laughs> of this product. With that river value, Makita closing the gap somewhat, but still two to one chip deficit. Mystery card, our favorite. Not when they start betting. <laughs> Not when and they the start. And the one card that we triple. can see, you know, was is it just good? Jack High. It's a, it was a good mystery card. It though. was. It was a good sweat. Those of you just joining us, 515,000 guaranteed for these two. 
750k for the eventual champion. Six places paid in this one. Kat Lee bowing out first for 154,000. Sam Greenwood in fifth for 198. Richard Young, fresh off that victory in the 25k, came fourth for 253k. Jason Kuhn out in third for 330,000. See the eventual champion going home with 750k. A Triton main event trophy and a Jacob & Co custom Triton collaboration piece. Danny looking to join Phil Ivey and Waikin Yong in the three-time champion club. Makita looking to close the gap on one of his good friends and biggest rivals, Jason Kuhn. Getting up to five titles if he can beat Danny heads up here. A lot of work to do at the moment. And just 94 antes. Limped pot. Just waiting for the inevitable collision. Danny going to check with top pair. Bit of deception, also a bit of pot control as well. on the turn changes nothing. Keita looking for a nine and a nine only. Yeah, the king is a bit worried now with the ace dropping off, always scary with one over. Looks like he's going to maintain control for bet here. Doesn't really want Makita to dictate the action. That's thinking of here. Maybe just trying to remain balanced with this tanking. I mean, you are allotted uh, X amount of seconds every street. Yeah, either that or room service. You think he's, he's thinking about room service? Why? Cheeseburger and French fries? Why not? He looks like a cheeseburger man to you. I know he's a cheeseburger. Oh, you man. know it. Okay. You know Urban Bats. Urban, urban Bats. <laughs> is Shout out Fresco in Phuket. Some of the best burgers. Fresco? Fresco. Fresco. Okay. If you're ever in town, I'll take you there. Sure. Sounds good. Booked. Ace, 10, 7, three clubs. Makita, massive lead even though he's currently got the worst of it. Check this one over to Danny. He's now picking up a double gut shot. Still retains the equity advantage with one card to come, just queen high, looking for a king, nine, or a club, or a queen or a jack. If he does attack, he might go quite sizable, trying to, like... Apply max pressure on weak one pair holdings like this. There we go. Precisely. Trying. Trying. Just looking along on the Triton Poker Plus app. That 20k. Looking at Dalmin Fu's graph. Was all in blind. His first ever hand. Four way all in. They just agreed to. You know, it's just 20k. <laughs> one lama. Managed to win a four-way all-in with King Six, Randy. Would you believe? Yeah, pretty, pretty weak holding four-way all-in. What did he hit? Like trip sixes or no? It actually he came wheeled like it? King Ten Six. And uh, don't forget, everyone was all in blind. But yeah, the board even paired on the river, not the, like counterfeiting his top and bottom, but he still just had the Kings best hand good. with the king. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was eliminated by Tom Dwan, which is. Kind of ironic as Juan was coaching him. 
Elton Sang, Martin Nilsson, Alex Majenkov and Chris Brewer all out in that one, down to the final two tables. Tom Duan leading the pack. That one is obviously a turbo structure. Ace, eight, six, isolated pot here. Raised by Danny. Yeah, Danny did raise out of position. Does flop pretty decent. However, he does need to fear some of the better aces out there that exist. And they haven't really been open raising that often from the cutoff. So Mikita may perceive it as strength and, you know, be a little cautious with some holdings. Does have middle pair, backdoor diamonds. Seeing weakness on this flop. Might expect some kind of showdown value hands. A good board Zeba in general is just Tay Broadways. Makita going to maintain control and put a, s a little bet there. 200k. <laughs> One of the biggest pots of heads up so far brewing. Two cards to come as Danny turns the nine high straight. The thing is this, normally on the four liners, you'd be pretty scared of your opponent defending and, you know, making that straight. The thing is this is a raised pot. Danny opened seven antis preflop. You're not going to expect seven X in his range. So Makita might still pounce at, at some point in this hand, knowing that he should have a big range advantage holding the smaller cards as well as the 7x. And you can see Makita attacking once more. This bet also designed to kick out these pocket pairs lower than an ace. That would raise pre-flop, check call flop for 200k. Yeah, with that in mind, does Danny just continue and kind of set the trap? It feels like the best play here of a7, given that you shouldn't have 7x in your range, is to just check call, let your opponent try to represent that hand, look weak when you're actually strong. That's yeah, so you correctly deduced. Shouldn't have much 7x. After making it 350,000 pre, seven antis. Just let Makita continue to try and push out a hand like jacks through kings, even top pair holdings like ace king, ace queen. Gonna struggle. Let's make the call. 2.3 million in the middle, Makita drawing dead. Hearts on the river. Keita blocking Jack-10 now as well. Yeah, blocks a little bit Jack-10, but you got to expect that your opponent has check called the flop of Jack-10, which is probably pretty low frequency. Also, just calling turn of Jack-10. I would say not a big thing he's going to be threatening, be scared of. Slipping it on over to Makita once more. Giving him as much rope as possible. Just hang himself here. And he's truly played this one and his man to perfection. Makita gives up. You gonna use timer? One time on each. Each? Yeah. Okay. What a board for a seven, huh? Keita does give up, avoids disaster. 
Danny like Tang. King of, heart, King of Hearts. The King massive heart. chip lead now. Uh. 193 plays 71 <laughs> as the blinds go up, or the antes rather. 50k short deck main event. Event number 16 of the Triton Super High Roller Series here at the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel, Spa and Casino in North Cyprus. The two time champ squaring off against the four time champ, Makita v. Danny. It's a three to one chip lead now. Is it going to be another crossbar for Makita? So many close calls to reduce the gap on Jason Kuhn. <coughs> oh. <coughs> huh? Oh. Oh. Do you have 3.5? Or more. Two point nine three three point two three point four three point four million Makita at the start of this hand. Now sub sixty antes could say the danger zone is approaching in short deck. Have range advantage here might stab. One eighty. Yeah, a little stab, three quarters pot. Yeah, in general, it's good to stab when you've got range advantage with high card hands with some decent equity. In this case, Broadway draw. Top card pairing on the turn. As Makita want to continue firing here. Really just has been a one-sided affair so far, this heads-up match. A lot of things not going Makita's way in the terms of runouts. Having value but being out-pipped. Still might double barrel this, given that it's limp pre-flop, so looks like he will check but Danny definitely has some hands that would have trouble against a multi-barrel, but is bleeding a bit, and these chips are very important to his stack of 50 antis or so. For now, though, Danny with the call on the flop. Hard to say what it is. Could easily be an ace, could be a king, could be a gut shot. Yeah, he did ask Makita at the start of the hand how much he's playing, so maybe it is one of those on the cusp ASEX that he was potentially thinking of ripping in pre or ISOing with. So Makita making a call here out of position, mainly because not only does he have a draw, but he could potentially have the best hand against other draws and just binks the queen 10. Well, we know for a fact that Makita's got a lock on this hand given that Danny's got a nine in the hand. No boat possible. 1.2 out there. Is this the turning point for the four-time champ? Really rough innings so far. This heads up match. Yeah, so he's contemplating whether he should lead here. Looks like he will bet out. Not trying to get some tighter check backs in position. Mm. 
Not sure what Danny's other hole card is, but if it's an ace, he wouldn't be going anywhere. Does lay down. Some kind of stab, it seems. Maybe got shot more likely. Makita back up to four million, a much needed pot there for the Belarusian. Been an epic heads up battle so far as expected coming into this heads up match. After that heads up between Chris Brewer and Richard Young yesterday where we saw one of our founding fathers of the Triton Super High Roller Series winning his second title, beating Brewer in the 25K short deck. Similar affair here. Two of the short deck legends. Locking horns on the main stage in the short deck main event. Both guaranteed 515,000. Champion will be going home with 750. And then we'll be picking up coverage of event number 17, the 20K short deck. Tom Dwan, chip leader in that one, with 11 players left. No Jason Kuhn, who did manage to sneak in with 15 seconds left on the clock. Has been eliminated. So as Makita gets shorter, probably some shift in pre-flop approach for him. Ace Jack going to likely attack. What sizing though? Actually going to check back. Feels that he's got a little bit too much still to just open right jam. For now though, is gut shot straight draw for Danny Tang ace high. Also, since it is a limp pot, clearly 9x goes way up in frequency for both players. And he's going up to 60,000, 120,000. He's getting close to that stage of this heads up match. As Randy mentioned, Makita not quite there yet. 60 antes at the start of the hand, 65, ace jack. Just checking behind. Yeah, they both seem pretty content just taking spots post flop. For now though, nines and eights. Ten, jack 10 got there, ace six. Let's see if Makita tries to represent some kind of big holding, whether 9x or jack-10 right now. Maybe other straights as exist, 10-6, a6, possible limp pot. Comes in with 300 into 440. Are you somewhat surprised by this? A little bit. Does got showdown value, of course. But Makita hasn't been shy of just attacking, like, kind of middling holdings and following through with, like, extensive river bet. King on the river, though. Yeah, and to Danny's defense as well, he's been c calling Makita down correctly in a few spots. Correct. I don't think that Makita believes that King X is a large part of Danny Tang's check calling range on the turn. He might even think like these King Tens may stab themselves. So the fact that Danny bet flop check call turn makes it seem like it interacts with that 7998 texture. So maybe some kind of pair straight draw like 810, 8X, 7X oh occasionally. Yeah. And it's a huge bet. Almost. Did we go almost pot? He did indeed. A million into a million forty. So the pot size bet is, you know, saying I've got nine X, I've got the straights, the four houses. 
given the nature of the preflop action, is very, very possible, all of these types of holdings. Danny going to be able to find a call here of just a pair of eights? Would be an incredible call, one he's certainly capable of making. He's made some hero calls um, throughout the tournament. He has indeed. In short deck. Did say to Makita when asked, prefers short deck, deems himself a short deck pro. As do some of his fellow friends, part of the Asian contingent, Kiat Lee comes to mind. Seven six, eight six, eight ten, seven ten. Even then, these hands will check back the river at some frequency, given they've got showdown value. Wow. Insane call there, just ace eight. What a fantastic hero call from Danny Tang. Really sending a message to M Makita Baziakuski. That call right there, Andy. If that doesn't make a statement, I don't know what does. Up to 10.7 million, a 4 to 1 chip lead over Bats. How demoralizing is that if you're <laughs> Makita's shoes? Heads up, just not been going your way, and then Danny. Making an insane hero call. That's nasty. I mean, <laughs> you don't hear Randy respond like that. 7998 King calls with nines and eights ace kicker. Pot size bet. Three streets. There was a bet on a flop, a bet on a turn. Bombed on the river. Does that qualify, as you like to say, and I quote, gangster? Gangster for sure. There we go. Gangster confirmed from Randy Lou. There's been so many phenomenal post-flop spots that yeah. we've seen in in this main event alone. Obviously, the pre-flops have been some pretty crazy clashes, too, but um, wow. Dude, we've had 16 days of just highly entertaining, world-class poker being on center stage. Talking of world-class world poker... Two of the best here, duking it out. And then obviously, event number 17. Ten left in that one. Tom Duan, chip leader. It's a turbo. Be playing down to a winner in that one as well. 214,000 going to the eventual champion. Keep you all updated. Also sweat along on the Triton Poker Plus app. Notice Danny trying to trap Makita with his 40 anti stack. Is aware that Makita will likely jam some weaker holdings now with this stack size. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. for his second title of the trip. Looking to join the three-time Champions Club. Now I can probably almost feel it. He's got more than a four-to-one chip lead. I don't know, Henry. I mean, Makita has uh, done his comeback against his very competitor before. He has indeed. Almost a year ago the date. The four liner does run out. Danny with the check mark. Okay. Jack. 
What? Check, check. Ace Jack is good. Makita gets shown the Ace Jack of Spades. It's like, okay, I see it. Limp trapping me. It's actually pretty important that he sees that, given we'll probably adjust his ranges a little bit, expecting some more traps. But then again, maybe Danny mixes it up now and just start open jamming some hands and, you know, try to play off of that showdown just now. Trying to just figure out what level is your opponent on right now. The beauty of poker. Whole cards down, of course. Bottom of range for both players. Interaction for Makita. Randy, he's down to less than 40 antis now. Yeah, that changes the ranges a little bit when he limps in the cutoff, as he has a lot of incentive to jam like decent kings pre flop. Although he has kind of limped these king queens multiple times beforehand, and his opponent should be aware of that by now. Hopefully, just taps into the memory banks of Danny Tang and gets him to fold some value right now. Sevens is down. Nicely done, Makita. Forty antis for Bats. Four to one chip lead for Danny Tang. Paul just doubled up in the 20k. Ace King holding against Seth Davies, Ace Queen. Nine left in that one. Five places paid. Michael Watson has taken the chip lead. Mystery hand for Danny. Last time he had a mystery hand. Felt like he had the goods. Did ask him. Maybe he'll get back to us and let us know what he had. Well, I'll tell you, a mystery card has got a decent chance of putting these chips in there right, when it's an ace to accompany it. Surprised at this limp from Danny? A little bit, but maybe consistent with how he's been playing the heads-up match so far. Isn't really kind of getting into that all-in strategy at this moment. Danny just happy to continue taking it to the streets. 360. <laughs> He might limp jam this king queen. Depends on the fold equity he thinks he's got. Mm. 
Maybe we were supposed to play for it all. Did I'm he just sure. lay down? I don't know, man. <laughs> Limp fold king queen. I don't know how much like. <laughs> Interesting. You would have jumped pre flop if. Yeah. But depends on what your first card was. Because the king was your second card, right? I don't know. Weird. Yeah, so I try to keep the button at the side usually in case it flies over, you know. Mm -hmm. Very surprised mm -hmm. at that, just. Limp folding the king queen. I believe he's saying he tries to keep the button at the side just in case the card flies over. Maybe just insinuating that he saw a card, hence the fold. Maybe, maybe there was an exposed card and then they dealt another one so he had less health. Potentially. Who knows? Regardless. A6 here. Going to attack out of position. Six blinds is the price. Six antis. What a grind it has been for these two. Benny came in with around eight million. Bats came in with five. <coughs> Slowly chipping away. that stage now where it doesn't even need to be top of range against top of range for the money to go in either, Randy. Correct. Could easily be some kind of ace. Reasonable. Just open, rip it in. Jack 10 suited. Still have above, a tad above 40 antis, 45 or so. Not complete danger zone, but definitely out chipped. Rail of support, of course. For Danny. Feels like Danny's got the bigger rail if I oh. had to guess. <laughs> if I had to put some money on it. Or of Makita, this girlfriend on the rail. Might be on our flight tomorrow. Oh, no. No, no, no. He's not. Oh, 9-8 v 9-8. eventually check taking a bit of time with his decisions feels like that's potentially detrimental to his tournament life the short stack yeah but you know up. obviously when one guy is so short you're just so close to either closing out or being finished right it's just realizing every single ante every single chip right now so so important mm. you know whether it's Makita where he gets an opportunity to double up obviously wants as many chips as he can get and vice versa Danny Tang doesn't want to double up a, a player of more chips Randy they're down to the final table bubble of that 20k Seth Davies just got eliminated by Tom Dwan his Kings coming up short Against Duan's ace queen suited. Now they're on the final table bubble. It's Stephen Chidwick, one of the shorter stacks out there. Needs to win in order to beat Jason Kuhn. 
for the Ivan Liao Player of the Year title. A win and a win only. Owen. I want to say an hour and a half into this heads up match, thereabouts. Yeah, it's been lengthy, but quite fun. Here, Makita put to the test there of King 10. Generally speaking, he'd want to be the one jamming King 10 off suit rather than calling it off. He's going to lay it down. Does indeed. With that, penny up to 10.7 million. Of the 13 million chips in play, four to one chip lead over Makita. It's one of those ones where any hand now could be over and done with. Look, one double for Makita. He's right back in this. 130, two, sorry, 235k heads up match. As well as that coveted Triton Trophy, the Jacob & Co. Triton collaboration timepiece. You only get two of those per series. You have to win a main event. Yes. Looks like we'll take a limp pot here. Not too bad for Mikita Kozikuski. <laughs> It'll take it. Dropping trip jacks. Unfortunately for him, Danny was just king high. As he comes out, firing just one ante. Quarter pot. You want to play on or? I'll take a break. Take a break. We've got to take a break. It is a scheduled break, so that means when we return, Manny Ante will be going up to 80,000, 160,000. I mean, Bats will be down to just 35 Antis. That's how things stand. Chip counts brought to you by Poker Stake. It is going to be an uphill battle for Makita, Randy when we return from this schedule break, but one that Makita has done before and certainly capable of doing as he hunts his fifth Triton title in this 50K main. Story obviously from that frame in terms of the heads up match thus far, all Danny Tang. Yeah, Danny Tang has been getting the best of his opponent um, in many key pots, making great hero calls. Of course, the mystery King X of clubs hand. Um, but you know, Makita noticed that he wants to take a break Realize that the stack size situation is very different. He's playing 40 antes. We need to just get his mind into the game, um, how to approach the ranges. Um, because, you know, before the last hour and a half, they've been playing very deep stack, very different game going into this uh, conclusion. Yeah, I mean, it's, it feels like it's getting to that stage now where, you know, chips just have to go in sooner rather than later for Makita, right? Yeah, I certainly agree with that. And uh, Makita definitely going to try to see what kind of ranges should I be open jamming now? Should Can I still kind of come in for approach of limping, trying to trap? How do I think Danny's going to respond to all these different actions? Right. And whatever he thinks is going to yield him the best chance to get back into this match. Quick break. When we return, we'll be playing down to a champion, of course, and then later on resuming coverage from event number 17. And whilst we go on break, enjoy this interactive quiz from our friends over at GTO Wizard. The following quiz is brought to you by GTO Wizard. You open pocket fives from early position and face a three bet from the big blind. You're 25 big blinds deep. Do you fold, call, or shove? Do you know the right answer? Take your chance to win a one month premium GTO Wizard subscription. Scan the QR code or go to gtowizard.com slash triton. We give away five subscriptions every day. Master poker and learn how to crush the competition with GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players.
GG poker. It's the best poker. The song. biggest poker. Song. This is a crazy. No way! <laughs> Just mark your hand. Oh, yeah, no. I have a queen. Spit. Chop. No chop. No chop. No chop. No chop. No chop. No chop. Queen was one card away from ace. tripling up. Ace, ace. <laughs> queen. I'm going to say house. Queen of hearts. Spit. Ooh. Case, oh. Case, ace. Oh, my God. You're screwed, too. Ace of diamonds on the river. Danny Tang. I have Rivering yeah, top I two. Eliminating both Sam Greenwood but then he won every and Kiat Lee. Oh, they, they yeah. for a patient. Danny wins Just getting confirmation on the chip counts, of course. Second and third both play Tritons. Uh, Dan Smith? Third. And. Non American. Vogelsang? You're in the right country. Okay. Fatal? Yes, sir. Fader holes. That was pretty well done, by the way. I know the roster of people that are available to play million dollar buy ins tends to be rather narrow, but he nailed it. Meanwhile, bats. The concerns for him at this point, Henry, are just that. 
notion that Richard has 37 antis. There is an available pay jump that isn't an altogether negligible $77,000. 200. Perhaps by virtue of some patience. So looking to make sure his tactics are tidy. That's exercising the time extension. And then opening 4x. Yeah, obviously the major concern here for Bads is he does have Danny Tang behind. All in. <laughs> gets to do this. Correct. Oh. I should have done this to myself. Uh, why? Why? Why have I done it? I mean... Yeah. Like, well, I might just, just jam this hand. Good luck. Uh, I guess. Kings? King, king. It's okay. I have no overcap. It's obviously a byproduct mm. of Bads being second. An overwhelming margin. Be a disaster to go out in fourth. But Ali, 69% of the equity, about as good as it can get in short deck. Five million chip pot. Mm. And Bad's a hard one to win, Dan. Yeah, very hard. Looking one great. Drop this king. Hearts are covered. Dead. Dead. Yes. Dead. Courtesy of the ace. How much is it? One point six. Bad's didn't want to play that pot for that much, Henry, but Danny didn't give him a choice. Two point two. He just ran into top of range, but he had to have been wary of the idea. And the 20k now with these points here now that Jason has got earlier in the day before all of the math had been done first would ice it for Jason second apparently would as well bar a Stevie win in the 20k and multiple entries as well Not by Stevie please. for the extra points associated with that which is kind really of as cool. I think about it I know. An interesting, granted, it's a great business decision, but it is an interesting way to gain extra points beyond just regging uh, on time. No. It's like, well, hey, shower off a bunch of bullets, eight, pick up some extra points. Seven thirty-five. Eight forty-five. Especially in like a twenty k, which is the lower end of the binds yeah. available at Triton. Yeah. Jason, Good luck, Richard. Gonna give Richard a spin here as he jams over the top and dominates. Mm, we see one of Richard's immediate outs busy in Bads' hand. Bad. Two sixes okay. left. It's unnecessary. Lumsy chums, you know. <laughs> Flush and straight possibilities. Also available for Young. And Finish. now those hopes yeah, maybe shop. Okay. are dashed. Jack Could receive an ace queen yeah. jack board. Queen, queen 10. Wait, no. Yeah, queen 10. No. And that's it. Okay, GG's Richard. issued yeah. to Triton co-founder Richard Young, who will not be picking up back-to-back -back yeah. titles. Luck, eh? But obviously continuing to assert himself as one of Pattiness and table banter. I think since returning from break three-handed, maybe just a few words exchanged and understandable given what's on the line here. Not just the 750K. Caught it. Caught midair. All of them looking to add a title, the legacy, the bragging rights of taking down a main event at a Triton Super High Roller Series. So much more than just money on the line here. Especially for someone like Jason who doesn't play beyond these borders any longer in terms of Triton Series. So the family pot. Delivering a King Jack 7 flop. Gut shots for both Kuhn and Bads. But for Tang, top pair and the best of what's around. Yeah, a little something for everyone. Bads looking for a, an 8, as a Queen would actually give Jason a better straight. Danny doesn't want to turn 2 pair, that's for sure.
see what JK comes with. Three nut outs. Well, the ante is going up, Randy, which means the expected time this is going to take for Baz to get his final few antes in the middle, all 32, has dropped significantly. Danny Tang, with a sizable chip lead, 133 antes, plays 32. And the very obvious statement coming back into this heads-up match is that Baz needs a double immediately. Yes, and, you know, Danny Tang is... He's he he really wants it. We know he does. He's lost to his opponent with a massive chip leader before. Can he close it out in short deck in the main event? It means so much. And we got that Jacob and Co. side prize ready we to do go. Indeed, five hundred fifteen thousand guaranteed for both these players. The main event title, the seven hundred fifty k, and the Jacob and Co. watch that Randy was alluding to going to the eventual champion. As we look to throw it down to the main stage once more, as these two titans of the Triton Super High Roller Series. Lock horns once again. 10.5 million, plays 2.6. Danny Tang looking for his third Triton victory. Makita looking for number five with Mouth. an uphill climb battle against Danny as Danny just moves all in first hand. Aye, aye, aye. Very easy to say that Danny's been running well, but you have to give him credit for some of the plays, the bluffs, obviously that epic hero call with the ace eight. Running well, playing well, doing what he needs to do. As you said, he really wants this one. A main event, not something many players can claim to have won at Triton Super High Roller Series. Would be his second title if he can pull this one off at this stop. Well, rags for both players. Ante now is 80,000, so Makita just on 30 antes after laying that one down. And according to producer James, this has actually been the longest heads up match of the series in terms of minutes played. There was obviously like a little break between Brewer and Richard. But these two, as expected, just giving all they've got. It's so sick it didn't show your second card. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about that king of clubs hand, of course, on the queen, jack six, ace. Nine board. All in. We're at that stack depth where you're just going to jam all in into your opponent. <coughs> Chipping away at Makita, sub 30 antes. Think Danny will ever tell him? Maybe, I don't know, but he kind of likes that mystery. <laughs> you know, we've, we've heard it in the past where he just likes the pain of his opponent, you know. It's part of the game. It is variance. Variance on the RFID reader sweat. But if Makita comes back, there's no chance he's telling him, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Oh, bats just get a bomb of range. Yeah, plenty of uh, timing is very important right now, given how short they are. Obviously, nowhere to hide in short deck. Always have to pony up the ante. Obviously, the big ante when you are on the button. Under rovers on how many hands before the money goes in. Looks like they are waiting for hands. They're willing to get in there. It seems like kind of like an all in or fold situation right. now. Not too much like limping. It just seem would seem very odd. 
very easy for two hands to clash, and the holdings don't definitely do not need to be that strong. Yeah, the range of hands at this stack depth, kind of similar to sub ten big blinds in No Limit Hold'em now. Six is hitting the mark. Yeah, sixes just don't play well in this game. Easily counterfeited too. Always up against two overs. And two overs has <laughs> an edge in this game. You have to keep that in mind. For those of you just joining us, event number 16 of the Triton Super High Roller Series in North Cyprus, the 50K short deck main event. It's Kiat Lee first to depart in the money, followed by Sam Greenwood. Richard Young, fresh off that title, came fourth. And then Jason Kuhn came at third. I think this is a spot where Makita oh. feels obligated to call, given he's got 25 antis. King-10. Does dominate the 10x, so we have our all-in, Henry. No good. All-in and a call. Danny Tang, five cards away. Ace. From his third Triton title, if he can just hold ace. with the ace nine. <laughs> Calling for an ace. Makita, of course, looking to upset Danny Tang's rail, friends, and family. Have you seen the already your call? Yeah. I mean, I could have played Kings the same way. Yeah, I know. I was sick. And I'm in second. If it wasn't for ICM shit, I would have snapped. I just yeah. was like, eh. And I'm in like, a king suited backdoor at least. Yeah, I'm you're right. Nice. Jack, eight, Randy. Top pair for Danny. Makita looking for a queen. Hmm, <laughs> he's got a ball. Easier, huh? There Had a ball. Nine. 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 Had a ball. Seven on the turn, giving Makita three additional outs. Queen or a nine needed for Makita to double. Hey. Doesn't come, it's the king of diamonds, and with that, Randy, Danny Tang takes down the 50k short deck main event, his second title of the series. I'm not doing a U, I'm not doing a U. Joining a very exclusive three-time champion club with Phil Ivey and Wai Kin Yong, and more importantly, Revenge. Oh. He got the revenge He's on Makita. Got the revenge he got on Makita. In the main event, mind you. Oh that main event God. trophy. <laughs> Jacob and Co. Oh. Triton collaboration oh. PC. Oh. Danny. <laughs> and Luke Vivaldi and James Dempsey. A hug there. Oh. It means so Not much to him. Not easy One of the you. Triton regulars and OGs. GG's to Makita, of course. <laughs> Another crossbar finish here. 515k, his second, second place finish at this yes. series. <sighs> Getting wow. it done after the longest heads up battle of the series. What a battle it was, Randy. 750,000. There are the final payouts of the final table brought to you by Poker Stake. A really fitting end to the series, if you will, that short deck main final table. So we welcome you back to the break desk. Randy Lou alongside myself, Henry Kilbane. Title number three for Mr. Danny Tang in a 50K, no less. It's a big one. Um, you know, he was fighting one of the strongest short deck 36 card hold'em player in all, of all time, pretty much, Makita, known to be one of the best, but Danny really maneuvered that final table perfectly, especially that heads up. Key timed all ins, um, big call downs like you saw with the Ace Eight, um, just to name one of the few. Really phenomenal. Happy to see him take one down. You can see it means so much to him. Yeah, understandably so. And I couldn't put it better myself, you know, since taking the chip lead after that cooler against Watson. Just really navigated it to perfection, eliminating everyone bar Richard Young at that final table, which is, you know, from a strategy point of view, well played, Danny. <laughs> Not eliminating the co-founder. Uh, Bads, of course, second for 515k. Again, close to narrowing that gap on Jason Kuhn, but ultimately coming up short. And 
Jason now having to sweat the final table of the 20K, which we're going to be picking up coverage on in just a few moments' time as they are down to the final table. Tom Dwan leading the field in that one. For now, Randy, we're going to throw it down to our MC, Ali Najad, who's going to have a word with our 50K short deck main event champion, Mr. Daddy Tang. Well, apparently here in North Cyprus, good things come in twos. Danny Tang here, your 50K short deck main event champion. Danny, this time last year, that man that you squared off with denied you your first title in Madrid when you faced him heads up. Now you've got three under your belt. As mentioned, your second here of this series. Compare the feeling that you have now to the one that you did after losing to Mikita. I mean, revenge is sweet, but... This is different, you know, this is a main event, you know, um, I don't know, it's my seventh stop, it took me a while to get one under my belt, you know, got it underway in Vietnam, but it was a small field, smaller buy-in, this is a main event, this is a big one, against these two freeway, not easy, very tough final table and I'm happy to get it done. There's no such thing as an easy final table at a Triton Super High Roller Series, we know that much. Now glancing through your Facebook, you actually commented on a post that you had made six years ago when you won 90,000 in a poker tournament and it was the moment that you decided to go pro. Could you ever have dreamed a moment like right now was gonna be in your future on that day? No, no way, no way. I mean, I started, yeah, like you said, many years ago back in UK and Rob Young's The Still Dawn Casino. Um, and yeah, just made my way up. And luckily I met these people, nice people around me, Richard, Paul, you know, these people. and. Everyone just who helped me along the way, you know, and been given these opportunities to play these stakes, and I'm glad to show that I'm capable. Now, I feel compelled to bring him up because you mentioned him when we were chatting just before this interview, and obviously we lost Ivan Liao last year, right here in North Cyprus. You feel him? I feel him. He's here. He's, he, I can feel his energy, you know, his presence. I walk through these corridors every day, and, and we look at the you know, the two-time champions and, you know, all these pictures of him and he'll always forever be with us and part of the Triton family. As hopefully will you be, as you will join Wai Ken Young and Phil Ivey on the three-time Banner Club. Now I'm going to bring in Rui from Jacob and Company to hand you your special Triton Edition watch. Let's make that happen. Triton um, special winner's edition. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. We created it for the winner. Thank you very much. You're a watch guy, right? It's kind of. You are now. <laughs> Please, yeah. Danny, hope you enjoy it and uh, remember this glorious moment. And the glory of the moment doesn't stop there, Rui. Thank you so much. Let's bring in Luca Vivaldi, our tournament director, with the extra-large Triton Trophy, courtesy of the main event win. Ladies and gentlemen, Danny Tang, your 50K short deck winner. And what a wonderful moment that was there for Danny Tang as he picks up his third ever Triton title, his second here at the series, back now at the desk through the magic of television alongside Randy, swapping in for Henry Kilbane. And uh, 
Oh, there he is, the <laughs> champ, man. Well done, my friend. I wish we had a third headset to hand you. Now, you can't register for the 20K. No. No. And that was the first thing you asked me right after we were done? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Danny's saying he wants to break into the top three for the Player of the Year award race, but it's unrealistic. He can't do it. So then that's it? I mean, it's pretty cool to be in the top five, I guess, or four, maybe. I think I'm four, four, six. Top five, top four, for sure. So then now the calendar resets, and obviously next year, Danny, yes. aim higher. <laughs> <laughs> well done, my friend. You, Super proud of you. Take care, bro. That was fun. So Danny Tang, there he is. Gonna, I guess, no more poker for him on the festival. Just He's gonna go it. grab a beer and celebrate, eh? I mean, the man got two trophies. One in the short deck main event. Got to take out Makita Baziakuski, who took him out. Right? Remember that huge chip advantage he had? Indeed. Couldn't close it out. Um, He's gotta feel really good about it, you know, and. Heartfelt words when he spoke of Ivan, right, in that interview, which um, was lovely. And con big congratulations to him, but it's not over. No, it's not over. We've got a 20K <laughs> short deck, short deck, our final event of the series right now taking place. And guess who's at the top of the leaderboard, Randy? Our favorite player, Tom Dwan. Tom Everyone's Dwan. always asking about him. Here Indeed. he is. 1.6 million in chips for Tom Dwan. Mike Watson, 1.37 in second. Haxton, 1.23 in third. The only three with greater than the current average stack of 1.1 million. 73 antis. 15 and 30,000 ante and double ante right now. It looks like I'm being told that we have seven players left right now, not eight. So TBD, who's going to be the individual out of this eight pack in the Triton Poker Plus app right now that's going to snap, get gray washed and end up on the outside looking in. We will effort an answer for that for you momentarily. However, we haven't burst the money bubble. Only five are going to get paid here. Yeah, only five are get paid. But I think the really big point of this is that there's one of those eight remaining, Stephen Chidwick, who can take the lead in the Ivan Liao Player of the Year leaderboard, okay. if he wins it, he overthrows Jason Kuhn, guaranteed. It exactly has to win it. Has to win it. Second doesn't do it. 200K prize, if he can do it, some skewed prize pool here. So just imagine then, if you will, 55,100, good for fifth place, and at the top, 214,000, but for one player, it's actually 414,000. With the 200K overlay for that Ivan Liao POI award, Strap in. This is going to be exciting. Very motivated is Stephen Chidwick at present without question. And I understand we are able to send it back down to the action right now. Let us pick up then with coverage of our 20K short deck as we wind things down from here in North Cyprus. And we pick things up midway through. Mike Watson with the jack of spades. Broadway gutter can't take the heat as... Duan showing off a very aggressive disposition. Kings and sevens there. That's really been the way he goes about his business. His boss, Paul Pua, also at this feature. He's got some catching up to do. Richard Young won title and final table this last short deck main. This is going to be a shot at a 29th cash for Boss, <coughs> who has one cash. Third place, 25K turbo so far here in North Cyprus. All in. Divorce, jamming the ace queen here. Yeah, Daniel's on a mission. Didn't cash the short deck main, was on pace <coughs> to do so. Haxton, having a rough trip. Perhaps this will be the one that saves them.
Lays down to ace queen. Yeah, he sure does. Watson getting rid of the eights. Now Chidwick. Shortest stack of the seven remaining players. The one name that really wanted to call busted out huh? on I the final table the bubble was that of Kyat Lee. Money bubble, oh, two away. I rolled a fold. I rolled a fold? You got lucky. How do you know I got lucky? She probably had something pretty bad. Maybe I'm just trolling the audience. Johnny's? I don't know. Very good hand. Huh? That's a very good hand. Johnny's? I might make a third one. What is Johnny? Like Johnny Rockets? Like Pocket Aces? I have no idea. Johnny's or Jack's? Oh. Since when? I don't know. I wasn't around when it was Chris <laughs> and Johnny's, but I know that's what we call okay, him. Okay, okay. Never mind. Johnny 7 suited for Duan. He will limp in. Watson, hijack. I think he's just confused. Joins a party. We are two places from the money. Definitely going to change how players attack these situations. Although on Chidwick's mind is he really wants that top prize. Very top heavy for him. As we've alluded to on multiple occasions, once somebody starts the limp train, it starts to speed down the tracks generally. And sometimes the button does activate but sometimes that activation can run into a very trappy, open limp. Devoris checks back. So we'll take this one four ways. Queen Jack six with a couple of hearts. Duan. Second pair started this party. Yeah, no strong holdings for all four of these players. Couple of goodies. Top pair for Chidwick, the leader. It's actually Tom that's betting out. It's always fun to watch how he navigates short deck. Always willing to kind of get in there, play post flop. Kind of draw to the nut straight here. Top pairs out. It's all scary drawing to a straight like this in case one of those early position limps will happen to be ace king and you make a straight with a 10. Looks like he does want to still continue as the chip leader. Interesting then that the best hand found the muck for Chidwick, a little bit uncomfortable in the face of the opener leading out on this board texture, and then that flat from Watson. Seven on the turn, giving Dwan the best hand now with Jackson Sevens. Of course, amongst these three, that was always the case. Yeah, really disguised two pair. I don't think people are perceiving him to be playing Jack Seven. The problem now, though, is that Dewars has got him covered, so he doesn't exactly want to play a huge bloated pot, so comes in with check on the turn. Dewars still got that gutty. Checked around, and now the ace giving Watson top pair. Yeah, when you're holding a two pair like Jack Seven, it's always awkward on clean runouts as there's always <laughs> bigger two pair straights coming in. So it does take the passive line for Watson, ace 10. 
Still just one pair on a very textured board, so trying to show it down. Big question is, does King-9 take a stance? What's he got? For this price, it looks like Duan's just going to put in one of those side calls here, two pairs. Just contemplating, but can pick off like the ten nines. Broken hearts. Hasn't done it yet. Yeah, hasn't. He's still worrying about Watson in the middle. Seven hundred and fifteen thousand chip pot available. Oh, it seems like it's gonna lay it down, doesn't it? Oh. You can never tell the way he holds his cards. I mean, as played, the fact that there was two rounds of checks in front of Dvoris, Duan knows the bluff is within his range, and he makes the call. Don't think he needs to worry about Watson rising up to do anything behind him here. This pot should be heading Durr's way, as indeed Mike folds. Dvoris caught with his hand in the cookie jar. Durr shows Jackson sevens. Yeah, look at Dvoris just like, yeah. really? Jack seven? Hi, Jack. I see you. Jack seven. <laughs> <laughs> Boss, maybe. <laughs> Alluding to what everybody was thinking about. And there is no thought required to head over to bookmaker.eu. They've got reduced juice, low VIG, minus 108 sides and totals on all NBA postseason games. Open a new account at bookmaker.eu now and get up to a $500 cash bonus with your first deposit. Professional and recreational bettors are welcome. High limits, high payouts, and live betting on all NBA postseason games at bookmaker.eu where the line originates. You know, Randy, that last one with the Jack-7 suited for Tom Dwan. When he first came onto the scene, it was his left brain sort of creativity that really caught everybody off guard. And now you're seeing how it stays with him all these years later. Yes. <laughs> it's just the Tom Dwan factor, and it's uh, really hard to put him on a, a range of hands. And even caught Boss uh, off guard there. Yeah. Durr's just willing to do that which others tend not to be willing to do. And obviously sometimes it leaves you showered early and sometimes it leaves you spinning it up and leaves others talking to themselves. Yeah, Tom likes to play a strategy that kind of helps him build a big stack and he's willing to put in multiple rebuys into it. Likes to lean on his opponents. Really the perfect setup for him now as he's currently the chip leader after taking that pot from divorce. Really just isn't shy of trying to see flops. You know, pocket six is by no means a strong hand, but willing to get in there. Dennis Shufarin, the short deck specialist, flops himself a pair and a flush draw. Way out in front. Yeah, pretty good here. Well, notice who's the one betting. It's Tom. King X, Queen X very much could be within the range of his open lip here. And if it is, she probably knows a pair of eights is not ahead. And unlike in long deck, these flush draws are so much harder to come by. And you'll see players take passive lines with them. Yeah, I'd imagine he'd, he'd want to take a passive line here, especially if the upfront limp, which is still very uncapped, like, you know, ace-kings and king-queens, even, like, sets possible still for Tom. But 
the main decision here for, for Dennis is do I rip it in or just call in position. Imagine calling is quite nice. Oh, all in it is. Knows his player. So Shufadin taking an aggressive line against the aggressive Tom Dwan. Six is an easy fold for Durr. Sub-30 antis here, Jack-10 suited, definite candidate for attacking. Four fifty. Four fifty announced, and that is a big chunk of Haxton's remaining chips. The fact that he's willing to do this, two away from the money, with two shorter stacks out there, carries weight. customers not that he was looking for any but the jack 10 suited even when aces wake up behind you ace king or whatever it's just one of those hands that performs well, that that's why you see these kind of 30 anti 35 anti stacks just push them in is when they get called they still have high equity mm -hmm. um, obviously the big hands are calling your ace king ace queen you got two live cards yeah, mainly you're looking to chip up, though, too, from the money ace jack. Counting down his stack. We're playing 36 antis in this spot. Still a type of stack that kind of just tends to push in these types of holdings. But actually just lays it down. That is big respect to the tournament aspect of it too from the money right now feels that he's out chipped two people which he has paul and chidwick at the bottom 22 and 26 antes that he doesn't need to take a risk here of ace jack potentially busting out Horse does need to be wary that there's Tom Dwan who's got him covered still to act behind him, so can't really just recklessly jam this hand. Obviously, Dwan can really punish Devoris when he chooses to open into him. And very much wanted to do so, it seemed, but the King Nine offsuit, not the candidate in this spot yeah i feel like tom kind of craves playing in position against deeper stacks when he's got them covered and high pressure tournament situations feels like he's going to get like more free flops more free turns etc it's just always craving kind of like some kind of action and putting people to the test it's been known to do that for the bulk of his career. Was a brutal main event, a short deck for Watson actually bubbling it. Ran kings into aces with rather large stack. Hopefully he can uh, do better in this one. He's king suited now. Bit of a bazooka.
One fifty open. Second straight open from Dvoris. And you wonder whether or not Dwan is going to think Daniel's speeding and looking to punish him. Yeah, you see, it's just reluctance <laughs> there on the face of Durr, isn't it, Randy? Yeah. He's um, he's counting the number of hands that Dvoris has been open raising, not just open jamming, not limping. I'll tell you, though, the third time, that's when Durr might make his stance. Very interesting spot here for Haxton as he's got a hand that could reshove, could just call. He is closing the action. Would go heads up. Also tricky in a sense. There's two short stacks out there, so maybe he folds from time to time as well. Also seen Dvoris open twice. Haxton makes a stance and going to get snapped off by Dvoris. <coughs> Durr is probably feeling pretty good about this situation. Haxton, on the other hand, Randy, is not. As he jams, 8.95 and runs into top of range. Two players most delighted about this situation, Paul Hua and Stephen Chidwick, as they are heavily in favor of a divorce scoop in this 1.9 million chip pot that will allow us to get to the direct money bubble. I can't lose that for a king, right? Haxton with the gut shot. Draw to a six or a nine for the time being. Now That's suddenly. Really 10 on the turn. Good luck. Yeah. Eight on the river. Board pairs and Haxton will not cash in this one. As he wraps the table. Yeah, tough for Haxton there. Got close to the money once again in this short deck event, but can't squeeze in. Nicely said. We're on a stone cold bubble here. One player getting zero. Everyone else at least 55,100. The race at the bottom is two short stacks. Chidwick, 20 antes, 500,000 in chips. Paul Paul here, 23 antes, 570,000. So out pipping his opponent by three antes. Then as we move up the ranks, Watson, more than double, Paul Stack. <coughs> so Chidwick, who has to win this one to take down the POY, that's those 20 Annies, 500K. And has an ace eight off suit, which has left him with a bit of a dilemma, it would seem. Now then, time bank utilized, half of his stack deployed. And there's going to be some real respect, one would imagine, coming from Stephen Chidwick, given that he's put half his stack out there. He is under the gun. He's got the POY overlay. And we're on the direct money bubble. But is it going to be enough respect to leave Dennis Shufarin thinking yeah. twice about a queen suited? Stevie's eyes trained intently. On Dennis. 
Penis is trying to break down this kind of time bank half stack jam of Chidwick. Ace Queen suited a monster. However, he's currently sitting in third. He's got Tom Dewan right behind him with a massive stack. Very tricky situation. I like to just call here so he doesn't bleed more chips in, s in case someone else wakes up a hand. Tom's just thinking, how can I get involved? How strong do you think the flat from Dennis is going to look to Duan? That's what he's trying to figure out right now, is why didn't Dennis rejam all in? Or maybe even click back? Why, why did he just call? Is it something that is going to call fold? What right. if Dennis had aces? Would he rejam or, or kings? Would he rejam ace king? So he's thinking he might get an overlay potentially. Definitely crossing his mind. Tom's just thinking queen jack is just too weak, but if it was a little bit stronger, I might get in there. Boy, it seems like every one of these spots has been one that put Durr in pain as he wants to get involved. Looking for excuses. Not finding them, however. Yeah, a little voice in his head says, just calm down. Let's play solid. Paul now in a really interesting spot of King Jack suited as he probably feels he's doing well against Chidwick's range, but maybe not the flat call. struggles going on in Paul's mind, obviously. Although, given that he's only got 545,000 to carry other considerations as well. It's too awkward of a situation for him to get involved there where maybe he even stone cold bubbles. Chidwick gets away from his hand since he's got 10 antes. We'll take a post-flop spot here, 625 in the middle. So that post-flop spot does not develop into any improvement for Chidwick. And that board composition, Randy, feels like the type that is going to interact pretty often this Shufarine's flat? Yes, I believe so. It's kind of, a, this is actually one of the most bizarre hands I've seen. Um, given that we're on a stone cold bubble, he's put in half his stack, found a flop where he feels he probably has to just give up with ace eight. The flat calling range, clearly the big hands, you know, like the ace king, the ace queens, they probably wouldn't be folding for 10 antis given there's 625 in the middle. But also occasionally like some ace jacks. Really, I I think this is a mandatory check fold for, for Chidwick on this board texture with ace eight offsuit. But a big decision here for ace queen. Yeah, does ace queen really want to get the other 250 in? Because this check from Chidwick isn't 100% the product of not having better than ace queen, Randy. Correct. So it's kind of like that no limit hold'em thing where we leave some stack just to kind of see if maybe it just checked down. Great bet here from Dennis, denying the equity. Snap fold from Stevie. Bit of relief. We have East 8 suited confirmation. And they got cold. The guy has a bleed. Oh, boom. Shufarin rallying his rail. If you lose the point, he'd be shot at any. Yeah, yeah. 
that guy is a warrior. I guess he has a big head. It's just his stuff. The brief quiddies. So I think he might fall to pop. Divorce. A seven off. Clear chip leader right now, just attacking. I mean, Chidwick's sitting on eight antes. He knows that everyone else really can't get involved without the goods. And even then. So predictably folded around to Chidwick. Jack nine off. Already two annies in the middle. I mean, if he could see the cards, would want to push them in, but Jack nine is not that good. Problem is he's put in two antis already. Note that he's got 2% more equity than this A7. Despite being behind pre. Yeah, short deck. Equities are different. There is value in Chidwick's tournament life right now as still it is short deck and people can just wake up some hands and get it in before he does. Stone Cold Bubble. Very tough for him though. Feels like we're in the operating room right now, Randy, in terms of the surgical precision with which procedures are going to be underway. And this is far from cosmetic surgery. This is life or death for one of these six in terms of making the money or not and so much more money in terms of the POY overlay for Stephen Chidwick. The man trying to figure out how to make the most of a six ante stack. One of those antes. Out in front, pocket nines facing the jam from Watson. Not a great hand. No, it's not. But what's also bad is, is the situation is he is bleeding every single hand we're being dealt one ante at a time. It's crossing his mind, too, that maybe Divorce wakes up a hand from time to time and knocks out Watson, because Watson's put all his chips. He has not left anything behind. The fact that he would be willing to take this risk on the direct bubble with two shorter stacks than his out there. It should be a strong hand perceived. None of it lost on Stevie, but he decides I'm not going to get anteed away looking for a hand better than two nines. A spin's going to be needed, and I'm going to pursue it here and now. Now, Devoris with king-queen off suit. A big decision here, Ali. It's chip EV point of view. King Queen would be a call. But now on a Stone Cold Bubble, things are different. Does lay it down. 
Not too bad for Stevie, 46%. He can hold here. More chips than Paul Poir by 15,000. Key moment here at the FT for Stephen Chidwick. His POI hopes hanging in the balance and for the time being dashed. Watson says fair. Top pair for him. Now, the gutter and the boat draw. Nine or ten needed. And there is a nine. Nines full of sevens, and Stephen Chidwick lives on, Randy. A surgery was successful, I yeah. suppose. Yeah. Looked like the patient was flatlining. <laughs> yeah. Back to life. POI, back on board. We got a new tournament short stack right now. Paul Poir at the bottom there, as you can see, 16 antes. And as we climb our way up, Chidwick, 18, Watson, 31. Dennis, the short deck specialist, he's got 52, and Tom, Fan favorite at 67, but really at the summit is Daniel Divorce. 107 antes, 3.2 million. Really just going to try and cruise his way to a victory in this. Consider in the earlier phases of a short deck event, in particular, day one, registration still open. How people treat 50 antes and less, they just rip them in there. Other lammers available, other rebuys. Now here at an FT, however, they're all considered a lot more precious, in particular on the direct bubble as we find ourselves here at the 30K, 60K level. Couple hooks here for Paul. Tournament short stack. Big, big decision on how to approach this. Does he put all the mm. chips in? Does he do something like what? Stevie did put half your stack in. Problem is he's playing 16 antes. So half his stack would be quite, quite a lot already. So preserves as Paul pulls back 60K, puts 425 out there with the Johnnies. Eight's in the muck and seven, eight. Mm -hmm. Feels like it might be following Shoo. suit. Yeah. Let's <laughs> get a three over cut. <laughs> Two shorter snacks. Watson hasn't been showing signs of slowing down, though. Well, it cuts two ways, right? You can leverage the presence of the shorter stack to make every time you enter a pot look that much stronger. Divorce. Not going to be able to apply pressure with the 10-9 offsuit. This one will get through. And those pickups are so critical because unlike in No Limit, Randy, 
You can't hide. Every single hand and ante. On the button, two anties. Whittle your stack away. Yeah, he just went from 900 to just under 1.1 million. So nice increase. Survive around. Aces, what timing is this for Chidwick? The, the shortest best. stack. Absolute critical. Five. Just look at this, though. Chidwick. Not electing to jam. Don't forget, last time he did this, he checkboarded Jack-10-10 10, 10 Rainbow. So most likely they realized it was in like an ace-8. Watson Ooh, pointed that out. But just nothing to play back at. And you see Boss binning the suited king. Oh, Saying now I'm short. Yeah. As he and Stevie jockey back and forth. attack here. Successfully. Certainly a sweet setup here for Dvoris. That's the trick you need now. When you put your chips in, they come back. <laughs> I can make it thin at it. <laughs> Winding down this North Cyprus Festival, Alina Jad and Randy Liu bringing you coverage of our very final event, the 20K Short Deck. Welcome to those on the Triton Poker Plus app, Twitch, or of course, our YouTube channel. Hit that like and subscribe button. One last time if you haven't already. As the Dvoris attack continues. Handcuffs Tom. being placed on the <laughs> likes of most combos, Randy, but not ace-ace. Number one and number two in stacks. Tom's not. Going anywhere, of course. <laughs> Jesus. What does Paul have? Queen 10 suited. I would imagine that, really, there's no reason for him to get involved in this no. one, right? As he can make the money in the event that Dwan's hand does not hold. He's not getting involved here. Just freeze the shot clock just in case there's something he's overlooked. Sweep it up. Triple up. I mean, I've seen some ambitious plays, but I don't think this is one of them. Ace King straight in the muck for Watson. Well, you get a sense of the situational awareness when you see that kind of kit work its way into the muck. No, you have aces already. not supposed to. Knowing you. 
To the flop we go, and it's going to be an open-ender that Tom Dwan's aces are going to have to fade. Just look at the equities. A 4% favorite is Dvoris with two to come. Queen on the turn, and now Dwan returns to the driver's seat and stays there. It would be funny if you bubble. <laughs> two guys will jump. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I know someone it wouldn't have been funny for. 1.860. If I call and win, I have to win in the firm. It's so hard. You heard Dwan's stop process there. He's saying, if I call and I win, find myself up at the top of the chip counts now. Having dethroned Daniel Divorce, my chance of winning the tournament is so high. My ace king would have helped, too. I think Oof. there's five players that have got I something to say about that. Up. Queen 10. Clap. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, Tom up 3.9, and he knows he's in the driver's seat now, can just go all in. So really perceived to be even more chips coming his way on the Stone Cold just bubble. Just 30 for you. You're not the button. Oh, nice. Yeah, it was under the gun. <laughs> Power shift. Here at the FT, on the direct bubble. Dvoris dethroned, down to 48 Annies. And let's see what Tom Dwan does with this war hammer. And I'm not talking about the Queen-6 offsuit, of course. Such a bad hand, though. Gosh, he's reaching for chips, Ollie. And they're not calling chips, they're raising chips. I mean, disrespect. He's the warden in what is the Tom Dwan prison. Everyone has been put in, courtesy of that double through Dvoris. The thing is, everybody knows, Durr in particular, is going to be up to no good mm -hmm. in this situation, but they are really powerless to do much about it unless they really wake up with top of range, given that those two short stacks of Chidwick and Paul still they lurk. Lost. Yeah, and also when he open raises, he's going to be priced in to make so many calls, so people are even more terrified of re-jamming, like, strongish hands like ace 10 and stuff you just have so little fold equity you don't want to run it i mean he's raising queen six i'm thinking odds are he's going to raise this hand while it's two queens now he's just going to jam it come get it ace king kings and aces feel like the only sorts of hands that are really going to want to battle. Yeah, shows the real hand. <laughs> Didn't show the queen six, but shows the queen queen. It's the classic. So after doubling, doubling up, he was at 3.95 million. Now... Sitting at 4.3 with two takedowns in a row. Imagine if he just does this over and over again. He's going to be up to 5 million in no time. Anties here for Dennis. It's uncomfortable given that Tom's got more chips than you, but seems necessary. Just 
Stone Cold Bubble slides it in. Oh, I just swing tag. You have complete trash over there. One beat, one smoke. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you what. I don't know too many people sitting on eleven annies that are going to be in as good a mood as Boss is here on the direct bubble. Consider his affect yeah. versus Chitwicks <laughs> when he was in good hand, one big, one small. the way he slid. <laughs> <laughs> slid over to look at the guards. It's yeah. hilarious. Potential. Like head was sideways. Well, they go so far back too, Randy, yeah. in terms of the Macau cash games. I know, yes. The relationship well beyond the borders of this festival oh. or even Triton. It's amazing how short the short stacks are it's right like now. 10, 11 antis, 21 antis. 32. Holds over to Tom, who's got ace 10. Mandatory all in, and Paul. Blind versus blind, has got two nines. Slight dog. Does he force an all in here on a coin flip? He does. Pocket nines. Deemed the one. By boss, as he knew that the jam from Dwan was going to come with all sorts of combinations. And he also knows that at some point he was going to have to dig in. So, 930k pot and bottom set at risk against the two way straight draw. You drink that on the turn. No. Actually, oh no is right. As far from drawing dead, Tom binks a king to make the straight. Now the board must pair for Paul, and it has. Big smile on Boss's face as he will leave Chitwick with the short stack duties and double to keep this bubble intact. I know you have a lot of blacks. I don't want the blacks. These pocket nines are hard to beat. Yeah. Start reconsidering I how I play them. Going all in. <laughs> I have to reconsider. Ten more MCs, maybe I pull. For sure. Twenty. No. Pretty dusty here, 10 6 offsuit, but still just all in relentless. Don't let him push you around, Mike. I am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, pal. I know. That's what Paul was feeling with those mats. Stand up for bullets. I love st seeing that from Stevie, yeah, by the way, it's Randy. It's extra funny that it's coming out of Stevie. 100%. You know, I mean, he's got. Tremendous personality, a good sense of humor, dry wit. Unfortunately, more often than not, we've got to watch him at war against the best around, yep. of which we can count him. And so it's understandable how he might not be looking to entertain, <laughs> rather do his job. Even two sixes is in. One of How the bad? dustiest hands in Can the game. It be? <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. Chidwick wakes up with two queens, and Dwan knows that this was an oopsie. <laughs> Paul instantly upset. <laughs> <laughs> if I were boss, I might reach over and slap Tom's hand for this one. Yeah, naughty. Queens looking good. 88%, that's about as good as it gets. And now showers for the two sixes. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. On the turn. <laughs> Chidwick boating up on two occasions. 370. Ooh. The queen. The six queen. made an appearance, by the way, on that river, so the queen was needed. Yeah, the queen? Yeah, but... No, I mean, I had ace and it's been, uh, like, revealed, like... And, uh, Another card, I had queen, and another card, she brings me ten. So oh, one card was oh, it would have been ace queen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, ace of spades was dead. Yeah. What, what, what ace of spades is that? It was dead that hand. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, ace of spades exposed? Yeah. Yes. Like, That's why I had called. like first card. Ace daddy has to throw away the queen. Yeah, I mean. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that was really strange. Yeah, such a fish when you did not this. Open like yeah. queen and ace, well, and there is no ace. And you say, okay, no problem. <laughs> no, you, you should squeeze your four anyway. You're two guys shot. Three. Huh? Uh, <laughs> lights sure? out? It's something about. <laughs> He's still jamming with lights out. They ask him if he was sure. <laughs> Did he leave and look? Maybe he wants everyone to play in the dark. <laughs> it feels like he would be willing to do so, <laughs> given the big stack. Like my strategy doesn't change. No, Paul just threw in his ante. Feels like poker after dark X Triton right now. <laughs> oh, red lights are on. Wait a minute. They're just showing off everything they can do with the light tech now. <laughs> <laughs> Humor is up for everyone. They only rented the ballroom until midnight. <laughs> might, might be done by midnight. We didn't think the festival was going to go on this long, guys. All right, so Daniel. We'll have to play in the dark in this hand, it seems. You have over four, right, Tom? Three point six wants to count. in total. Three, seven, something. Three point six seven five. I wasn't any two. The last hand with that sixes I was, obviously. <laughs> Especially after the lights off. <laughs> you actually, you know, the <laughs> those borderline little one to two percent might have run. Or two percent might have. Now, now 3-9-5. Aces now for Tom, and w everyone knows he's yeah, been raising trash. Right. No, but maybe you can read my thoughts. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just been quiet. <laughs> well, what were you thinking? Yeah, yeah, that's what I, <laughs> that's what I said. Like, that's where balls thinking like, uh, I would say. 225, right? Okay. Nice proposition, sir. Mm -hmm. I for the kicks. Twan. Loaded for bear with those two aces. Praying somebody would take a stand. Feels like the tension is somehow broken after he doubled through Dvoris. Despite the fact that, the we're, that we are on the direct bubble and Watson now finds himself the shortest of all stacks. Yeah, something about Tom Dolan being the chip leader and changes the mood. It's like fitting. Well, Boss was actually at the table, the first time short deck was ever played, was part of changing the rules on the fly. Tom Dwan wasn't far removed 
from that moment. Has played plenty of short deck himself for the highest stakes imaginable. 480. Yeah, both of them have been involved in every iteration of the rule changes. <coughs> 480 of 605. Sent into Wait, the middle by Watson's ace-10 off. I think it's 125, but yes. Yeah. Now Dvoris. Third in chips at present. 26 annies. Considering his ace-10. Yeah, tricky as he wants to kind of play with Watson, but he doesn't want to get involved with the two guys who's got him covered behind him okay, if they, in case they wake up a hand. So Watson mm. will chip up. You heard a little groan from Boss there. As the breathing room that he had moments ago against Mike. Yeah, none of these short snacks are getting eliminated. They were two people were down to like 10 and 11 blinds at the same time at one point now. We've got a three-way race at the bottom, 19 to 21 antes. Even third, 25 antes, and second, 31. Really, the only player comfortable is our chip leader, Tom Dewan. King Queen off suit. Jam, take it. Boris, second in chips by a nose over Dennis Shufarin, 31 and 30 antes respectively. Then the drop off to Watson, who's got 20, Chidwick with 19, Paul with 17. And the operating room remains open for business. Point. Point. Queen six off. Dusty. This is abuse. Yes, it is. I try and suppose the airport leaves in two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> did you catch that? I, mean, I they did. Drive fast. Steve. <laughs> and it's like, there's not going to be yeah, it's an inconvenient break. So Stevie's airport transfer leaves in two minutes. Now, I might not have shared that. Just out of fear that the next time I jam, it's because I'm trying to make my flight. <laughs> Light opens, perhaps. Yeah. Suspected. Small little influence. I mean, Stevie, we're just playing for, what, 214 up top. You get an extra 200K if you can win it. Player of the year. A little something up top. Maybe we can delay that airport transfer. Well, we know we're not going to be able to delay that flight, provided it's commercial. Can we not buy a new airplane ticket with our winnings? Is that not an option? It is, Randy. He's and flying to the UK? How far is that? I think he might be flying back to Vegas. Oh, okay. Can't but miss when you that five hundred dollar tournament or whatever it is he's got to go. There's play. no five hundred dollar <laughs> tournament he's going to play. Stop. He's got the family back there. He's okay. got a house in Vegas. Oh, okay, sorry. But as I hear you say that, can we not change the flight with our winnings, provided that the bubble bursts and he's on the right side of it? Reminds me of a story I'll share after this one's over. 
All these stories late night. That's what I like. <laughs> Dawn. 9-9. Nine, nine. Big stack. That's what he likes. Tavoris, a seven off. Yeah, in the box. This isn't the spot. Okay. World Series of Poker, probably 10 years back. I'm working on a show called Poker Road Radio. Five days a week, Monday through Friday. I was living in L.A. at the time. I would fly back every weekend. Kept my room at the Rio the entire six weeks plus. I had to walk through the casino. Every day we were done with work. Not once did I play any games in the pit. And everybody I was friends with who would tell me stories about going and losing in the pit. I'm like, why do you do it, guys? Stop. You know you're taking the worst of it. Don't play the pit. Last night. We finish up. 2, 3 in the morning. I got a flight at like 6 or 7 in the morning. And I decide I don't want to go to bed. Neither does Ace Queen. Leave that cliffhanger for a second. Put a little button on that. I'm going to edge my seat in two situations. The story and this <laughs> ace queen. <laughs> well, if you think you're feeling edge of your seat sentiments, consider boss's spot. He knows Duan is just going to be mashing this big stack. Boss decides now is the time and will square off against Duan as nothing develops behind him. <laughs> Everybody getting a laugh out of the idea that Devoris would seek to get involved. Huh? On the shoulders. Somehow Duan surprised that Paul would dig in with an ace queen. Seven percent edge for the ace queen. Not on that board though, as it's a three to two dog with two to come. Six outs twice for boss. Add outs as the king would now work as well. Six outs become ten. One point three out there, but the running tens will draw the curtain on boss's bid to make the money and pick up another Triton title. As we are now but okay. uh, in the money. We can make a shorter break. Yeah, we can. Uh, like I need like yeah. like five minutes. Yeah. But maybe you miss the play? Uh, it's close. I, I mean, I need to <laughs> leave within like half an hour. Oh, okay, I'm ready. To see. Well, it sounds like we're at a break. Unclear just how long that break's going to be. Being told five minutes. So a truncated edition as you get a look at the chip counts with everybody in the money here in the final event of this North Cyprus Festival. Payouts on the right side of the bubble, 55K, the min cash. 214K to our eventual champion. Randy and I are going to step aside in just about five minutes. We'll be back with more coverage of the short deck. GG Poker. It's the best poker The biggest song. poker site. This is a crazy. No way! <laughs>
take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation from pre-flop to river, we've got it all. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. GG Poker. It's the best poker The biggest song. poker song. This is a crazy. No way! In the money of the final event of the Triton Super High Roller Series here in North Cyprus, 
Chip Counts brought to you by Poker Steak, and it is none other than Tom Dwan with an overwhelming chip lead over the final five players. Has more than half the chips in play, 138 ante. Second in chips is Dvoris with 26, and bottom of the counts is Chidwick with 14. The runaway train, Randy, event number 17. Tom Dwan looking to take down his third Triton title. And of course, the 214,000 that comes with it. And kind of feels like maybe this one is his to lose given the chip lead he finds himself with. Yeah, and Tom's been relentless, just jamming like queen six offsuits <laughs> in early position and whatnot. Um, but still a little storyline here for Chidwick. He can still ship this tournament. Yes, he's at the bottom of the chip counts, but if he does, player of the year is his. Would be a pretty incredible achievement. The final event of the series to come in clutch. Hello, Ace Queen. Tom Tuan going to make the call. This is first v second in chips. Tom actually a slight equity favorite here. With the Ace Queen all in, brought to you by Bookmaker.eu. Daniel Dvorak still in the hunt for his first Triton title. Five cards to come. As it comes King 10 9. Gut shot for Dvorak. Feeling better now, Dvorak. Two outs once for Tom. Queen, queen, trip's no good. Thoris with the double up. A very comfortable gap between himself and the rest of the field. Slight dent in Tom Dwan's stack down to 90 antes. Thoris up to 40. And Dennis in third with 20. So what's on 12? And Stephen Chidwick with 11. So short, he's got a free sweat. A potential ladder, Randy. Yeah, and, you know, Stevie has an, another sweat is that he says his airplane's about to leave in, like, 15 or 20 minutes or so. No. So he, <laughs> just kind of like <laughs> he's the shortest stack. Didn't really want the full break. Was like, can we get a shorter break? Granted. And here we are. Wow. He, so he's got he's got the airplane. Is his bag his door. packed? If it is. the He's late for his transfer already, or soon. And then... He's still got to look at the top price, 214 plus 200 if he can win it. Does that mean if he wins it, no interview with Stevie because he's going to run for his flight? I believe he would have missed it probably if he wins because that would take some time. Yeah, wouldn't blame him, of course. Well, let's see, Ace-9 suited. Under the gun, 5 of 5. Going to be playing for the win, obviously. Half the stack. There it is, half of it goes in. Force with a couple of tens now. How much did you start with? One seat over. 240 behind. Divorce has got quite a bit of chips too that Tom can't re recklessly attack him. 450. It's a little min click. And this actually like kind of outprices like, oh. say Tom, who might have a speculative hand. You know, Tom might call <laughs> to <laughs> Tom's <laughs> face. Yeah, he's <laughs> just like I wanted to eliminate Chidwick. He wanted to get involved, and this hand is something that probably would strongly consider 250, but 450 is quite tough. See, Chidwick wouldn't have a step, so he could make the call here. Kind of go three ways with Dvoris and Chidwick. What is Tom thinking here? He does hates let folding. Go. He does. Really does hate folding that man. So in it goes. Stephen Chidwick. Just 40k back. It's really going to be the all in player at risk. 1.1 million in the middle. <laughs> Chidwick with the blind check. Comes 
King 10-6, middle set for Torres and Chidwick. Drawing to running cards, Randy. Needs a 7-8 jack or a queen on the turn to be live. Everyone else gets to watch on and potentially ladder $13,000. All in brought to you by bookmaker.eu. Ace on the turn means Chidwick is drawing dead. Can I have an air ball? Fantastic <laughs> return from break for Daniel Torres. GG's, of course, Stephen Chidwick. Another final table on his resume. 16.1 million in Triton earnings, a 24th cash to go along with his one title. A bittersweet series here for Stevie. Couple of crossbars bubbled the 200k Luxon Invitational. Eighth in the 100k No Limit Holder Main. And now out in fifth, meaning that that makes it official, Randy, with Chidwick's departure in fifth. Jason Kuhn officially crowned the That's Ivan the Liao guy. Player of the Year yeah, champion. It's still brewing. Just incredible given how many points that Chidwick was ahead. And he fought valiantly, valiantly, but you know, it's Jason Kuhn. It was his trip. Two titles, one stop, a second place. Phenomenal finish. Even in the short deck main. Yeah. Got third place. So two titles, one second and one third, I mean, and came one, in clutch. And one of the title in the main, and the third place finished in the other main event out yeah. there. GG's, of course, to Jason Kuhn, seven-time champ, Ivan Liao Player of the Year, and runner-up finish for Stephen Chidwick, one of the best who've ever done it. Yeah, GG's Chidwick, and um, hope you have a safe flight in. What, your family's waiting for you. We'll a see long him in ride. London. We will see him in London, that's for sure. I'm going to come out firing on the King Jack 8, drawing dead. 99.7. Four is drawing to runner runner quads. Yeah. It's a sizable bet from Tom. I wonder if Sir Watts just rifles it in here. It's just like, you know what, I have no fold equity. Does sham, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> He's run into like the one hand that might fold. So four players remain. 68,100 guaranteed for these final four. So what's with another final table? This series. Four FTs here. And a title. Tom's dead. Watson guaranteed to be up to a million. And obviously, for Dennis Schufferin, not what he wanted to see. He was just going to run this one. So, so what's on the hand for his second title of the series? Needle from the deck. Watson said he. Something about a straight. You're just needling Tom there. Yeah, just you made a straight. Unlucky. So with that. So Watson Dennis kind of tied at the bottom with twenty antes. Incredibly tight here. See the turbo structure. Average stack is just forty four antes. What an incredible series it's been, Randy. Sixteen days in, event number seventeen. Wouldn't have it any other way. You and I, hand in hand, side by side, closing it out for one last time. For one last time. Until next time. For now, though, it's Tom going to be aggressive. 9 8 offsuit. Does realize that Devoris has doubled down or doubled up, so can't really just open jam, raise we go. 325. Yeah, if Dvoris was to double through Tom, he would take the chip lead. 
And Tom would be down, having to play snug. Ooh. Dennis, the shortest stack by a considerable amount. Let's it go. Down to just 15 antis now. Bit of a swingy return from break for Dwan, doubling up both Forrest and Sir Watts. Still in the driver's seat. 103 antis. More than half the chips in play. Watson's starting to attack here, King Queen. Is this just an all in, Randy, of 20? Yeah, but then he might also do one of those like half stack plays that you Seven tend to 50. see from players. Seven Looks like he went three quarters. Randy, we're ready to tag you in. Whenever you want to sell some action on poker stake, oh. okay. sell a little sweat to us in the booth. You'll buy someone. I imagine snap a little bit. Snap by. You've got me for at least 2k. Nice. Nice. Good to know. Let me find the uh, other 90 something percent to sell. <laughs> <laughs> Keep 5% for yourself, yeah. Mm, okay, thank you. Now a significant gap at the bottom. Do I also get whole cards up while I'm playing? I'm just curious because it'll be a lot easier. <laughs> Definitely a lot easier for us in the booth, of course. As for the viewers at home, who once again, massive thank you to each and every one of you that's kept us company over the last 16 days. A little cut off the button action. This could certainly find its way in the middle, although Watson does now have two times that of Dennis in fourth. Yeah, but I don't feel like Watson is looking to lay down the Dwan in this spot. For him not to snap is he's exactly looking at Dennis's stack right now, as you just mentioned. So maybe it is close given how big of a lead he has on Dennis. But you know what? No. I want first. <laughs> I'm not going to save the series by folding. <laughs> You're playing for the title. Dennis gets to just watch on again. 13 antis for a potential ladder. Wow, the 10, 9, 7 board. He has other plans. Watson. Top, top. King on the turn. Dwan looking for a queen, jack, or an 8 to send Sir Watts home. Doesn't come, the nine pairs are with that. Dwan all of a sudden down to 2.9 million. Forrest on 2.6, and Sir Watts on 2.5. Yeah, and Dwan, you know, he's gotten it in great in this spot, and the last spot was a coin flip. It is the nature of short stack, sometimes short deck. Short deck. What seemed like he was going to run away with now. Got to be very cautious. Then it's super short now with that double up. Randy, just five hands ago, Dwan held 5.5 .5 million of the 9 million in play. Now, it's pretty snug at the top. Anyone's game. I mean, Dennis, he can find the double. He's back in the mix. Another two hour battle here. Toss um, things up. Like 2 7, yeah. Or, yeah, a little under 2 7. We'll see which two will be playing that heads up for the last trophy. Still one of 
The biggest names in poker without a Triton title. 7.1 million in Triton earnings, 17 caches. Just a loan cash of 40, in the 40K for 369,000. Way back at the start of the series. Tuan jams into the field. The return of Dwan. Two titles, 11 caches. Those two titles coming back in Madrid last year. First in the 25K PLO, followed by a first in the 30K short deck anti only turbo, the final event of the series. Has he saved it Walk is good. for the final event of this series? As Dennis is asking for a walk on the button. It's a hard thing to get in short deck. Dwan mashing. Dennis down to just 480. Again, bottom of range. Such a grim spot, has to let it go. Mad Dog in the mix. So what's one title already this series out of the way, Dvoris. Couple of jacks in the hijack. Comfortably in second would be a disaster to be eliminated before Dennis, of course. But he is going to take the spot. 18 seconds to go. He's setting sub 10 antis if he doesn't take this spot i mean i don't know how much better it's going to get potentially Five. so short i would say two minutes he's in ace 10 of diamonds makes the call for his final 10 antis looking to spin the wheel get back up to over a million 41 percent equity Would be his first cash at the Triton Super High Roller Series. The King King 7 board not looking great for Dennis. No straight potential. Queen Queen. Queen Queen would also work. Just two outs once now for the Ukrainian. Jack of Hearts. Okay. GG. On the river, Dvoris boating up. Dennis with the monkey off his back, cashing fourth. 68,100 for the short deck pro. Went 0 for 3 in Vietnam, managing to make his first Triton Super High Roller Series final table. Dennis Schufelin. Out in fourth, grinding that short stack valiantly. Trying to nurse his way into the money with the insane ICM implications. With that, we're down to the final three, Randy. Daniel Dvoris, Michael Watson, Tom Dwan. Let's go. Three big name players. Very experienced in short deck. Really anyone's game. Queen's and ace queen. We could have another all in collision incoming here. Given the average stack, Swartz with just 47 antis, Dwan. Open jamming and Mad Dog with the snap call. So Watts, 45% equity. 
Just like that, Randy, we could go from what, five handed, just an orbit and a half, two orbits ago, to be down to heads up. Duan can find the hold here. So far, so good. Of the 866, you can see. So, Watts doesn't like it. Seven does give him a couple extra outs. Nine or an ace, non heart needed. As the Ten of Diamonds rolls off on the river, 4.7 million chip pot. Going Durr's way after it was a bit of a shaky return from break, but back up to 5.6 million. Eliminating Michael Watson in third. And Randy, another impressive run from Sir Watts. Third for 94,800 after a pretty impressive series here. Five final tables, one title, adding another FT to his Triton track record. And with that, near two to one chip lead for Tom Dwan. How do you think this heads-up match is going to shape out compared to the previous two well, short decks? We know Tom's very aggressive. We know he's um, happy to play very wide ranges. It's going to be fun to see. We do have a lot of antis in play, 87 anti average amongst the two combatants here. Um, but Tom is one to have creative play. Um, we're not sure if Daniel Divorce is going to be ready for what he's got to come for this heads-up match. I'm pretty excited to watch how he approaches this one it, it definitely feels like just based off of that what 15 minutes that i found myself in the booth the chips could just very easily go in the middle because tom Dwan is just incredibly aggressive we mentioned doesn't like folding if he thinks that his opponent's up to no good he's going to make these light hero calls and we could certainly see this be over in just a few hands time right yeah, definitely could be pretty quick, and we know Tom has been playing short deck for such a long time. Let's see how his experience will pay off in this heads-up match coming up. Now 148,000 guaranteed for both. Champion going home with 214,000. Tom Dwan looking for title number three. Now looking to join Danny Tang, Phil Ivey, and White Kinyong if he can close this out. Daniel Dvoris, if we take a quick look at his profile over on the Triton Poker Plus app. 17 caches, 7.1 million in Triton earnings, and his name always in the conversation for one of the toughest elite players to not have a Triton title. Yes, I mean, to get 7 million earnings means that you've been playing the Triton series for quite some time, and he's been playing back in Montenegro and Jeju, um, both the No Limit and the Short Deck events. No title yet, but... A great adversary he's got to overcome here, right? Like more than two to one uh, chip deficit against one of the greatest short deck players of all time, Tom Dwan. It's an uphill battle, but maybe he can do it. Hard to say. Well, Dwan with two titles, one coming in PLO, one coming in the very last event of Madrid. It was a similar format, a 30K short deck anti only turbo. And then obviously ended up taking that one down for his second title. Um, but looking at this, <sighs> It's tough to say, you know, 132 antis placed 59, one double up for Taurus. All of a sudden it's switched. He's the chip leader. But expecting to maybe see a little bit more low ball kind of style from Taurus, trying to see flops, trying to maybe outmaneuver Tom Dwan, given how aggressive Tom is post flop. It should be a low ball situation, just given that the cutoff, the small blind per se, has to kind of play a little slow, being out of position pre flop, out of position post flop. Um, but I've I personally have not witnessed Tom Dwan playing heads up short deck, so I'm not sure how he's going to approach it. He may come in with more raises. Um, definitely going to see how Daniel reacts to his approach to the game. Oh, obviously, with Stephen Chidwick's departure in fifth, it means it's official that Jason Kuhn is going to be the Ivan Liao Player of the Year champion after taking down two titles here and two final tables. Without further ado, I'm going to throw it down for one last time to the main stage for event number 17. Tom Dwan squaring off against Canada's Daniel Dvoris for the title. And of course, the six-figure payday that comes with it. 214000 for first. And the games begin. I should say, let the games finish Randy it's 16 days event number 17 should save that line for event number one we'll save it for London 
Yeah, at least you've rehearsed it, so... Remind me. <laughs> connection for both. Forrest, a top pair and an open-ender. It's one with bottom pair and a gut shot. It's going to come out firing. It's a $66,000 heads-up match. Triton Trophy. Exclusive clubs, as you mentioned. A first for Dvoris, a third for Tom. Right now it is top pair open in a straight draw for Dvoris with position. And you can see him actually pumping it up. Expecting to just have the best hand, ch charge these random hands and 8-9 going into muck. First blood, Daniel. Really curious to see how this one plays out. Very different play styles from the last couple of days. See Richard Young against Chris Brewer. A lot more limping, a lot more passiveness post-flop. And of course, that epic heads-up battle between Makita and Danny Tang. The longest heads-up battle of the series. Danny Tang coming out on top. A lot more aggression in that one. This one, of course, adding its own twists and turns. I feel like depending on what mood Tom Dwan's in, could be over in five minutes. It could <laughs> take us an hour and a half. Yeah, and maybe he, he gets a run of cards and, you know, Daniel is expecting Tom to get out of line and pays him off in some spots. Ace-7-7, seven, seven. disguised top pair for Tom after knuckling back the ace-10. Doris uninterested. And I remember way back when, first discovering poker, watching YouTube videos, High stakes poker. Everyone has Tom seen Dwan that. with the, the stare blast. and <laughs> the mouth open, just not moving, not trying to give anything away, battling against the likes of Doyle, Sammy Farha, Phil Ivey, Daniel Negrano. Truly one of the biggest legends of our game in yeah, the last couple of decades. Just a legend and obviously like and at that time, like, one of the youngest players playing in that lineup. You know, like, the respect wasn't given to him yet from that older generation. But as they played against him and realized what damage he was just doing to them. And, you know, the reason why I feel like Duan always had a seat is because even though he was an online crusher coming into the live arena, he gave action, Randy. He didn't mind, you know, straddles on if it needs to be on. Playing big pots, running ma massive bluffs, making huge calls. And that kind of old school generation of players, you know, the old guard, if you will, the generation before Tom's, just loved it. Yes, of course. You, you give action, you get action. And uh, that aspect of Tom really hasn't changed. Why he still gets to play, you know, the biggest games out there. And very chatty, always friendly. And now, at work, third title pot pending, potentially. Top and bottom for Durr, Daniel Dvoris with top pair. Four-liner on board now on this two-tone turn texture. Just going to knuckle it over to the ox, Daniel Dvoris. Hundred and forty eight K guaranteed. Two hundred and fourteen thousand for the champion. It's gonna be a maiden title for Dvoris or the three time champion club. 
for Tuan. Recognizes that King Jack is still good despite the four liner that's out there. Does manage to get away from it on the river. Obviously, incredibly small sample thus far. A lot of limping to start off with. Yeah, and that's just the nature of the heads up format, like I mentioned, is being out of position pre, out of position post. But, you know, if you can't grind down your opponent, eventually the anti size goes up. You may get forced into that kind of open jam strategy a bit more. That's Similar to Makita. Yeah, closer to the 35 40 anti range, I'd imagine. It's a good beat. Should we give a massive shout out to the viewers for one last time? Everyone that's been with us, everyone that's clicked the subscribe button. Now we've got more than 165 5K subscribers on YouTube, more than 80,000 on Twitch. God only knows how many on Twitter and Instagram. If you haven't already, join the community, join the club. We appreciate all the support, everyone getting involved in the conversation, both on YouTube, Twitch, and online. Massive thank you, of course, from the three of us in the booth, the entire production team from Sharehands, and of course the Triton family that work tirelessly year-round, the months in between the events to pull off some of the best production quality, best poker entertainment in the world, free of charge. 445. Mm -hmm. The divorce here is limp called here out of position 9-7 of clubs. You got a mystery card for Tom. Again, these mystery cards, Randy. The tricky ones. Well, I think it's safe to say who's ahead. Just how far ahead is the big question. Forest with just nine high, completely whiffing. With the suited one gapper. Just north of third pot, and obviously Dvoris, just nine high, going to promptly hit the mark. Lauren Holland saying, we appreciate all of your fine, all of your fine these long 16 days. Going to miss you Tara saying, we're all going to go through Triton withdrawal from you. As are we, but the good news is, it's only eight weeks from now until the 27th of July. We'll be back in London for a 14-day series through to August 10th. Randy, myself, Arlene Najard, the whole team. Starting off with a fresh festival. What? Yeah, 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 of course. You, you just posted the wrong yeah. thing, right? Yeah, yeah. Some new players, life-changing well, money. Hope, hopefully, some more just epic storylines similar to the ones we've had here. Although, 
Yeah. Won't be as much focus on the Ivan Liao Player of the Year know, leaderboard I mean. in London, given that it will be a fresh start compared to this one going all the way down to the wire. Yeah, you know, um, a fresh start. And, of course, you know, Steve and Kuhn being the front runners of this leaderboard um, will understand that Every single point matters, as it was a really tight race uh, mm. to close things out on that one. Do you think Jason will be late regging any <laughs> events next year, given how close this one was? Yeah, I, I would I think say... I think he's going to be showing up on time. A bit more. And you know what? I feel that Danny Tang is really going to try for it this time, because at the end of this festival, you know, he was talking about how he wanted to kind of break the... Top five, I believe I said. I think he said, and even though that didn't really gain you any additional value, but for him, just trying to see how he compares to the rest of you know his peers, feels very strongly about trying to perform well there. So it'll be cool to see fresh yep. cast of characters, maybe some new names, of course, too. I think Danny, with that win. Guaranteed to move up into fourth and may even be close and in contention with overtaking Sam Green in third. We'll obviously wait for confirmation from Luca Vivaldi on that one. But some serious points collected in that short deck main. Dwan with the limp. Trying to trap for us. Flopping top two. Daniel with the gut shot. Let's see what he wants to come with here. It's going to just call. 440 in the middle going to a turn. And hello, 10 of spades. Morris with the Broadway straight now. No spade in hand. Three spades out there might feel compelled to value bet. A round of checks and does pair the board. Not a good card for Tom as if he wasn't potentially behind a queen. Jack X could do it. Yeah, disastrous run out for this top ten. It's getting from bad to worse. Across turn and river. Let's see what Forrest wants to do here. The check turn. Ball pairing river, unblocking all of the pairs. So, see all of the boats getting there, although Dwan has slowed down on turn and river. Wow. Going to check behind. Ace King, no good, of course. Taurus up to 2.8 million. So, a two to one chip lead for Tom. But maybe more importantly, Taurus getting to see Dwan limp that Ace King. Yeah, definitely important. Especially, it would take time for him to see if he was waiting for a delay. How about that for some tense music? For one last time, a massive shout out to our title sponsor, GG Poker, home of the Triton free rolls, home of the Triton qualifiers, and home of the GG Poker World Festival, which is still ongoing through till the 6th of June. We do have a new player sign up bonus offer. You can use promo code Triton underscore 2023, and that offer is, of course, for new players only. Receive a full welcome bonus and a $50 Global Millions ticket. Road to Triton events. Would love to see one of our viewers winning satellites to our upcoming events later on this year. Let us know, as always, if you're grinding online over on GG whilst watching the stream. Let us know about deep runs and whatnot.
A6 for Tavares gets a walk. What's it going to take, Randy? Top of range, V top of range. Yeah, I, w I would say so to some extent. I mean, of course, that's always something that could close this one out. Divorce does have 46 anties, so definitely doesn't need to be the very top. Feels very similar to the Chris Brewer, Richard Young match so far. Again, incredibly small sample. But this one, a lot tighter in Kajia than the Baziakuski Tang battle in the main event. Little pair v bottom pair. Gut shot to go along with it for Taurus. <laughs> Dwan always <laughs> looks suspicious, man. Turns trip sevens. The stare downs. Yeah, you never really know where he's at exactly. What he's thinking. How to extract value. How can he maybe attack? Does see the check through, check to him on the turn. Trip sevens, nice kicker. Looks like he's gonna. Is that 150? Probably doesn't expect Ace or 9x to fold right now. About 75% pot. Does feel like a card as well that he's quote unquote supposed to rep. Yeah. Do have a little gut shot, right, for, for Daniel looking for a 6? Or well, that. How about a 9? An upside down 6 to give Taurus a bigger boat. 540 in the middle. See how he wants to proceed. Slide it on over to Dwan. Let him continue. Well, Maybe thinking bluffing. Of, thinking about leading, actually, because if Dwan was trying to represent a 7, he might not try to do so once the 9 drops off. So Daniel doesn't want this to get checked through, so he's just going to lead out himself very big. Full pot. Pot size lead from Forrest. Action back on Tom. See if he can get away from this. Definitely the biggest pot of this heads up match so far. Been a long 16 days, mate. Pained by this decision. Certainly wouldn't fault him for making the call here. You Trying getting away from this, Randy? <sighs> I'm trying to think of bluffs I could be up against. Like, it was a 75% pop bet on the turn out of position. So was he calling, like, like king eight high? Is, is that a thing? Jack 10, just a little gutty, jack high. Looks like he wants to lay this one down. Oh, I thought he was about to pitch it. it feels like 9x. A tough fall to make. He does let it go. Really nice discipline there. That is a world-class fold, especially heads up, especially against someone as tough as Dvoris. More than capable of having bluffs there. So Ante is going up 80,000, 160,000, I believe.
heads up in the final event of the Triton Super High Roller Series at the Merritt Royal Diamond Hotel, Spa and Casino in North Cyprus. Shout out Poker Steak, bringing us the anti-update there. 5.6 million, it's 3.1. Like the runaway train for Tom Dwan when we came back from break with five left. And went on to double up Forrest, then doubled up Watson. Lost a bit of it back. Tom's whistling. Need to get him and Makita in a room together. Yeah, Makita was whistling earlier, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> always, always whistling. Given that the cash game was running until what, 11 a.m. this morning, Tom seems pretty cooked, pretty fried. Tom's in position here. Hard for him to rep this board very well, given he checked it back pre flop. So we will get a round of checks. Like Daniel's going to try to protect his hand a bit, extract value from Queen X. Daniel, Dwan looks a little annoyed with the way the pots have been going lately. Yeah, no real collisions. It's been very bottom of range. Yeah, very grindy. Very, yeah. Just the card distribution really hasn't cooperated with either of the players. Fifty four anti average. And it's certainly at that stack depth where it could be over any hand now. Shimpala Jewels bracelet, the Triton trophy on display. But even this, you know, King Queen gonna limp ten six. Like the equivalent of 8-3 in Hold'em. <laughs> I don't know what the equivalent, the equivalent is, but definitely not a good holding by any means. And, you know, King Queen, Tom's here hoping to kind of extract value post-flop with a hand like this rather than just pick up the the two antis from the dealer bot and does pick up top pair. Inside straight draw now for Devoris. Yeah, I guess the nice thing about limping with a hand like king queen is you keep in all of like the king sevens the queen sixes the hands that you just have dominated so basically whenever you flop top pair in a limp pod and heads up if you're the first limper is that you practically have top pair top kicker as ace king ace queen will mandatory right. push in chips pre-flop that makes a ton of sense as played right now 8x definitely a scary card for tom will start to still try to extract but definitely not looking for like heavy action. Gets 10 6 out. Shall I tell the viewers at home what you're giggling about? <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't sure if it was like... <laughs> go, ahead, go ahead. There's a massive fly on our TV screen right now, and we weren't sure whether it was down on the <laughs> stage <laughs> or actually on our TV. It kind of just blended in, and now we're watching Forrest and Dwan, 
And this quite literally fly on the wall. It's trying to <laughs> download information of these two superstars in short deck. It's huge. I've never seen a fly that big before. What's going on? Where did it come from? I'm sure, that's not a wasp, Randy. Oh, that for a flop. A wasp. For Dvoris. Gut shot. Straight flush draw. Dwan with ace 10. What's important here is that Devoris actually kind of bet quite larger than normal in this BVB spot. Connected texture tends to increase the sizing. Tom. Not comfortable, but feels mandatory of ace 10. He's underrupt his hand pre flop. 820. Still with 39% of the equity. Just jack high. Card to come. Looking for a jack, a nine, or a diamond. 820 in the middle. His bigger bet on a flop may make him think that he's up against like a little bit of the upper end of the holdings that Tom could have. Going to just keep firing given how much equity he's got and get stays 10 down. Nicely done. Just 39% equity on the turn. High card jack. Taurus closing the gap now. Just 20 antes between the two. Closing in on 1.30 a.m. local time here in North Cyprus. I think producer James might miss his flight at this rate. What time's your flight, producer James? 6 a.m.? Oh, okay. 2.40 p.m. Well, he might still miss it. Who knows? Stevie made it, at least. That's important. That is. Well, I feel like he wouldn't have mind missing it had it meant he went on to win. I think it's Ali that has the early flight. Oh, I'm not mistaken. I don't know. 6 a.m. flying. Hope he misses it. I hope he misses it. <laughs> if his flight's at 6, kind of has to leave in an hour and a half. Oh, producer James ruined our fun. His car's at 6. He could oversleep. Uh, not that vampire. Doesn't need sleep. Tom's pretty happy um, just kind of taking it post-flop in position from what I've seen so far in this heads-up match rather than bloating the pot up a bit. Does have open ended, but kind of the dummy end in the sense that if a jack drops off, a king could easily give him some bad reverse implied odds. Let's see how Dwan wants to proceed with this dummy end of the straight. Just going to check back. 320 in the middle, going to the turn. Some other overcard. Taurus's pair of nines rolls off. Yeah, not quite the, the card either player was looking for, of course. Does give Tom that kind of disguise inside straight draw. Hard to notice at first glance, but he could hit a six. He could have hit a six on the flop, Randy. Sorry. I totally missed that too. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. You learn something once in a while. So he's out. Boris doing a fantastic job so far. Closing the gap. Now 5 million playing 3.8. Card 
come close on so many occasions. Daniel Dvoris, as we've mentioned. Quite the Triton track record. Seventeen caches. One final table here already. Two final tables in Vietnam. One in North Cyprus, September of last year. Second place to Jason Kuhn. The 150k short deck, one bullet for 1.2 million euros back in Madrid. Honestly, I'm struggling to find a cache that isn't a final table. He has one cache that isn't a final table. It was a 12th place finish in Macau 2017. That's pretty incredible. Well, he's flopped the joint here. Jack 10. Broadway. Check back pre-flop. And Tom just trying to attack, recognizing he's got a range advantage and if Daniel Divorce doesn't have Jack-10, really can't handle the heat. However, he does have Jack-10. Yeah, Dvoris shouldn't have hands like Ace-King, Ace-Queen, right? Yeah, really. Very rarely, almost impossible with the stack size, too. Notice the clubs. That is a fun turn card. Dvoris well, picking up some equity in the form of clubs. Obviously, flush is a lot tougher to make in short deck compared to Hold'em. Double barrels here. He's reaching. Five hundred into seven seventy. Yeah, Tom's trying to attack these like King X, Queen X, even like the King Queen, little gutties, Queen Tens, King Tens. They they would have a lot of trouble calling quite a sizable bet here on the turn for two barrels. Tom knows that with his limp, he could still have these big hands trapping. Smooth call, we go. So a very important pawn in this heads up, as you can see, it's 1.77. If the Vorus can hold, we'll take the chip lead. Pairs the eight. Interesting, because if Tom's got like a set on the flop, he'd have a full house to overtake this jack 10. Tom also blocks Jack-10 a little bit with that Jack of Clubs in hand. Never strikes me as the guy to give up. Does have to be somewhat concerned of like maybe an ace-8 type hand. The yeah. The only, uh, the only real top pair that Forrest would maybe call once and obviously once he turns two pair see what Tom comes with. He's probably realized that the hands he was trying to fold out, the King X's, Queen X's, that aren't that strong, probably would have just laid down the turn. So it doesn't really feel any point in betting against Ace X right now or, or better. See what Daniel does. We did see Tom limp that ace king earlier. Yeah, it seems like there's value to be had, right, against ace king, ace queen. No, it's just random ace or whatnot. Can he get worse to call? That's what's going through his mind right now. Wow, big check there. I win. And Dwan's going to see that and maybe make some adjustments like, hmm, didn't bet Broadway on this board Can run never out. Be too careful. Can never be too careful. <laughs> <laughs> was pretty careful there. I mean... We try and think of, you know, can we get worse the call? 
There's mm -hmm. 1.8 in the middle. Never too much to care for. In that spot. I don't know. I think I was firing. Uh, Juan was the worst one in the limping some big, big hands earlier on. Why not throw an aces or a kings in there? You just heard Tom say that he wanted to fire a lot of rivers, just didn't really want to fire the board pairing card. Which makes sense as, you know, some ace axes might get sticky. So Dvoris with the chip lead after turning this around. Coming into five-handed play in the money. Juan held 70% of the chips in play, five-handed. He had 100 plus antes when Dvoris was second in chips with just 21 antes. Now Dvoris is to turn it around for the first time this match. Both players guaranteed 148,000. 214,000 going to the eventual champion. Duan looking for title number three. Dvoris looking for his first title. He's come close on many occasions over the years, as I mentioned. Look at the Triton Poker Plus app. Second to JK in Madrid. Second back in Montenegro 2019 in the 250k HKD for 3.1 million. Second in the 500k HKD No Limit Hold'em for 7.4 million. So three second place finishes. And all of his caches bar one, come from a final table. 